Hello and welcome to Eat Hi. Up Mini Catch Up. Actually, I'd probably call this like the end of the Ragnarok. Official ending. Rag Ragnarok. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Ragnarok. Um, we're gonna be uh checking out the messages that we had over the streams because obviously yes. all three streams were extended and uh, we were unable to get to them as quickly as we. Like. That's true. We were jam packed with think well y'all know why <laughs> you all know why you all know um, why and you had plenty to say so we're gonna have to get through all that um yes but before that we're just gonna check oh. out that uh mr synthetic man had commentary for for the for the video of course that's uh i can't imagine how he's going to have responded to it but it happens to be the last two minutes in a new video he put out so we okay. can uh, Give it a little look. See, uh, see it start here. Ish, okay. I imagine. Well, it's it wasn't that exactly the happiest with uh, the coverage. I can't imagine. He just doesn't seem like be. he's ever happy. Not the happiest guy now. Um, obviously, that that EFAP episode, by the way, uh, this is kind of me talking to the audience right now. You guys fucking really liked that one. Holy shit. Not only like the rewatching of that episode by a lot of you, but we're getting all kinds of messages about how it's like everyone's favorite episode. So apparently we're is, we're uh, not quite dead yet as a as an IP, the old EFAP, you know? Still putting out some good episodes, apparently. Can't say I'm surprised. I, I, I figured that would be a, a, a pretty popular fun one that people would really like. Got a lot of ups and downs, so to speak. <laughs> it was a so to speak. Quite an adventure. Anyway. For those who are familiar with it, this is apparently uh, his response to what happened. So let's have a look. See. Cringe moments. There were multiple woke moments that were obnoxious. Um, God of War Ragnarok. What a great. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to a different <laughs> section right now. Rock won way uh, too yeah. many awards, but at the very least, Elden Ring won Game of the Year, so it's not like it was terrible. Now, normally I would end the video here, but as you may have heard, there was some recent controversy involving me. Apparently, for whatever reason, a podcast called EFAB that I know we many know of you have heard you, for whatever reason. Whatever reason. reason. For we, already, whatever, we already know you know what EFAB is. is. <laughs> you know, yeah, they mentioned us. with the way that he mentions it. It's like, a, yeah, a podcast called EFAB, you know? Like, yeah. Like, whatever you know, what is that? A channel that is yeah. in my recommended, <laughs> like, my it, feeds. Um, um, whose hosts I specifically call out by name, Mahler in particular. Whose, whose episodes I claimed I to have declined since Wolf had left. Which, by the way, might people made people think, like, maybe you forgot what EFAP was. No, um, he's actually, because there's the thing, I was cursed to have watched all of his streams. He talks about some recent EFAP episodes in one of his uh, streams. He talks about the Philosophy Tube one. He said he watched oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so, right. Uh, well, Destiny, that's like, right. Right off the bat. Just, just trying to come across as the cool guy. I was like, what? What is this? What is this EFAB thing? I don't know. Why the what? What's that? And I mean, also, I, I don't know all of the, the things about the hosts personally that I would make fun of. Um, yeah, so that's I, another I, We I, have a clip of you. <laughs> like, you specifically said that if you came on, you would say, you know what to make fun of each of us for. Whether it's Jay and the trans stuff, whether it's me and the not being straight, I'm sure with Fringy and Mahler, he has plenty to say. But come on, you you can't try and be just a Weasley little liar, dude. Yeah, Weasley. When you you know, don't act like you don't know because then of course, you know that you know. We with all know. what he knows. Why would he be like? Why were they, they responding to my videos? Like, yes, Efab's not known for responding to videos that have differing opinions or anything. That's not like no. what it was predicated on. Especially not mine. Like, I, I was. Yeah, there was a thinly veiled thing at the end of his like Ragnarok video, and then yeah, on top of like all the times yeah. in stream when he was shitting on you, and a lot of people actually. <laughs> Yep. I would end the video here, but as you may have heard, there was some recent controversy involving me. Apparently, for whatever reason, a podcast called EFAP that I know many of you have heard of decided to make a video on my God of War Ragnarok review, which honestly, I don't really have a problem with. As I've yeah, said many yeah. times in previous <laughs> videos, I don't script my reviews. Insecure. They aren't particularly right, stop well. It. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Stop doing the thing where you explain the reason why they're riddled with flaws. Well, as opposed to trying to be better, as the game well, the desperately is, tried to explain, <laughs> like... If if you're gonna do it a certain way, you need to own the fact that people are gonna respond to the things that you said in that video, whether they're true or not. They don't care how hard you worked on it. 
They don't care what your methodology was. All they care about is whether the things you said were accurate or not. That's it. And they were like, almost exclusively works. not accurate. Well edited either, and that's very much on purpose. So I'm sure they yeah. could yes, pick it to pieces if they're... Exactly. Well, but it's on purpose, well, but... and he's the one who said, yeah, I know I get things wrong all the time, and da 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 I'm not going to change it. Why does, you can't this really use this as a defense. line of logic to me. I make it in a way that results in many flaws, so, like, why? what's the deal, guys? Like, why would you respond to it almost by impl Like, that's almost the implication. Leave me alone. I don't like, know. I feel like he's, yeah, he's, he's pretending videos. as though there's not great... Like, well, we said it when we were covering his videos. It's just like, if you're going to accept that your methodology results in significant errors, then you have to expect results that include people basically pointing out how wrong you are, right? That's, that's like... That's how you made it. Like, that's, it's that simple. Nobody really cares, like, how you made it or how long you spent working on it. All they care about is what is apparent in the video. That's it. Yeah. As I've said many times in previous videos, I don't script my reviews. They aren't particularly well should. edited either, and that's Maybe very much should. on purpose. So I'm sure oh. they could pick it to no, pieces if they lazy, really wanted to. Much. See, they could they could I destroy like it if they wanted that, to. Dude. They could pick it to pieces if they really want to. Like, okay, Thanks, mate. <laughs> like, what what do you what what is what is that even meant to mean? Like, I recognize that it is so deeply flawed that it could be torn apart. Apparently. Probably wouldn't be hard for even me to do that to my own videos. What? Then do it! Um, then do it! Then why are you that, doing it? The process the you're describing should take place yeah. before you hit publish. Before the video's done, yeah. The whole idea of that is that, like, us, uh, we're supposed to be very good critics of ourselves. We have that running at the, at the all the time, all the processes. Why, why, you, like, yeah, I could have ripped apart my own video if I wanted to. It's like, what? Why you would should you? should have done that in the editing process. <sighs> That's part of making the good video. And so I popped into the stream for about 10 minutes. And what did I discover? That Mauler had watched up to 20 hours of my God of War Ragnarok streams. Yeah, some of you viewers would have done that too, though, right? So do you, yeah, what, 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 do you also, uh, what are you implying? You can already detect the tone. I'm being shamed for this, aren't I? Yeah. yeah, how dare course. he watch my stuff? What a loser he is to watch my really streams. Funny? Like some of some of his audience surely watched his whole God of War Ragnarok live stream, sure that's the, right? That's kind of like the point of the audience. Would he would he look at stuff. those people? Would he look at the audience and go, "Wow, you watched twenty hours"? You know what I mean? Like, why he de he's constantly <laughs> like, devaluing his own content, but not in the way that we do because his content shit. It's that like I can't believe anyone would actually. Like, how terrible would it be? I gotta be able to denigrate Mahler for watching my stuff, but I'm not gonna think about what that says about my audience. That would be... Uh-oh. You know, trying to... Well, I'm sure the framing's gonna well, be that I'm obsessed or crazy or... I guess it's kind of funny, though, right? It's like, you watched 20 hours of my live stream. It's like, yeah, and you played the game for 20 hours. Like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's such a... Like, people, it's, I guess, it's uh, doing the motivation farming shit that I've always hated, but it's just like, if only they knew the truth, which is... I was watching his video and I was like, I wonder, I wonder how he played the game. It tells me a lot about someone in terms of what they think of the game when I can see their entire playthrough. Oh, he mm. streamed it. Well, I guess I could watch it while I'm sorting out like how I'm going to edit together his initial video and the future video so that like the whole reason that that all happened the way that it did is that I didn't want to have us basically like, you know, when he says like Odin uh, offered a really great deal, he should have taken it. Then we do all the, the responses that he even his fans gave him, and then he responds to that in the later video. If I played the whole full video, then then we'd have to repeat all of the topics as we come back to them in terms of the responses. I figured, why wouldn't I just do it one by one? That makes the most sense. And then, of course, if ever I found stream footage that completely countered his opinions on uh, what, what was happening in the game, I couldn't help but put them in to be like, this guy's lying to you, by the way. Oh, I popped into the stream for about 10 minutes, and what did I discover? That Mauler had watched up to 20 hours of my God of War Ragnarok streams and edited together a hit piece on me. So, what's the difference between criticism and hit piece? Just let me know. If Yeah, also, if, um, if it's just a description of the things that you do, if it's just your own clips, if that in and of itself is a hit piece, then that does say a lot about... You. People would describe that as a cell phone, right? Like if yeah, that's 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 a good way to describe it. Um. So yeah, I don't, uh, yeah. If, if you just if think clips of define... you playing as a hit piece against you, okay, dude. 
Interesting. Yeah, pretty much. Like I, I, you can call it a hit piece if you want, but it was it was it was work, and it was a response to how bad you are as a game reviewer, and then just highlights of how awful your personality is. If that's what a hit piece is, uh, I guess the motivation could be like malicious, but it was just this is this is stuff that I found and wanted to show other people. It was all public. malicious or not. It's factual. It's all from his stream. I really so understand like issue. what's the yeah, problem. You put this out stuff. there, yeah. You know, instead of actually spending that time making videos for I, I, that, so first of all, that is a video <laughs> that I made. That is, yeah, that that is a video. It was also it's not only a video. You got to essentially double dip with it because, in and of itself, it is a very interesting observation on this character, this synthetic man guy. This is a, It's also uh, the blueprint a for a stream, which is our job. This is a weird jab. Wait, it's what he well, said. He already, Remember, he already said anything. this in the on the screen. Yeah, I think YouTube videos don't last. Yeah, They're just no, yeah, it's just well, no, dust no, no, in the it's, wind. It's the, the criticism of Mueller is that he doesn't make videos anymore, right? He's lazy and a fat, complacent, like <laughs> just sitting on this pile of money that he does from this the little it's dragon, kind of funny, right? chubby drag. It's, it's kind of like you're you're almost trying to simultaneously imply laziness while shitting on somebody for spending a lot of time on a task. Yeah, he's yeah, exactly. He's he spent 20 hours. Isn't that crazy that he did all this work instead of doing all this different work? Something that's really uh something that's 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 good to do is to like sit with your thoughts and and try to reconcile incompatibilities between oh, thoughts oh, and hold. <laughs> like oh, he no, already he's... said you could no, tear apart no, his no. he could even tear apart his stuff if he could be asked to, but he doesn't. He just wants right. to hit yeah, the algorithm. He doesn't really, fuck. And he's yeah. really but really really annoyed that you did. Sorry, I was watching you. I wanted to take you seriously. I wanted to see what arguments you had. I was told by many people you had the best Ragnarok criticisms. They were awful. Not the first time this has happened to us, though. For his channel. I wish I was joking, but seriously, they didn't just watch my review and the response video. Mola was editing the stream to make you look bad. Uh, I would love to actually have you explain how that's the case. The problem is I couldn't edit it any other way. It was impossible with the clips I had. It's, it's, how do I make him look good? It's what he says. It's his opinions. They're awful. They were really bad. They were uninformed. They were contradictory. A lot of them were just lies. Also, he's foul. Like, what, what do you want to do with all that? I, I can't show his video in any format that makes him look good. Not my fault. Yeah, what things hey, were out of context? Arguments that other people use for the Last Jedi and rings of power on them. Can you like sort of just what 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 is the deal? Like, Wait, why does that? everything have to be filtered through these weird lenses? I've seen loads of this. Like, wow. So Maul is using the same arguments that if you. So I've seen the one where it's like, do you remember the not so great debate where the guy said he's old? Mauler has used this as a defense of Kratos that it's been a long time since the original trilogy. I was like, wait, yeah, did they skip the part where the, I was like, that time yeah. was filled with development that we played through as the... Everyone forgets also, the end of God like, of War 3, man. Hugely, exactly, I was about to say, the hugely important part is that God of War 3 kicks off the arc that he goes on in these two games. He like stabbed it's, we, himself we a with a giant yeah. magical sword. I think... The beginning of the change in the character, whereas what happened with Luke is that he was super duper happy and then saved the day, and then we see nothing, and then he's a hermit, a pissed Miserable off... Miserable asshole hermit. who abandoned his family Miserable and the galaxy. Yeah, yep. exactly. We didn't get any of that information, and it was a much shorter period of time as well. Meanwhile, well, this Kratos, is like, we got, we got hours upon hours upon hours of all these, like, discussions and inspirations he's had from all these different people. Yeah, and, and we've events, got, exactly, to make decisions. and retrospective information with Faye, even in those few scenes, a little bit of insight into how that relationship would have, uh, would have fed into the arc that he goes on. It's not comparable. This well, this is like the tribalism thing. shit, man. Like, if you dislike The Last way. Jedi and Rings of Power, then you should dislike Ragnarok. The thing is, Bizarre. plenty of people are out there who are like, no, that's not how that works. I don't know if you saw one of the top comments uh, I read was like, why is he saying if you're right wing, you should dislike Ragnarok? Like, I'm right wing and I do not like uh, feel that way. I was, I was reading stuff like that. I was just like, that's going to be weird, right? Like, to what, be told the you, idea you're, 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 that you're being gatekept. Like being gatekept well, on being... like your fundamental beliefs about life through a video game. Because of a game that you like. Yeah. It's fucking bizarre. Uh, but yeah, I mean. Sure, don't watch the coverage, just go from what one person said in a comment. Oh, no, he but edited why isn't he together... gone by what the other people said in the comments, where they were, like, thoroughly impressed with, uh, the coverage, the stream... in terms of the thoroughness of it. The stream clips weren't additional context, they were actually taken out of context. So, when he says, 
the enemies are spongy. And then I show clips of him saying he doesn't understand the mechanics, he doesn't use the moves that explicitly say they deal more damage, and he doesn't understand how to use certain moves because there's too many buttons. You understand that his criticism that the enemies are too spongy is worthless. It might be true. Yeah, you're adding context. Yeah, that is additional con that tells you how he constructed this opinion. How it is it how is it not poorly. additional like it's it's categorically additional context. It explains a lot about the argument that he made in his video. And then trying to bandwagon like it's, it's with like, oh the, the puzzles, they're way too easy to solve and they give you clues anyway, so it's pointless. Like everyone pretty much agrees with the criticism, but then you see him solving the puzzles and you're like, holy fuck, dude. People like you are why the devs made it this way. Well, I thought we all agreed. I thought we all understood the problem with the Dean Takahashi, like, Cuphead thing. I thought I we thought did we too, all yeah. understood what that meant. Which, if we don't, the reason why it's really bad to see Dean Takahashi unable to complete the tutorial level in Cuphead is that if he made a review of that game, it'd be worthless to me. We're just not yeah. playing it the same way. We're not on the same level of play. Not to You'd say have that, to like, have really... some level it'd of be, expertise be, in what you're reviewing. Be, uh... Yeah, so like if if I if if you were to alternatively watch somebody who was able to play a game at a super high level of play, uh, that they could play it on a really hard difficulty, pull off all of these crazy combos or something, you'd be able to. It's like, oh, you understand the game. You have like a greater understanding of the game. You probably have insights to offer that I wouldn't be able to pick up because I'm not as good as you at this. Like, the, if if you're like incapable of even playing the game at a base level. Anything you say about the game has to be filtered through the lens of, oh, but that was how you played it, which is not going to be the way that I played it. It's kind of the difficulty of, like, reviewing video games yeah. that you don't really have with something like a film or a television show, where, like, I guess everybody has different levels of understanding about, like, the material in the story, but a, th there's no, like, skill influencing, you know, somebody's perspective on the mechanics like there is in a video game. I thought we all understood, like, what the problem was there. I hope it wasn't just, lol, he sucked at the game, haha. <laughs> like, I hope it wasn't oh, that dude, simple. Oh, dude, I've seen people say, like, so if ever against sponsorships, and I was like, did you listen to anything we said? Like, anything at all? No, I'm didn't. pretty sure that we explicitly said, like, if you're gonna take a sponsorship, take it from, like, If Audible it's a good sponsorship, it's good. If it's if a it's bad a sponsorship, sponsorship, it's bad. Like. You can take a sponsorship from Raid Shadow Legends, especially people who have no idea, like, have no interest or understanding of gaming as an industry, and they're just like, I don't know, it's a product, uh, it's, uh, and it works. They don't know, like, the predatory nature of mobile gaming and stuff. But you can't have a guy who's like, I'm the real dude about video games, and everyone else is a sellout shill. Left, man. And then, and then you he shills for one for of the, Raid like, Shadow notoriously Legends. terrible games ever. And then apparently in the following video is like, it's bad, by the way, don't go get it. Hmm. Well, too late. You already recommended it to me, and I tried it. So sponsorships I mean, are fine. Uh, I thought we if all knew. They're for good things that you've edited. Well, uh, I should say sponsorships are neutral. It's it's you need more information. They're neutral. They are absolutely neutral. It depends on how you approach it, and especially how it slots into your broader statements and goals as a creator. So. Um, oh yeah, the other thing I was going to say as well, like just because we that's like a gameplay example uh, in in the puzzles and the combat, but then. Also, the story example, right, where he was saying, like, he was talking about one of the better seeds of the game. He, he, like, complimented, like, two or three of them, but he said, like, my initial grievances with this were Atreus was being condescending. And then I just showed, like, his actual commentary from that scene, where he was like, the characters are being assassinated. Right. Like, so what? I, I think I'm glad you brought that up because th looking at that last sentence, the stream clips had no place being included because the review was his actual thoughts after completing the game. It's like, now, it may well be the case. Because, of course, like, the thing that you think first, ideally, if you're, like, you know, trying to be really thorough in creating a review, you might figure out things about a game or a story that are better or worse after you play through it, your thoughts kind of coalesce, you get them organized. You know, there's something to be said, obviously, about, like, uh, like a definitive statement on something after spending a lot of time thinking about it and working through those thoughts. But it's a little bit awkward when somebody says, I initially thought this in their final review but then they said something totally different when they initially saw it. It's like, hmm. That doesn't... S hmm. Well, you know? He, he made a claim odd. about what happened when he first consumed it that was just false. And I, and that's that's the point of seeing that. It's like he's lying to you. He launders his opinions to be more acceptable. And remember, he's not going to put in the video, by the way, guys, I think you're part of the industry's problems if you listen to dialogue. Because that's a batshit insane take. That is an insane thing to say. Yeah. If you don't think it's insane, then you you have an issue. You have a problem. And uh, by the way, like the, I remember seeing on, on his video as well, it's like, oh, so 
they're uh, they're complaining about you not taking it seriously, not listening to dialogue, and not like engaging with the game on its terms, and yet they did what they did with The Last of Us Two, and I'm just sitting there like, what engaged with it on its terms? That's what I did. We were we yeah, totally we did. did. We were listening. Why do we think we were able to give it such a comprehensive breakdown? We we listened. We paid attention. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how we knew it wasn't happened. good. If, that your references are accurate. Like, oh, yeah. we're, we're the most important you thing. Know, I guess that's something that we didn't make clear to people is that even if it's something that we think is probably going to be bad going in, we do listen to it. We give it its time of day. That's how we know if it, that it's good or not at the end. Because we're not always... Because obviously you can't base your opinions off of just what your first impressions or your desires will be. You have to actually check. Of course, only a fool would think otherwise. ...that time making videos for his channel. I wish I was joking, but seriously, they didn't just but watch seriously. my review and the response video. No, he edited together a bunch of clips, put some of my points out of order, and showed many parts that had nothing to do with any of my points, but simply just- I mean, he's technically true. I did throw some stuff in there that had nothing to do with the game. <laughs> oh yeah, like when he was That's... making fun of the, the Jewish conspiracy. Yeah. And the, the, the undesirable, the, uh, the obvious flaws of my sexuality and things like that. Yeah, yeah just it's just the things we in. noticed along the way. I'm but you, even you, then, you, I would say that those are related in some way. Well, when, you, when you're working on a video where you're trying to discover the person's perspective on a lot of things, and then you randomly come across fucking calls to war and aggression against particular groups of people that are... I, yeah, I was just like, holy fuck, I cannot believe this is actually happening. This doesn't even seem real. Um... Oh, and that's another thing we've been to I I've been see seeing like uh, that we've become cancel culture, and it's like uh, I haven't called for anything to happen to him. Haven't said a thing. And uh, I mean, I'm surprised that anyone didn't know this, but me, Fringy, and Rags are pretty liberal on free speech. You, we're we're free speech extremists almost. We're I think, very pro. Free I think you could speech. call us that in reference to how the internet, like the Overton window of free Certainly speech, we're pretty days, extreme. Yeah, yeah. yeah these days, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just to my in some way, and I was painted as some sort of neo-Nazi or racist. I, I, I didn't paint you. I can't you. imagine why. I yeah, did not I, paint you that way. Uh, I played you your opinion. that way with your words. If people come away with that perspective from what you have said, that's a result of what you have said. Like, to, to be fair, this comment, this, this comment isn't even untrue. In the last two hours, Mola showed stream clips portraying you as a homophobic, racist, transphobic, anti but that's not because I contextualized the comments and said that is the case. We played them. That was those it. Those are the things you said. Yeah, those, those are, are the things, things you said, you said yeah. many also, times over. That account is Cobain. He was, uh, he's, he's become known in uh, the EFAB community as basically Synthetic Man's, like, sentinel. He, he was there for, like, the whole stream, apparently. <laughs> or something. And he did all of this just because I disagreed with him about the quality of a video why, game. Why don't you uh, acknowledge all the clips where you were shitting on him, though? Why do you? Yeah. Mean, well, why, so, so why? Yeah, well, he doesn't know about. He doesn't. He probably doesn't know that uh, I know about right. him. Yeah. Because he doesn't look into this at all. So if someone said, "All right, Mola, it's time to judge you," I'm in like a big old courtroom. They're like, "Tell us what was your motivation to do this? Was it just because he said something about a game you like that you, you didn't like what he said?" I'd be like, "Okay, do you really think that would be it?" When EFAP's been going for this long, and we've covered so many people that completely disagree with us on on something. Do you, do you, why is it that like people have said the only other time it feels like Muller has done this is with the the Twitch React saga, but even that wasn't as extensive. So it's, and that was when someone was coming after a friend of mine. So it's like so so what is it? It's like well, for anybody who watched the stream, probably knows around about the part where he like shits on all of my friends, me, and the work that we all do. And then he says that their sexuality is a character flaw. And then says some other really bizarre and crazy shit after basically lying about a video game that's pretty good. Yep. And basically at this point I'm like, well, what motivation don't I have? What is what is the golden motivation to have? And then think, um, do I not have that one? I think I have all of the motivations. Something that I find interesting, because I think it's kind of, it's it's kind of like revealing, right, of the way that somebody else may think about all of this. Uh, there's usually like some broader objective and like the goal broadly of basically like any episode of EFAP or any like coverage of a film or a video game or anything is to try and contribute to and improve the discussion surrounding media. That's like the goal, ultimately. Yeah. It's to try and facilitate better discussions about 
storytelling, yeah, media, vi you know, video games, everything. There's there's like always that sort of working there to try and have better uh, discussions, which it seems like it's it can never be that, right? It's like, oh, well, we're just talking about video games. Like, we're just talking about video games or we're just talking about movies. Like, it can't be more Lots than that. need to devalue well, just, what you're talking art about. Is really, art is really important to me. Um, storytelling is like super duper duper important to me. Um, and I, I want to, I want to facilitate and be, and participate in like discussions about it for the sake of like, not just, you know, entertainment, but to try and yeah, like kind of have those better discussions about it where we're trying to use references and sort of develop an understanding of, of people's frameworks and to try and develop good frameworks that we can use. It's not just about, like, agreements or disagreements or, like, petty arguments on the internet about movies. It's kind of a lame way to view it, you know? I just think that if if it was as simple as you said something about a thing that I like that was mean, or vice versa, it's like, don't you think EFAB would be a very different show at that point? Like, uh... Yeah, I, yeah, you'd think so. There's a lot of people who hate Ragnarok, by the way. Synthetic Man is one of many. So, what was it? You mm -hmm. know, like, surely it's more than that. And I would say, yeah. And also, they remember, it's more than... It's more than just a video game to a lot of people. For the people who made it, it was several years of their life. And for a lot of people who played it, it's like a really important story that has deep meaning to them and has like and, and has like lessons that people are pulling from it that they want to try and apply to their lives that are like deeply important to them. Well, the like, how much the game means to them and how much they think it's getting shot. Well, funnily enough, that's kind of I've said before, that was kind of the motivation behind me making the Soma videos was uh it was tipped over the edge when I saw the Joseph Anderson video was having a, a big effect. And for all I right, know... Right, where it's just like, I don't want to see like, that effect play out. Yeah, that could have contributed significantly to the creation of Amnesia Rebirth, for all I know, which really fucking right, upsets me. Right, the destruction me, but, of further oh well. Somers from that studio. Yes, uh, no, no chance of getting another one sort of thing because of that. But yeah, so what I guess I'm saying is, yes, the pursuit of, of interesting discussions, the uh, expectation that through more deliberate conversations, we can perhaps push the needle slightly in terms of the overall discussion. To check out points of view that are completely alternative to ours, because, you know, coming away from Ragnarok saying, uh, like, like he had several quotes from his streams, he was just saying, like, the story is just awful. And then in his video, he said that the gameplay is, like, the best part, which I hadn't heard from really anybody. Most people I'd heard who didn't like the game shit on the gameplay quite a bit. So, mm -hmm. like, okay, yeah, you got that. Then you've got, like, he really has issues with me personally and with several of my friends personally do to a aggressive degree and to this day mm -hmm. i think he thinks that i don't know about that or that nobody knows about that it's just like it's in your stream dude he, i think he yeah, thinks of his streams as like a stuff. secret yeah it's weird the the way that he operates on his stream and the way that he operates on his like normal videos it's like a, a very very toned down version of who he really is so to speak because who you are in a live setting is arguably who you are in a more well, so real setting. This is kind of an interesting thought. Um, do you do you think do you think that it's a bit more complicated than that in the sense that the way that somebody if somebody were to sit down, you know, like if like there's there's instances where somebody says something, it's like, do you really think that? And they're like, nah, actually no, I I don't really think that. That's stupid. Like if if they're, as soon as they have a little bit more time to think it through, um, that, like, there's something to be said about a very well-thought-out, scripted statement on a topic or a video being somebody's essentially definitive thoughts. I think, on, I think um, it goes both ways, right? You could say something that yes. is more honest that you wouldn't want people to hear because you're on a live setting, or you could say something that you genuinely don't believe that just seemed right at the time, and you're like, yeah, oh, I don't mean that. Yeah, out, and then you... Exactly. It's, it, yeah, that would, that would basically be my conclusion. But, of course, it's... In this case, it's a little bit more... Uh, Awkward, isn't it? Well, one of the key factors like... for people discovering whether or not what you said was what you believe is repeat offenses and what you do when you're and faced with it. And what would you it. say? Yeah, exactly. If somebody says to you, do you agree with that thing you said? You got answers. There's answers to that question that are available to you that will be indicative of what you actually think at that point. Yeah. So the question is, am I going to respond? Fuck no, well, I'm not did. wasting 11. I was gonna say, this is, this, a is a this is a response. <laughs> and also, like, it's kind of funny to be like, ha ha, I'm not gonna respond. I'm not wasting my time on that. It's like... So, yeah, when, okay. uh, <laughs> when we finished the coverage, there was a question of, like, uh, if he makes, like, a big old breakdown, are we gonna respond to it? And we figured no, we, like, because there's so much shit we've got to do that it's probably not worth mm -hmm. it. But the conversation also went to, like, he isn't gonna do that. Like, 
in terms of he's a pretty consistently written character uh, if i can be yeah. a little clowny with it like he's he's a uh, what do we know about him it's like low effort and very much doesn't want people to know about some of the shit that he says when he thinks he's got like a more core more passionate audience listening so it would be a very bad idea for him to do like if i were a friend of his i would not advise him to respond to it yeah, um, I would say you need idea. to zip your <laughs> lip. You need idea. to act as if this never happened. Carry on. Obviously, your audience is retarded, right? You need to just keep sailing on with that. To be honest with you, do I probably wouldn't respond. have recommended do this not. even. No, I do act as if you have no idea of it. You're totally ignorant of it. You've never seen it. Just let it go away. And, Let it be forgotten. Yeah, just it, it, and then if in live streams, people ask you about this this horrible video that's been made about you. Just be like, um, you know, I uh, uh, I've seen a lot of people have made responses. I uh, I haven't looked into them or whatever because this is the thing when you said stuff stuff that he said, less eyes the better. Um, Absolutely, the I mean, less he was eyes explicit the about the that himself. Last thing you need is people watching. Oh so, yeah, this makes sense. Seven hours of my life watching that shit. I don't give a shit what they called me. Yeah, the you fact do. that they couldn't just do, do a normal you you EFAP you episode. Hey, I like he how said he can't just do a normal EFAP, EFAP episode. episode. Yeah. So he didn't so know, know what EFAP, EFAP is. Yeah. yeah. Also, this is what we do, buddy. That is that, that was a normal know. EFAP response. It's just like people, it, he's not aware of the, the Twitch saga. People said it was classic EFAP. They did. Dude, it's becoming people's like favorite episode of all time, <laughs> which doesn't surprise me, I guess, because of doesn't surprise me at all. It is pretty funny that he would just say a podcast named EFAP, but yet you can speak about the format so casually. It's just you know, funny. We, we have do, yeah. we have done that format before. The Twitch saga was that format. Yes, um, except Twitch streamers that... are actually aware that you will look at their streams for some reason. YouTubers, mm -hmm. I guess, or at least this guy uh, is like, what? But also, you do care, because you made this response at the very least. Yeah. ...load on my videos really says a lot about them, so I'm- It says a it lot say about, about us. us. What is it- no, like, tell me, what does it say about us? I'd be curious, like, is it sad that we care? Is it sad that we defend our friends? Is it sad that we have the effort, that we care about art, that- what does it say about us, really? Or is it just sad, soy, pathetic, da 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 buzzword, buzzword? I'm not going to give them the attention they so desperately crave. You took that oh. from me. <laughs> like the whole point was that your attention whoring like crazy. The, you don't the care attention. about breaking down games properly. You just do it really quickly for whatever's coming out and whatever's popular. That's your whole thing. Because you're trying to get more numbers. You're trying to get more attention. You had the clips where you're clearly upset and jealous that the people who are above you right now don't agree with you on what is woke or not. And then remember when someone in his chat is like, why are you talking about Mauler so much? He's not even like, like, who cares? He's not relevant. He was like, yes, he is. He's on several podcasts. Like, well, yeah, it's a little bit, it's kind of funny, right? It's again, the way that you talk about it on a stream is interesting. But then when it's the video, you hit a lot of the standard like points that are a lot more easily agreeable. Like, ah, oh, yeah, they're attention seeking. Ah, oh, yeah, I mm -hmm. don't care. Like, I've got better things to do in my life. Like those sorts of easy. Mm -hmm. It's just funny. Because that's that's really like the easiest way to distill the difference between like his his videos and his streams. His his videos is like he filters through to make everything more palatable, but it's like not Absolutely. truly reflective of like how he feels or like what his actual perspectives are on a lot of things. Like we saw examples of that in the coverage. It's really interesting as all because it's so clear cut. And I suggest you do the same. This is the last I will ever mention this in a video. No, it's not. See you next no, time, guys. That's I bet guarantee you, I'm not going to watch him, but video. guarantee you he'll say it in streams. You'll be like, fuck yeah. the yeah. EFS I, I think the fact that I he very specifically him. said that, I think the fact that he said that, like, is indicative of the fact that he will talk about yeah, it in yeah. streams. Well, he can't let them. I mean, he couldn't, like he couldn't that, help yeah. him. Well, he couldn't help himself when it was just shitting on you. Of course. <laughs> like, during his life, and and lots of people too. Like it's, it's funny because he's like, he's like, oh, you come after me, you did all this just because I dislike it. I think differently of the quality to you. It's like, dude, we saw the clips where you're like getting angry every time any like cutscene plays. You'll just pause and they go, Bola likes this, by the way. Like it upset you that I like it. It's fucking you're weird. Clearly mm -hmm. comparing yourself to Mahler and in, in the same way that you are comparing yourself to many people. We could see it in your personality. 
What, do you remember the part where he was like very it. madly talking about Alana Pierce? And she works at Santa Monica, so I guess that might be an example of, right, somebody moving onwards and upwards and doing well in their career, and that seemed to piss him off. Oh, cool. Quite a, a bit, woman. yeah. He said he couldn't say what he wanted to happen to her because he'd get him banned. That's like, what like, is that, you know? Like, like, what, a, what are you doing? That's a bit weird, yeah. Thing. A little bit weird. So, um, so I guess that's right, the response yeah. there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> This is the thing, it's fine with us. Like, there's nothing for us to do. Yep. The, the video's there. Go watch it if you well, want. Well, the coverage is done. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, leads us into we're going to start responding to all the so, things we were sent. Well, of yeah. Course, all across all however many hours that coverage ended up being in total. Three streams in totality. Nice. Three very long streams. All right. It was a so marathon. Like a We'll go chronological, so it'll go from just talking about Ragnarok as a story and then into the Synthetic Man coverage. We'll probably note uh, the change because of the tone of the, the messages will likely change too. <laughs> Do you even need to, to note that or will it be apparent? <laughs> it will be apparent, yes. So, this one is uh, Count Dooku. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, a lot of people were very excited to see us do a breakdown of not only a game, but a game story for, uh, with full access to all of the reference material. How cool is that? Absolutely. Spent a lot of time watching the, uh, watching the video to learn about what happens. Even those of us who didn't play it, we watched the cutscenes and listened to the dialogue and the interactions. Mm-hmm. Now that it's December, what's y'all's favorite version of Christmas Carol? Our favorite uh, version of Christmas Carol? I think my Carol? favorite version is the the Dis the one with uh, the, the, Mi the Mickey Mouse. No, the the Disney one. Oh, oh I got gotcha. you. Where it's Scrooge McDuck? Yeah, I I've always uh, really that is a good one. one. I think I'm gonna go with the Muppets though. I remember really liking the Muppets one, but man, it's been a long time since I've even consumed a Christmas Carol as a story. Yeah. Maybe I should. Did any of you guys watch the, uh, I'm not sure if I, I think I watched it, the, the Robert Zemeckis, the, the one with Jim Carrey. No, I didn't. The, the animated one. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. I feel like I, I'm pretty sure I, I saw that, I think. No, but I, I really like, uh, I really like the Scrooge McDuck one. Um, one of my favorite moments was from Mola's playthrough was him using a realm shift to outrace Mjolnir back to Thor. I remember that. I think I was running toward him while the realm shift was activated. I could see Mjolnir was like coming back to him with me. I was just like, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Rough estimate. All of Mola's God of War streams amount to 5.5 days. Uh, would that include the original 2018 stream, the new one, and then all the set of the originals plus... Ragnarok. So, wow. Fun time, though. Uh, this story was a 20-hour fangasm. I would say there was a hell of a lot of fan service, but it's funny because a lot of people, I guess, feel that it destroyed God of War as a franchise. If you say so. Careful, Mauler. You're covered in Bifrost. Yeah, he says that a lot in the game. You know, I'll say that a lot. If I say Sonic is good because you eat mushrooms and save Princess from Giant Turtle, I'm objectively wrong. The response I got was, that is lying, not being objectively wrong. Oh, this is, so this is the example about how we can at least prove there is some basis about speaking on media objectively speaking. Like, um, and I think the example you often give, Fringy, is just like, you'll describe the title of something and then the content of something completely different. You'd be like, see, I am objectively wrong. I guess the, the, the counter-argument is, no, that's just a lie. So um, how do they deal with people well, who just don't know? What about what... people who actually get it wrong, yeah, but like, they weren't lying? Th 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 like what I said, and Genshin even, Impact even, is about mechs. Anything. If you're lying, you're wrong, right? You're wrong about the facts. So it doesn't even, you're just kicking the can down the road. It's like, meaning what? That you are saying something that is incorrect. With intention to mislead, I guess. But yeah, you're right, that's still... Half of that is still the thing. But it's happened before. I said, uh, when I was trying to describe what Genshin Impact is without having any clue what it is, if someone said, yeah, you were lying, I'd be like, I don't, I don't think I was lying. I just thought that I knew what it was, but I didn't. So this happens to people you all the time. Can, you can get things right. It's just, I don't know. It feels like 
Like, the nature of having a discussion about a piece of media while trying to appeal to what is in the story, it doesn't mean that there's, like, a definitive correct statement about something. It's still a matter of using those references to support arguments that may or may not be convincing to, you know, a certain degree, to a great degree or to a lesser degree. Uh, yeah, and what is it called when... Wrong, you can get your understanding of certain facts wrong, but I mean, nevertheless, right, like, it's still a good idea to try and appeal to the material in the story, surely. And what is it called when if I told my dad, because he knows nothing about this sort of stuff, I'm like, that's Mario, and then I, I point to the princess and be like, that's Princess Sonic. Now, I need you to, to recant that, like, like as information to pass a quiz when, when Fringy comes in here and asks you. And he's like, okay. And you're like, what's the princess's name? And he's just like, Sonic. And then you just go, you're lying. <laughs> it's like, what? what are, no, I, I I had it on good authority, you know? Oh, whoops. Yeah, it's, it's the, the difference between, like, a lie and just being wrong. I don't think, most people, when they get something wrong, they're not lying. They're just incorrect. They're operating yeah, under the wrong, uh, under bad information. They're they're yeah. conveying information to you that they believe to be correct. So we do the thermometer example because no one's going to claim the thermometer is lying. Like, no, it's broken. That's not the same thing. Yeah, and if they say lying, it's almost certainly in a just a colloquialism. Um, <laughs> the thermometer. But yeah, when you lie, you have malicious intent. You're intending to de to deceive somebody. You know that what you're saying is not true, or you're being irresponsible. I'd go as to say is if you're if you're repeating something irresponsibly that you know is very likely not correct but you're saying it very boldly i would i would classify that as a lie as well i think um i've been looking forward to this with a little smiley face good stuff look it's up good. look up r34 fringy i promise you won't be disappointed yeah fringy no, give it a look i love rule 34 no i'm good i'm a man of rules rules are what bind us together as a civilization it's what separates us from the animals Hi, Rags. Hello. I'm Orla. Hello. Hi, Fringy. Hey. Hi, all. Have you thoughts to offer regarding the Cocaine Bear trailer? Looks funny. I've not seen the uh, Cocaine Bear trailer. Weird kind of movie. I hope it does well. About a Cocaine Bear. A weekend with Mauler and the gang dissecting and gushing over a shining example of storytelling in video games? Pfft, greed. Uh, JK, have a good one. Oh, the greed me. Oh, I'm sure there are many who would say that. Yeah. I stayed up all night catching up on God of War streams. You would enjoy oh. them, I hope so. Yeah, I hope you did. Through the streams, we've seen Molar and Metal struggle with one of the deadly sins. Oh, that'd be greed again. Sir. Greed. Oi, Molly. It's awfully brave of you to go on your stream of, of many to say that Atreus is just a simplified and less impressive Elizabeth Comstock. You trying to trying to meme me Ooh. you and your pride and your, <laughs> and your That's ego. That's a lie! Also, I know this may pain Fringy, but I'd love to hear his thoughts and anyone else's on the latest Mario trailer, and not just on the voice casting. Uh, I'm sure I would have talked about it. So, the thing... I, uh, there's the, there's a new clip that was, uh, shown at the Game Awards where it was, like, Mario, Toad is, like, leading Mario through the Mushroom Kingdom and he's jumping around and going through all these platforms and using pipes to get around to get to Princess Peach's castle. And, um, it kind of, like, that scene kind of reinforces my feeling about that film, which is that the animators and the artists are, like, working very, very, very hard to create something really cool. Uh, I don't know if the writing is going to be of the same quality because the film looks fantastic. Let's talk about Avatar too. Uh, <laughs> oh, um, but uh, yeah, no, like um, the the animation looks great. There's like a lot of neat little, like very subtle nods to the specific games. Um, the score is like incorporating a whole bunch of different tracks. Like it's got tracks from Super Mario Brothers. It's got Bob on Battlefield and. Like the overworld theme for Super Mario World, it's uh, it's it's got a little um, it's it's got a lot of these really neat like things injected into it. Like clearly, a lot of care went into the animation. But I mean, in terms of like the jokes that are happening, right? Like the joke of, oh look, when Toad goes through the pipe, it's like really easy for him. When Mario goes through the pipe, he's like crashing into all of the walls. It's kind of like right. So that's kind of like what we're going to be getting then in terms of the jokes. Probably going to be like pretty um, pretty standard pretty dull yeah um, 
and we're probably not going to do anything particularly crazy by way of like any interesting thematics. And someone might be like, well, it's Mario, to which I would respond, yeah, and I really like Mario, and I kind of, like, I don't know, man, I feel like it might be worthwhile to try and do that. Now, I could be totally wrong, maybe that film will come out and blow me away in terms of, like, having some really core message that's super important. Um, I remember when I was playing the new uh, Mario Kart 8 uh, tracks, like the new courses that have been added to the game, Something I was thinking about, I, I think I talked to to Rags a little bit about it when, when I was telling him that it seems like the premise of the film is that Mario and Luigi get separated, and Luigi gets uh, taken in by Bowser, and so Mario has to go and save Luigi, and like work with yeah, Princess Peach to go save Luigi. It, yeah. um, I can see that as being like, that actually seems to me like the kind of obvious choice to make in terms of writing the story, because you'd be like, well, yeah, because Luigi is his brother, so that's going to be like an easy sort of narrative thrust to get him going on this adventure. Um, whereas, in a sense, the more unconventional choice would be to have Peach be abducted and then Mario and Luigi work together to save her. Um, but something I was can't thinking... do that. Well, I guess the thing is, is that something I've been thinking about is that if you wanted to push a theme that was trying to leverage what we already understand and know about Mario and and like and the characters in that world for as straightforward as they are, what if it was a story where it is Mario and Luigi having to work together to navigate through this new world, and Mario being sort of the the very you know he's he's pretty like quintessential hero character, right? Goes out there, saves the day, very brave and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, Luigi is much more tepid and reserved. He's he's more obviously and scared. More introverted, by maybe. Well, yeah. So what I was thinking was, what if you had it so that the 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 point of the film is meant to be like some sort of statement about the way that you need to try and like move through life, and 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 like the Mushroom Kingdom is kind of almost sort of this allegorical world for that. Like it can be a literal place that exists and you know has a real threat. What if what if the nature of that story in terms of a core theme is that Mario is kind of reckless in the way that he just barrels into dangerous situations uh, and he gets himself into a lot of trouble? But conversely, Luigi is too reserved and too held back that like he can't take any action. He can't be like affirmative and and do what he needs to do. And yeah, so like over individually, the story, you know, yeah, individually it, they they can't they can't do it. But together, learning something together, about they, each yeah. other. And their ways of maneuvering through the world. Yeah, they complement each other's like, strengths, and they can cover for each other's weaknesses. And that, yeah, like, and that nice, Luigi... safe sort of teamwork is really great. Um, just because you know, you, just because you're not perfect yourself doesn't mean you can't work with other people to achieve incredible things. And cooperation's great; it brings out the best in our. It's you know, just really, really nice, approachable you know, safe kind of messaging stuff that's using Mario and Luigi to do that. I think I think it's a pretty safe message, but I think it's also, like, a pretty worthwhile message Very as well. Very yeah. Where Absolutely. It's like, and, and, of course, in terms of building character, it's like, well, Mario and Luigi, maybe at the beginning, they're, they're not quite as good friends. And then over the course of the story, as they begin to understand each other a little bit better, they, uh, they come to trust each other more, and then each of them gets something from the other that they didn't have. So, like, Luigi finds courage and Mario finds, I guess, like not intelligence, but um, discretion, a more methodical. Yeah, exactly. And then the two of them working together, you know, save the day. The reason yeah, why I'm it's... floating this is because I get the impression that the Mario movie is not gonna. I don't know. I I I, I don't. I get the impression that in terms of like a core theme, which a lot of my favorite like animated films tend to focus in really heavily on, like Wally, The Incredibles, Finding Nemo, and stuff. Um, Shrek. Like, I'm not, I'm not, that's funny, it's kind of like a meme, but like, Shrek is a great film, and that's got like a core cool message film. that I think is really valuable. I just, uh, I don't get that impression based on that trailer. I get the impression that for as, as great as it's going to look, and for as much effort has clearly gone into it on that front, I just get a little concerned that the writing is going to be like, very mediocre, and very like, straightforward, that aside no from it being a Mario film, the story yeah, and the message, I, I feel. yeah. I think that's that's kind of how I'm feeling, and I, I don't... I don't know, man. I feel like people do remember, like, the ending of Super Mario Galaxy, where they kind of tried to do something that was a little bit different. Tried to do something a little bit more emotionally resonant, and I think it kind of works. Like, I feel like Mario was entirely capable of doing that, and I, I, I'm i not sure if they're gonna do that. That's that's kind of right. I could be totally wrong, though. Maybe maybe the film maybe. will come out and blow my mind. So there's your answer. We'll yep, there's the answer. Um... Who's hotter, Freya or Sif? Um, honestly, they're both in terms of they're both very attractive. 
right? Like they're both very physically attractive people. So I think this will come down to who you find personality wise, or maybe their role in the world, which you find more uh, attractive. Um, that maybe it's probably whoever will mesh best with your personality that you'll find to be the most attractive. Because obviously they're both very, very lovely uh, ladies, but they have, they seem to have, they're, they're, they have strong personalities, but how that sort of exhibits itself is in somewhat different ways. Freya is far more outgoing about it, but she's of course in a different place to do it than Sif is. Um, they, they're both very family oriented. They both are willing to do things that are potentially, I mean, certainly very dangerous uh, in order to try and, you know, help their families out in the best way that they can. Um, they're both, maybe Sif is a bit more supportive uh, and Frey is more, I guess, more aggressive in that kind of way. Uh, I mean, they're, they're both, especially considering how little of Sif we get, it's kind of nice to see that we get, you know, a character there. Uh, and how important she ends up being. But I don't know. Uh, honestly, I would probably go with S Sif, but I think this is, you got two winners here. Both pretty powerful, too. Yeah, they're both powerful. They're both, I mean, they've both clearly been through a lot. One, the, the, Their suffering has been in different ways, both at the hands of Odin, but in totally different sorts of you know like i said sorts of ways mm -hmm. i mean whether yeah, it, the way that odin treats thor is accountable. different than how yeah the way that odin the, the, treats the side of their kids yes yes it, the, the, their children are very very important to them they're very family uh, well, I, I guess what i'm saying is that both of them in some sense failed it's just that maybe phrase is much more uh Overt. apparent and significant yeah, well, yeah, because ultimately Sif did fail to like protect Magni and Modi. From it's like what she said, right? Odin threw them like at, at the at a mountain face, and like for what? And it's like, but she didn't stop it, which is probably what's motivating her right now to be more yeah. like she you wonder she gets what she could have like, done. She understands better. Yeah, yeah. Her position is not like she doesn't have because Freya is obviously a very powerful warrior. She knows incredible magic. We don't really know about what Sif can do. That wasn't really uh, something that we got to see in the story much. We don't know if she's just uh, very charismatic or if she... We don't really know much about what Sif is capable of. We didn't see that part of her manifest in the story. Um, so that would be... It would be interesting to know those things. Because there, be, there must be something about her. It just wasn't important to the story to see that element of her. I'm not sure why but people call the point is they're both good. Yes. Not sure why people call Kratos sorry or woke. The whole arc was for him to open up and be better, not to go back to how or what he was, uh, but something new. A father, a leader, a friend, a brother. Kratos' full arc well, is complete. Yeah, the problem is that when you say be better, there's a lot of simpletons who fixate literally on just the words be better, and any sense of nuance or context just goes completely out the window. And it's a damn shame. Because Freya and Kratos, they're like, I guess Freya in their own separate way. But everything in God of War has some buildup, some explanation behind it. There's some sort of reason for why things are the way they are. It wasn't, they didn't just throw in a phrase or a word and want that to preach to you. They put a lot of work into it. And if people can't realize that, then that's just... Well, they just had some yeah, downright I mean, great advice in there. You are not your failures is a really good thing to think about whenever you feel, absolutely. You feel worthless. Now, some simpletons might have thought that the, the the scenes in which we got those messages were nothing but filling and it's just padding and pointless. There wasn't anything of substance. Yeah, that it was pointless uh, and that it was just a, a glorified loading screen. But of course, those people are fools. The fact that the first giant jellyfish in Freya's wedding missions weren't core story baffles me because they are so important to the characters. Yeah, they made, yeah. I would argue, a lot, if not all, of the side content is important to understanding the whole story. The fucking Fae one. Super important. All in the side. I'm really happy with Christopher Judge as Kratos. Loved him as TLC? Teal Teal'c in Stargate? And now I also love oh, him yeah, as Kratos. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, he was. Yeah. 
Man, Kratos was in space. Crazy. Kratos in space. Hope to see him in more projects. Yeah, yeah. Cool uh, how much he cares about this one. It'll be interesting to see if people can disassociate. Yeah, you know, or if every time they hear him, they'll be like, yo, that's Kratos. Or if he'll, you know, ever be able to not be Kratos. I think he really wants to be more Kratos. Or with anything they choose to go with next. Don't blame him for that at all. This just says woke. All right. Uh, so G O T G H S referenced G O W best TV special ever. Guardians of the Galaxy or the holiday yeah, special yeah. referenced God of War. I can't. Oh yeah, it did oh. I remember? They for some reason people thought looked at Drax and said he's Kratos. Ah, uh, God of War. Oh right, I see. I forgot most of what happened in that special. I'm, wow. I'm not sure I even understand how you look at Drax and think, ah, oh, Kratos. What, because he's a big muscly guy? Okay. <laughs> like, oh, I know. I, that's that's all I got. I don't know. Is it because he's got, like, tattoos or something? Like, marks on him? Kratos has a big tattoo? I guess so. It's just the, the coloring is so different. different. Yeah. Well, yeah. Coloring is Kratos very different. Probably white. Um, best villain award goes to Odin or Silco. Oh, damn. <laughs> uh, I'm a cool. huge fan of both of those. I think I'm going to go with Silco. I like them both a lot, but we get a lot of... That's the thing. We get a lot of Silco. We get a lot of Odin, too. I, I'm going to go with Silco personally, but they're both super great villains. I adore so much about them, and I'm just like the more I remember about Silco, I look forward to rewatching Arcane for when season two comes around. Because remember how like he like completely tears down Vanda, what he believes is like a complete breach of his principles, and then he ends up doing the exact same thing when you hit Ali. Yeah, there's just there's so much about Silco that's great. He's he is one of the best villains. All right, yeah. um, I'm gonna I am going to go with Silco as my favorite, though. I don't want that in any way to undermine how much I really like Odin. What are you bringing? I don't know. I'm. I'm. Uh, that's tough. I it is really, tough. It's really, legitimately really difficult. Really, Silco is my favorite character in Arcane. Um, oh damn! I think Silco might just just a little bit uh, beat out Odin. Just a little bit though. But. Does any character from Arcane beat out Kratos? Oh, whoa, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't think. So. I don't. I'm. I don't know. Because <laughs> Kratos is one of my favorite characters now. Just in anything. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. Harry. <laughs> Come along, That's where way, buddy. <laughs> Any of you guys checking out or revisiting The Witcher 3 now the next gen update is coming out this month? Um, very possibly, actually. I'm I've I've only played through to completion The Witcher 3 once, and I haven't finished all the DLC. I haven't finished Blood and Wine yet. But um I I am very interested in playing it again now that the next gen stuff is out. Uh it could be the excuse that I need to get, you know, into it, play it again, experience it again. And hopefully, anyone who hasn't played it yet, I would highly recommend it. I think it's a great uh, fantasy world, and I really like a lot of the quests and the dialogue in it. And it's a you know it's a fun game to play. I really lost myself playing the. Uh, I really, I re uh, it's a game you could lose yourself in. I think the world's really awesome and great. I like so much about it. So probably yes to answer your question. Probably yes. I would like to play all three of them someday. I haven't played the first. Um, I hear that it's uh, of its it. time and janky. Uh, but I did play it. the the second one. I would also recommend, though that is a that is a difficult game. Witcher Three definitely modernized it in a way. But I enjoyed three or uh, two, two quite a bit. It was one of the first games that I played that was like, oh shit, this is like a difficult game that like success isn't guaranteed. I need to really work hard 
I need to be good and pay attention and do all the side content and things. It's in, uh, it's insane looking back at The Last of Us 2 after God of War 5 and just seeing the stark contrast on how the developers treat their characters and the intelligence of the audience. Yeah. Uh, when you think back on The Last of Us 2, it spends a decent amount of time trying to achieve very little. It, like it does. It has one it's point, a... it drills over and over and over again, and its whole narrative like squashes that point anyway. Doesn't even do it well. Meanwhile, there's a lot of things that are... There's a lot <clears throat> the Ragnarok has to say. It, it's got a lot of characters to work with, and because all the, the characters are different in their own way, you can have all kinds of different messages. Yeah, a lot of the, they're kind of opposites in terms of uh, writing discipline. Thoughts on the designs for these new Pokemon? Low Kicks, King Gambit, Gambit and uh, Bax Caliber and Claude Sire. Um, could, would you uh, copy those into the Discord and I can look those up while you're carrying on with super chats? And once I have pictures, we could uh, well. address it. All right. My biggest criticism is that Odin wasn't defeated by throwing Mimir's head horn first at Odin. <laughs> Would've been cool. Pulls him all fucker in the final fight, though. So that he does. Well, that would be, that was what, uh, that's what, that's what Brock called him. Yeah, he says that one was for Brock. <laughs> also, thoughts on the new Mario movie and Indiana Jones trailers? Alright, uh, well, you got the Mario one. Indiana Jones, I'm just depressed. Yeah, that's about it. Definitely got the vibe of Here We Go Again. Yeah. Probably gonna rewatch the, the four of them yeah. before the fifth one. Of course. <sighs> I like how they play the music from the movies that at this point are how many years old now? 40? That Leave it alone. How many people just, yeah, well it's just kind of funny. It's like, yeah, remember this music from a movie that isn't this movie? It's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> like, We're talking about it on, um, I do. I think it was Open Bar and, and saying like, you guys remember like 12 years ago we said he's too old for this? Yeah, and now how old? Isn't Harrison Ford in his late 70s? It's insane, man. Like, uh. You know, Henry Cavill would make a fucking great Indiana Jones. Oh, I sorry. Henry Cavill could make a great anything at this point. He could make Probably. a great lot of things, yeah. I mean, He's like James Bond, right? Indiana like that... Jones, James Bond. Uh, I mean, it was it's... Superman formally, but yeah. He, yeah, it's, it's one of the greatest fucking... Scams of our age, of our generation, was that you had Henry Cavill, the perfect Superman, and that clown Snyder just completely squandered him. Um, and they're like, look, he turned old. up at Black Adam. Now he's fired. Sorry, <laughs> and, now, and, now, and now The Rock is not following Warner Brothers or, or like the Black Adam Twitter account on his Instagram or something. He unfollowed Warner Brothers because it's over. It's it was over stuff. before it began. Well, it might not have been. It, it made a lot of I money. I suppose, yeah. I guess you're right. If, if it, it did had made, made over a, a billion, money. it would have been an interesting time. Oh, then. absolutely. Uh, yeah, but, but I don't think that was like ever that, going yeah. to happen. Not for Because now it seems like it's going to be a hard reset. Everybody's done. I mean, if, if, if Henry Cavill is out, that means everybody's out, surely. Otherwise, that seems deeply unfair, well, doesn't it? <laughs> What a horrible coincidence that all that Patty Jenkins shit is happening too, because that might not be necessarily connected. It could just be, a, you know, really bad shit that's happening because of 84 and other stuff. And it's just like, if we've got Wonder Woman's on the ropes, we've lost Superman and we've lost Batman, at least that Batman. Yeah. It's really not like, an enviable position to be in at all, to be, no, you because know, the no Warner matter what, guys, the DC guys, and be like, what the fuck do we do? There's no decision that you make that won't piss people off, and the well, reality no. is that the correct long-term decision is probably to just rip off the band-aid and do a hard reset and stop hobbling I along so. with this 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 deeply flawed universe. Make it very clear: we are. It is a fresh start. These characters are not their old iterations. We are. Uh, we are moving forward. I think that's the best you can do. Yeah. What are we about to say, Mubes? Um. Remind me, what was the what was the thing that was said? Sort of... Uh what about the Wonder Woman stuff? Oh yeah, so I was gonna say 
Because Man of Steel, was that 2010? 13. 13. So imagine you know they started in 2013 and their intention is to build something as powerful as the MCU and you ask them in 2022, uh, how are we doing? And they're like, uh, we've lost, we haven't got any of our headlighters. He's like, oh, you've already killed Superman, have you? And it's like, well, uh... I mean, technically, Once yes. Once for real, secondly, <laughs> in the meta, yeah. Like, in the That's second movie, like we killed him. Out. It's like, second movie? And you're like, what? Well, we brought him back. You're like, what, what, what are you saying? It's like, well, but we've lost him now. Uh, how's what do you mean you lost him? How did, how did Superman die again? It's like, no, 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 the actor, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. Uh, Wonder Woman, we, 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 you know, two movies? Two, two Wonder Woman movies? She's out now, possibly. And you're like, why? You're like, no, I don't know. And then and it's like, the most successful movie is Aquaman. It's like, Aquaman. <laughs> Yeah, it made like it made more money than the Dark Knight. It's like, how? Why? <laughs> Why? What happened? China. And it's like, okay, but what what have we released recently? Black Adam solo movie <laughs> with the Justice Who? Society. It's like, oh, and it's at what fighting Shazam? No, he's never gonna fight Shazam. It's like. Why? It's like, oh, the Rock just doesn't seem to want to. It's like he just we know want anything. To Step by step, how this all became this way, but like when you look at it broadly from you know 2013 to now, you're like, holy shit, guys, in nine years, you have this is a calamity. I was Not just scrolling great. through Twitter and it's screen rant. It says, uh, a new report reveals more insight into the decision to reverse Henry Cavill's DC return to Superman. According to a Hollywood insider, Cavill was a pawn in Dwayne Johnson's quote unquote failed attempt to control a piece of DC. <laughs> is that. Yeah, but who said that though? Is that actually is that like a reputable source or is that just like I have that's, no clue. I mean, I, surely like The Rock is done, right? Like I, I figure like there's well, no way that he's from that it sounds like he it. might be. Yeah. Oh, uh, apparently no, that was a Hollywood reporter. Okay, so there's probably some truth to that. Hmm, that's kind of that's kind of lame. I I mean, presumably it is a hard reset, right? Like it's. I, I I've talked about, I feel like Angry Joe's been very mad about it, and something that he's been tweeting a lot is like essentially the notion of if you're gonna get rid of Henry Cavill, then you have to, out of like fairness, get rid of your people too, like get rid of uh get rid of John Cena's peacemaker. But like they've already exactly didn't, didn't they come out and say that the big reason they got rid of him is just he's just not young enough for the role. Well, yeah. So the the point is that the new Superman film is going to be him and his his earlier years as like a reporter in Metropolis, and so Henry okay, Cavill is too old to play him. Like that, be in his twenties, I presume. By that logic, then you know James Gunn doesn't necessarily have to do anything else. <sighs> uh well, I think the thing is is that because if you if you told me if you put me in a position where I had to be in charge of this universe, I would just like I'd just be like hard reset. We're we're stopping. There's no point yep. in continuing with this like. This franchise, just it's do not it. working. It hasn't it. been working. We have to it do a hard hurt, reset. But we're well, now. my thing is, oh, shit for now, but, I was saying this yeah. on um, Open Bar, but surely that is what they're doing. It's just the if we're in that boardroom and you suggest that and we all agree, the next step is, okay, but we've got several movies coming out that are, are, that are coming out. We're not exactly in the position of just announcing this is done as a timeline, but also these movies, it's like we'll probably announce these things after these movies come out. Yeah, like, wait until maybe give it, like, a bit of time and go radio silent to just put some distance between the current DC stuff and then whatever you're going to do next. But that's not what they're doing. They're going to announce stuff next year, the beginning of next year. They're uh, full steam ahead, seemingly. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I would recommend taking, like, a year or a couple years gap between everything. Not just to create and, um, physical space, or I guess temporal space, in between the old and the new but to really make sure that you have your ducks in a row, so to speak, yeah, on the story and your overall I could, plan. Dude, I can see them being like, something James, was... please save us. Save, like, whatever yeah, it is that you need yeah. to do. We actually have think, no um, idea what's going on. If, if, if you wanted to try and maintain some of the bridges with some of the actors that you already have, I think that the easiest way to do that would be to give them a different role. Give them someone else. So, like, um... Like, if, if Henry Cavill can't play Superman, ask him if he wants to play Hal Jordan or something. Like, you know, see if there's, like, another role that he wants. Make him play a Superman fan. villain just to rub it in. <laughs> oh, 
Zod. Fans would find it really like, cool. They make him play Zod, holy shit. <laughs> like, yeah, I think fans would He would, would make a great that. Zod. Uh, he probably would. He could, he could make I mean, him he was, a great lot of things. I mean, he um, was the villain in Fallout, essentially, in a way, so... Yeah, he was like, really good in that. Like, was, the reality he, is that Henry Cavill just needs to be paired with people who are as talented and enthusiastic as he is, and often it's been, they're enthusiastic, but they're not talented, or well, they're neither. Obviously, the hope is that 40k <laughs> project, that'll be the one now, please. Because he's executive producing that as well, which means that he has, he has he a hand on the wheel. He cares about Warhammer. He clearly cares about Warhammer, so that could be awesome if he gets to have exercise some level of control over it, which he may well. It seems like at this point he's kind of like sort of the de facto spokesperson for Warhammer, <laughs> because it's like this incredibly charming and handsome British man, like basically James Bond in real life, is like, yeah, no, I play with like Warhammer figurines. It's oh, like dude. the best PR that you could ever have at for this that point, company. He may as well have been made in a lab at this point. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of like, wow, you uh, it, knocked out all end traits, huh? It's kind of crazy that he's not winning more. Like, he is yeah. obviously winning at the game of life, because he's like a super successful, you know, but like, you'd think that he would be top of his game, right? Like, he would be, he'd be having no trouble. Uh, well, all, I think that all of this, it, it's, it's going to be, I think in the long run, all of this will be a very advantageous hump to get over. Um, yes. If you could call it that, because so. he's, we're going to, he's going to be around for a long time. I think he is going well, yeah, to. He's 30, so he's still got a lot of years ahead of him. Um, absolutely, he just gives me that that Pierce Brosnan energy. I can I can imagine a an older, wiser kind of like you, you know a a sixty year old Henry Cavill who is just he's he's just he's got the silvery beard, experience oh, look yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah, he's I just he he's gonna be he could be essentially the the almost like christopher lee in a sense where i get the i get the feeling with henry Cav, Cav, is it cavill or cavill i say cavill? both often I often forget yeah, that. I, <laughs> now that i'm thinking about it but he he strikes me as the kind of person who's like william shatner or christopher lee who's probably i just feel they're just going to drop dead one day they're not going to retire they're not going to stop they just have a huge passion for it and they want to keep doing stuff and yeah. so we're going to yeah. have christopher lee just kept decades. going and hey, you know what? Yeah. Maybe like in twenty years, he can play. Uh, he can play Superman's dad. He can play Jonathan Kent or something. The circle you know? will be complete. I mean, but, yeah. Except he'll be a good Jonathan Kent, where he, he won't be like telling him that he should let people die. He'll be instilling good lessons. That's kind of funny because <laughs> I mean, like he's we probably had too Kevin to play Jonathan for Kent, that role. Right? Uh, maybe. But it was uh. Wait, what was that? Sorry. It was like another actor that we wasted. We got. We got um. I mean um. I I uh, can't believe I'm forgetting his name now. Kevin I Costner. literally Kevin just Costner? had him. Yeah, Kevin Costner. Yeah. We we had him as uh you know. Well, you had a lot of people, in... right? You had Amy Adams as Lois Lane. It's like Amy Adams is a pretty great actress, but like Lawrence she didn't have Fishburne. Anything. Yeah, as Perry White. Like, damn, that's some real good casting there. Yeah. Oh, well. And then you have these but... weird ones like Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. It's like why? <laughs> she's why hot. Get someone else? Yeah, you know why? Like it was an obvious choice. Probably. In some ways, it was a good choice because, like, people well, loved it. That's uh, yeah. that's that's true. But I mean, I mean it seems we, like at this yeah, point, for acting though, people like, are, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's so funny I because guess, um, I I I'm aware of like when they were making you know Buffy and stuff that Joss Whedon was like whip crack type director in terms of getting performances out of people, which is you know there's this controversy over that right right like if you get some of the greatest art ever at least from your own POV is it with Actors being shouted at to actually do their job properly. On, yeah, people. Exactly. Yeah, because and then and then you're like, oh, so what if we take an actress like Gal Gadot who seemingly just can't do it, and a person like Joss Whedon? What happens? Like he gets fucking destroyed <laughs> because he probably was mean to her a little too much. Maybe even because of that, maybe he held some resentment that way. But also like the writing stuff and like, oh yeah, that's that's where it would have backfired. Because like you get a lot of people saying stories about some of the most classic like auteur directors were assholes, like. Makes you wonder about how art gets made, innit? Um, I wonder, um, like, yeah. um, because if if there are if if they're restarting and like, it seems to me if they have the motivation to get like somebody in their twenties to play Superman, that they're trying to think like very. We want people who are going to be able to stick with us for ten, fifteen years. That uh, I wonder if that like informs. I guess there is that looming question right about the Batman about what's happening with that universe. That is like very much not part of the DCEU, but was like successful and well liked. What's going to happen there? 
Because I think I don't like the idea of that getting folded into a broader universe. But at the same time, if the other option is that it ceases to exist, I don't know. You know, like, I'm not, I'm not sure what I would want if those are my two choices. Mm. But it's going to be awkward if you have two Batmans at the same time. I think that's just going to confuse people. Oh, what an awkward situation for that and Joker, isn't it? Like, it feels, uh, I'm sure Joker several... Joker feels a little bit more segmented, I think. I think Joker yeah. feels a little bit more... Like, it helps that it, it there was no Batman. Like well, it doesn't matter how way. segmented any of them are. The big question in all the suits boardrooms are like, listen, if these things are successful on their own, then they can help basically attach like a bloodline to our big universe. And so do we incorporate them? And funnily right. enough, Joker and the Batman as universes feel like they fit together more than those two fit together with anything in the DCEU. Which is funny, considering that they weren't designed to fit together at all. Yeah. Like, they're just their own things. But, like, I but worry I about that. Because if, if a Joker 2 comes out and it's hyper-successful, then I feel like it's it's just ready to be preyed upon. They'll be like, alright, we're gonna have to in involve it in a universe. Joaquin Phoenix, you ready to play Joker for five more years? We're gonna I put guess you the in thing the is Joker that Avengers movie. As I, as I understand it, there is some level of compartmentalization with some of these things. Like, the, the executive producers of, uh, of like, Joker are not the same as the, uh, like, the executive producers of a lot of other DC stuff. So, like, it's kind of a level of, you know, oh, how, see. like, with giant conglomerations, like, and how it works. It's I remember reading, didn't they not think much of anything about uh, Todd Phillips going to make Joker when they like this. This will probably not work that well. And I only like, had a fifty million dollar budget. It was pretty cheap. Yeah, they didn't um, believe in it. As a, and then it made a billion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> that, Wait, that film surprised been... the fuck out of me as well. I I did not expect to be coming away thinking like, holy fuck, that was great. Yeah, and it's rare to get a movie that's almost entirely reliant on. Like the performance of a character that's like the Joker, we don't expect because God, we've had we've had like all kinds of Joker results, haven't we? Uh we've had yes, we have. It seems to it seems to be either great or horrible. <laughs> like that just seems to be though. Really, but think about it. Like I like Jack Nicholson as uh, I love him as a I Joker, like his yeah. Joker. I obviously I really like Heath Ledger's Joker. I like Joaquin Phoenix's Joker a lot, so really it's- and, and I like Mark Hamill's Joker a ton, so yeah. it's really not hit or miss. Most people do a great job. <laughs> There's that other guy you haven't guy mentioned yet. There's uh... <laughs> that one guy. That, the ideas guy, as it were. Clap, I'm an idea. Yeah, well. That was embarrassing. I that hurt. was embarrassing. I actually heard that they wrote that, and then it made it through to the actors, and then everyone saw that, and they kept it in. Like, they made it through the Jesus. cut. Yeah. Made it into the final cut. Clearly, that Joker watched a lot of Eva Vendetta. Like, this is a real cool movie, and I should base my whole <laughs> personality after it. On that, yeah. And by the way, that's not me throwing shade at Eva Vendetta. I like it. Um, no, I, I it's like, like it putting, too. yeah, Hugo Weaving next to... What's his face? Morbius. Is Hugo just... Weaving next to, to, to Morbius? Oops. Is that his uh, name now? The... <laughs> Jared Leto. What's his name? Jared, Jared Leto. Leto. Yeah. I, he, I feel Hugo like Weaving. Point, he's, just, he's just that cloud actor guy. Like, that's who he, <laughs> he is. played he's a clown, clown, you know? Well, that was about to say, he's crime. known as the clown actor guy. And then he but not the just vampire. because of the literal playing of the clown. <laughs> he, he wasn't was, at one point. He had respect no. at one point, but it's just gone now. I the Morbius and Joker about, killed it. I think it was with Joker. It was like he talked about all of his method acting and everything. Like he talked about all of these extreme lengths he went to to get into character, and the character was shit. Like it's just really awkward. Yeah, method acting is only cool like, if it's good. If it's good, exactly. And at this point, it feels like people are starting to turn against method acting in general. People just feel like it's an excuse for someone to act like an ass. Yeah, didn't Ryan Johnson ruin the version of expectations? Well, Jared I, think, Leto I can't ruined remember method acting. I can't remember who said it, but someone said something along the lines of like, people only seem to method act when they're playing assholes. They never like method act when they're playing like a really great guy. You know, like I guess Christian Hank Bale is desperately played, trying uh, to keep the concept of method acting as good. He's, well, because he, yeah, because he's, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he does the thing where he tries to maintain, like, the accent. Yeah, he has drastic, it, like, I weight think, loss uh, and weight gain kind of Yeah, well, things. there's that. But I, what I meant with the accent is, like, because cause he's not American, but, like, when he was screaming on the set of, uh, of, um, <laughs> of uh terminator salvation he's got that american accent there and it's like are you are you still like maintaining that as part of like 
getting into the role. Oh, like you try and carry the accent you. for a year. Well, how was it? I hope it was good because it's worthless now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that would never not be funny. I'm sorry. It's it's hilarious. <laughs> he's so mad. <laughs> And it's it's funny because he's getting so passionate about the acting for Terminator Salvation. <laughs> well, I mean, Which look is... at uh, Thor: Love and Thunder, the movie that everyone's already forgotten. He was. It's a shame that his his character was. I think it holds a record for the fastest one eighty yeah. that a villain ever gets. <laughs> yeah. Um, Might be, yeah. But damn, like he's you could tell he's a very talented actor who was just given crap to work with. Yep. My god, take care of us. No, I hate you. All gods must die now. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Is... Yeah. Next I scene. Mean, oh no, this god there. is dead. This god was nothing but nice. Oh, that sucks. It's like, wait, what? Then kidnaps yeah. children. It's so... The characterization of a gore was so fucked up. It was just totally scattershot. And I bet you on set, like, he had no idea, like, what... I mean, he even said working on on uh like green screens he had no idea where he was at any given moment that must be they probably hadn't even figured it out yet feeling yeah it's probably incredibly difficult to perform if you don't have a good director who's really kind of arranging these things for you and telling you like, here's where you are here's a picture of it this is what we're gonna do this is yeah that must suck but yeah Especially... it's something you see with uh like for video game performance capture like often they'll have to try and paint a picture for them, right? But it's probably because they, isn't that kind of interesting? Because like video games, when they're doing performance capture, they'll have like concept art typically, or like some sort of, this yeah. is where that thing is, this is where that thing is, like this will be there and that will be there and you need to try and visualize it, but here's some images to help you do it. Um, you'd think that they would do the same on film and maybe they do, but maybe maybe it's a matter of direction, right? Some directors know how to do that and some directors don't. And if you're working on video games, you have to get good at that because that's what performance capture is. That's the only way that you're gonna. That's you like have to that's, give the, that's the only way you have to do it, you know. Yeah. Um. Before we move on to the next question, mm -hmm. um, we had oh, we had Pokemon? some Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I've got my pictures here. So at the top we have Lockix, who just uh, looks like an edgy beetle. Not really a fan. Uh, I'm I'm really uh, I'm kind of neutral on him. Underneath that, we have King Gambit. That one looks uh, a bit silly. <laughs> that one, yeah, not nearly as much of a fan of this one. His mustache is very big. Does he got little that's rocket hands. Me. I think he might. Sort of. It could be just like just general like, cartoon hands, because a lot of Pokemon <laughs> they don't have like individual fingers. They're, like a the power sword girls. on his face. It's like what? Yeah, it's and very then, cool. Though. Do you see the sword on the sword too? Yeah, yeah, he's got a sword on the sword to let you know he's very he's very sharp, very dangerous. Um, next up, we have Bax Caliber, who is my uh, who I kind of like. I I think he's not overly complex. He's kind of got that Godzilla vibe to him. Uh, don't think this is too bad at all. Oh, I, 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 th I, I think like my him. I think my favorite is the last one here. <laughs> yeah, Claude Sire. Claude Sire. Just... Yeah, we went in order of worst to best. I think maybe. Yeah, he's the best. Look we... at him. Yeah, look at him. He, uh, I like him. Nice and simple. I like him a lot. He's big old face. He's just hanging out. <laughs> you know, you know for a fact, probably, he just you know. he hangs out near the water and he's just happy. Exactly. He's very happy. We could all learn a lot from because I guess is he related to Quagsire? He looks like him. Probably. Yeah. He does. I, I would I would reckon that he is what he evolves into Quagsire. I guess. Is, hold on. Let me. Oh, it Not been, certain. Uh, Quad Sire. Okay. <laughs> Look at him. He, he's he's so happy. Yeah. He's just a happy little he's, he gives me those happy the kind fella. of he gives me those kind of empty mind vibes like a possum almost, where he's just carrying on, having a good time. Not well, much he, is gonna get him got down. All figured out. Oh, I, I love him. He's he's pretty fantastic. He's uh man, he's really cool. <laughs> I like him a lot. I'm so glad that I know he exists now. Puts a yeah. smile on my face. All right, then. Um, Here we go. <clears throat> I've studied Norse mythology for years, and the only characters that are truly accurate to myth, mostly, are Thor, Sif, and Odin. The rest are a unique interpretation. God of War has always done this with its mythology, though. Um, it's a pretty normal approach. This is what we should have expected anyway. You, w When Kratos goes to Egypt, right? Like, if or when that happens. 
And let's say we were the writing team. And they're like, he's going to go to Egypt now. Go, tell a story. We'd be like, all right, there's two modes we've got here. One, figure out what kind of story we want for Kratos. What are we going to have him learn? What, what's the hardship going to be? You know, all that stuff. And then we're like, now, need to go and read up on Egyptian mythology, see what the greatest and most well-known and inspirational stories are, see what roles each of the main gods have, and then we're going to try and have to hammer them into Kratos' story. And there's going to be some that'll fit right in. Be like, oh, look at this. This character does this, this, this. That's perfect. We'll put them there. They'll do that. There we go. And then there'll be one that's like, oh, we, we can't use that. That's that's kind of that's useless. To give you an example, uh, they, they had in the 2018 game, I think what actually happens in mythology, which is uh, Jormungandr bites Thor, and then Thor kills him with a with a hammer strike, and then Thor dies of his wounds. That's like, that's what happens to those two in, in a fight. I'm pretty sure anyway, I could be wrong. But my point is, they saw that and were like, okay, we can have him fight, but we can't have Thor die to Jormungandr. We, we, we need, we, uh, we're doing a different to payoff. Yeah. And, and then someone would be like, so you just go in with an inaccuracy. It's like, yeah, but... We are yep. doing something else. We're trying to make a different well, I mean, point. I'm not beholden to. I'm. I'm. I'm just not beholden to the source material. I. It, I don't oh. have to follow 100. percent First off, I. You don't really want that. You know. I think anyone who thinks they want to be faithful to a lot of these old stories is. Yeah. I think you are. I think you are not considering how fucking batshit a lot of early, in particular, mythology is. Like, if they go to Egypt next, like y'all ain't fucking ready. Or like, a lot, I mean, Norse is one of the crazier ones too. It's just a lot of crazy shit happens. It, it's okay to be like, you know, take the good and leave the bad. It's probably a really good idea, or to use it as some kind of a blueprint. But to think that you should be just, you, you have to be beholden to it in all these ways is, I just don't think it's something you really want or will be consistent with. I guess um, the, the the point that Muller was making though is that it's it's the goal seems to be. We have a story that we want to tell on certain themes that we want to get across. Let's look at the mythology and see what we can leverage and see what things we can change in order to facilitate that. And, and I think they are invested in a sense of, like, especially after knowing so much of what happened in mythology versus what we saw in the game, they want to portray a lot of stuff as you know it to be well, yeah, if you're I mean, a Norse fan. Off, right? It is the big epic battle that results in the death of Odin, Thor, and the destruction of Asgard. Yeah, they, they, they obviously are like, we need to at least, like, we're going to have plenty of things that uh, big Norse fans will recognize. And they mm. do. Um, big Norse like, fans. you know, it, it, thanks to this game, I'll, I now know more about Norse mythology than I ever did. Um, well, it's just, it probably was the same with, uh, I guess the problem is some people would be like, well, yeah, but you might know some things that are wrong or inaccurate. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but, like, I'm not even suggesting remotely that I'm. Uh, I've got accurate information. I'm just saying that thanks to this game, I now have more appreciation and I'm aware of more knowledge. I know how to pronounce certain things now. Or about the fact that I even know that the Aesir and the Vanir and the Giants are like a thing. Like, yeah. I, I didn't know that before these games. I had no idea. Um, and now if I see that in some other context, in some other place, or, for example, if someone's just like, who holds Galahorn? I'll be like, oh, well, Heimdall, I guess. Heimdall. I'm assuming. Yeah. Would be my first guess. So, you know, and then it's just something that... That someone would be like, how do you know that? And it's like, oh, it was a video game. <laughs> it's like a, you know, and, and they they use plenty of the names. Because I saw some people saying, like, oh, you know, I, I wish Cavassia was more accurate to what he was like in the in mythology versus what they did with him in the game. And it's like, yeah, that that would be an example probably of someone they were like, we need we're gonna have him collect poems. Who can be the person who wrote them? It's like, well, we've got this list of names of people we've, who are famous in Norse mythology we still haven't used yet. Throw Cavassia on it. You know, something like that. Um... But yeah, it's not an accurate representation, but it's the kind of thing that is, I think is is neat, where they're, they're doing what they can. I didn't get a sense that they were disrespecting Norse mythology, but plenty of people have made that claim, so... What yeah, do I it's... Know? Yeah, the whole... the It's a very strange thing to talk about respecting old mythology and stuff. Um, especially mythologies that like virtually no one you know believes in. Uh, anymore i'm sure there's a few running around out there but uh you know it, where where yeah. do you draw the line at when it's okay to part from it would they would they treat all mythologies the same you know especially nowadays with you know christianity being you know as popular as it is and you know such a big force in the world that people actually believe is real um you know where does that you know stop where does that line get crossed or not 
Um, I, they, they did clearly care. I do agree. They clearly cared. Yeah, and, and if you were like, yeah, they didn't care enough. You'd be like, okay, okay. I just, I, I mean, they've got way more references in there than what one would expect if they didn't give a shit. I would happily concede that uh, Mike Flanagan disrespected the source material for Hill House. He, I think the only thing that survived is, a, is names of characters. What was it? Um, I'd be curious what the counter argument to that might be, though, because uh, I wonder if, if maybe he would. I've never actually seen his commentary on that. Um, so yeah, in, in regard to, um, the accuracy for Thor, Sif, and Odin, I mean, it's cool to hear, and that they've got, uh, everyone else's sort of, uh, unique interpretations, yeah, I kind of, I imagine that's the result you'll get if they do Egypt. What if they did? Thoughts on story and characters of the Red Dead Redemption games? Surprised Mola hasn't played them considering he likes long things, stories and games. I've never, um, I've never that's played. A broad, uh, that's a broad question. Yeah, you're, you're, I, yeah, I just couldn't speak to it myself. Neither can I. I really like John. I really like Arthur, and I, I find Dutch super interesting. Um, the problem is, it's like, how much more do you want? Because there's a lot of characters in those games, and there's a lot to be said about about them and what they're gone for. It's up to you how much you want. <clears throat> I know that there was a, uh, there's a particular, like, there's a side quest of Red Dead Redemption in the first one that's really cool. And John, just as he's in his travels, he just keeps bumping into this guy dressed in a black suit. I think he's wearing, like, a black hat as well. He just, he just knows things about John's past. Um, not good things, things that he did in his past were, uh, pretty bad. And he, he just Is keeps he popping like up. Devil allegory or something? Well, so what's interesting is I think at first you're just like, oh, he's just this guy who's just hanging out and he knows these things. But then it all leads to um uh he's standing on top of a hill overlooking John's property. And um and John's like, you know, what are you doing here? Or like, you know, who are you? And he's like, I'm an accountant of sorts, like, you know, I like I think he's yeah, I think he says like I'm an, an accountant, accountant of sorts. Sense. And he says, like, you know, like tell me your name where you know me from, and he's like Oh, like I, I know you from I know you from like here, I know you from back out west, I know you from all over. And then I think John says, uh, tell me your name or I won't be responsible for my actions. Um and then the guy says, Oh, you will, you'll be responsible. Uh this is a fine spot. See you around, cowboy. Um and he just starts walking off. John says, damn you, whips out his gun. The guy says, Yes, many have, and then he shoots two bullets, but nothing comes out, and then the third one, like, doesn't work, jams. Um they are standing on the hill where uh, his son buries him and uh, his wife. Um, and he's the last one left. And then he, you know, goes on and kills a guy who killed John. And then he's turned into an outlaw as well. So the cycle continues. So it's like this really cool sort of foreshadowing where um, I think it's safe to say the two bullets he fires represents John and his wife. Uh, and then the third bullet jamming, that's that's his son on the place where they bury him at the end of the game. It's, like, pretty cool. They didn't need to do that, but they did. It's, just like, this really awesome just, like, side story that you can totally miss. Um, and I'm pretty sure that the uh, that guy, uh, he doesn't show up explicitly in Red Dead Redemption 2, but I think you see his portrait in a couple of places around the map. So they kind of carried that through. So, yeah, I think it's safe to say that he's meant to be deaf. Um... He's sort of he he knows things that he shouldn't know, and he's he's like there, and he's he's just for some reason he's kind of like messing with John, um, and it's kind of like the necessary acknowledgement the story needs to have about the nature of like John's past and the fact that like the nature of his redemption is a little bit more complicated than like a clear cut. Oh, you're a good guy. Like that doesn't really exist for him. Are you that's, familiar? That's... Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 I was just going to say, that's, that's like, something that I really appreciated in the first game. I, I really like that subplot. There is a, in, in Western stories, there is often this element of, you know, the devil existing as a character, whether he's at some crossroads or, uh, or, or whatever. Because in a lot of Western stories, there is, you know, Western ghost stories and, you know, stuff like karma coming to catch back up to you, and so... You know, especially, you know, in, in Christian mythos, you know, the, the devil coming to collect is a big, you know, it, it's a thing that pops up a lot in the West and stuff that I've always really kind of, kind of liked. 
Um, well, so the thing is, is I wonder because would you say that you're a fan of westerns, like as a, uh, um, like a as a genre? I would. I mean, I like westerns. I, I don't off. I don't watch things because they're westerns, but I like watching westerns. If that makes sense. Right. So well, I would probably like, say yeah. Red Dead Redemption is like a massive homage to like to westerns. It's it's yeah. like very clear that it's a. Uh, that 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 um it's it's kind of like we've talked about the, the people who watch you know the writers behind the simpsons clearly watched a lot of movies and a lot of tv shows they had a lot of references that were really neat and clever it's pretty clear yeah. that our rock star are big fans of westerns um like there's there's so much about it that's like an homage to to that entire uh entire like genre and i mean i i'm not i'm not like super familiar with westerns as a genre but i mean even that comes through clearly to me and if you're talking about like yeah that there's often a figure who's actually meant to represent the mysterious devil, it's like, stranger yeah. the man in black the 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 we the, the the dubiously supernatural devil character who knows what people do and can get up to and you know yeah. the, the the evil things that they've done you know I, the have you have, on a similar note, Fringy, have you played Witcher Three? I played a bit of Witcher Three, but I ever I've I've tried it twice, and every time I've stopped at some point, and I couldn't tell you why. Like I just sort of stopped okay. and didn't keep going. There is a there is a character in the Hearts of Stone expansion uh, named Gonter Odim that would be very interested to. Uh, hear you one day maybe talk about or give your opinions on but if you haven't played it you haven't played it so i will be okay well i mean if there's that new uh the update if that new update that might be a reason to to, to check it out actually he's give one of my favorite try. characters antagonist i something in uh in in fiction i really like him so Okay, um, interesting. I've mentioned him in the past, every, every very, very intermittently, but I, I really like it. But it kind of ties into this in a way. Um, I asked someone if Gimli wanting Frodo to die is a subjective argument, and he said yes because you can interpret the scene that way. That's when I gave up on debating him. Huh. I think we're being really generous to the word interpretation at that point, right? Like, does that yeah, just mean you just, just see something as not what it, it is? Up. Yeah. If that's there's... all that means, then fucking interpretations are meaningless. Like, because they could just be anything. Yeah, like if somebody looks up at the sun and says, I think that's, like, I think that's made of cotton candy. That's well, that's your opinion. interpretation. That's your interpretation of reality. All right, then. There is a, uh, you want to, you want to always be, for pretty much all of your opinions, unless they, unless it's, it's good to have a reason for why you believe the things that you believe. And yep. if it's stuff like favorite color or favorite band, like it's not as important, but it's still, you know, good to, you know, have a reason, even if, you know, even if it's not like a super big deal, like not knowing, not knowing why blue or green is your favorite color. It's, it's not, that's not going to really change anything. It's not that important. But if you go to like, what's your favorite band is like, da, 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 why? Well, like, yeah, I guess you just like the way that they sound, sure, but, you know, why do you like the way that they sound? Um, you know, those are pretty low-tier things, but when you talk about, like, your political opinions or how you think of other people, why you like or dislike certain, you know, ideologies or, you know, just people that you know or that you've heard of, good to have a reason why. Tie it to something objective, you know? Ask yourself why you think what you think. Yeah, if you I don't, would. Um, then you end up like certain. People I would gatekeep it as a as a, a not allowed to be an interpretation. I'd be like, you can't interpret Gimli wants to kill Frodo. You can't. There's nothing that supports that at all. Sad. You all yeah. you've said is something that's just like Gimli is clearly Sonic the Hedgehog. It's like no, he's not. It's like okay, that's a valid not. interpretation. No, it's not. Where are you getting that from? We don't, uh, yeah, unless, we don't of course, want to lose them. You have defined interpretation to be just a random errant thought slash feeling you just happen to have that has no reference to anything. You want everything to tie back to something in reality? That would be really cool. Certainly uh, verifiable by another source, another human being. That would be good. It's a, it's a great way to check and see if you're not hallucinating or that yeah. you, you're believing something's actually real. Get that independent verification from someone else. Get someone else's opinion. 
Maybe they noticed something that you didn't, vice versa. Predictions for next story? Question mark. Uh, well, I think, I, I guess for God of War, I presume Egypt is up next. If we ignore wherever he's going, I imagine it's, like, what have we done in totality? It's like, Angry Man destroys entire Pantheon through revenge, and then Angry Man calms down and tries to find an alternative way of solving the problem of evil gods doing evil things without just killing everybody and involving collateral throughout it, and he succeeds to the point where he's actually being praised for his great efforts, and he's come to understand the value of life beyond himself, you know, uh, and the ones he loves even. So, what do you do with him next? It's like, well... We can make him go face to face back to Greece, you know. We could, we, that's you know, awesome. that's going to have some heavy implications. And what can he do to? Because he's he's rebuilding the Norse world as his goal, and I think he's going to be one hundred percent successful. And so, in the next game, could be the Norse lands get attacked, and he's forced to leave to find out like what the hell's going on and why they would do it, or that he decides he needs to take his um, you know positive impact on these worlds and go back to where it all began and fix his uh, his bullshit. Highly. Or as, as the expectation going to Egypt, what would that include? It's like, could be that Egypt attacks, uh, you know, the Norse lands and he has to go there himself, or that maybe, um, we're saying that the possibility that... Maybe he wants to be more proactive in terms of doing, like, you know, the hero thing. Well, you could have, like, a, a Sindri wants to go there to talk to the gods of the dead over there to see what he could do about Brock and the... Uh, so he goes, I really like the idea of Anubis being like a major character. I I really like the idea of him being one of our important Egyptian characters, like POV characters cool that we focus on. Yeah, Anubis. I is think cool I like fuck. the idea of making Anubis and seeing if you can have him be like the misunderstood. Like he's actually, like he's kind of you know he gets a bad rap. And he um, he's the off. he. With the way that the the Egyptians were super, super focused on, like, the afterlife and what happens after you die, in the idea okay. of a god whose job is essentially the, the, the god of mummification, the, the god of the, the... I'm the person who resides over the preparation for the next world, in a sense. So, a, a god that's all about, um, like, judging people seeing into their hearts and what they think because he's seen so many people pass on from this life to the next and you know this oh, maybe he's the cynical guy that kratos needs to uh maybe he's um, incredibly cynical or bitter and, and i kratos don't know i because he'd come across a lot of really good people too um True. It, True. certainly from as far as i'm aware egyptians thought very high they thought very highly of themselves um so they, they'd often paint their, you know, people in a good light. But I think it would be interesting to... I mean, we talked about the, the concept of pairing Anubis and maybe Osiris to, you know, death-relevant gods. And one is, you know, a, more of an optimist, one's more of a pessimist. But it, it would be good to have that super sagacious kind of character who can have his own personality, of course, whether he takes the... You know, he's he's very upbeat and charming and he's you know you know, he, he doesn't let you know, he doesn't see death as a bad thing. He's like, Yep, you've done this part of your life. Now the next part of your life's about to begin uh, to begin. I'm about to I'm the one who sort of takes you there or explains things to you. And I mean I think that I think it would be interesting to have a death god who's very optimistic and happy and could be, um, you know, very fine, like, that would wise be and fatherly. Very, yeah, very uh, Egypt, uh, Egypt set could be pretty for chill sure. in that they are attacked and they ask the Norse lands for help. for help. Could be that. I think I, I just I just want Kratos to hang out with Anubis. I feel like that could be a really cool dynamic. I'm I'm almost ruling out <laughs> Roman and Celtic because I feel like they're too close to Norse and Greek. But um, I think man, the, Egypt... the narrative nah. power of bringing in like the Roman pantheon as a result of like what he did to the Greeks or something. Well, maybe that's, like that's so maybe that's the powerful. way to do it, right? Like you, he's in Egypt and then that's because Egypt is closer to Greece and, and, uh, and, uh, Italy. 
Maybe yeah, like, like, like imagine that's the ti- like the, the the bait for the next game is at the end like Jupiter just fucking lands in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that'd we be get crazy. Jupiter, Mars, pulls him out as like. Oh, and could you imagine if it then is is like it's war between the Roman and the Egyptian pantheon, and then and then Kratos has to figure out how he's gonna like mediate that conflict. Yeah, and, and he he has like immense guilt for the Roman pantheon if if it's like it was born out of the death of the yeah. Greek one. But at the same time, if if it's like Rag said, the Egypt the Egyptian pantheon is like super chill and everybody's nice and friendly over there. Like, what what would he feel compelled to try and fight to save? He well, has and to, you know the what? Maybe past, right? in this scenario, both the Roman and the Egyptian pantheons have the motivation to destroy each other. They're in like a full on war, and that he right, feels he yeah. should stop it, step in. But how can he do that? How's he going to do that? Yeah, because. As much as I agree that, like, the story's complete, we don't need any more, my concern is less so with how the story's complete, don't move it on. It's more so with, I don't know if we're going to guarantee the talent to move it on. I really don't want to move it on right. if it's going to be bad. But if it's good, oh, we yeah, have plenty of places are, yeah. to go if it's good. If it's really great. Like, if we got told that the next arc is going to be as good as Ragnarok and, and God of War 2018, it's like, holy shit. Yeah, just do let's, it. And let's me and go. Me talked about this, but, like, I think that... I agree that the wise choice is to have Atreus go for like a whole game now. Don't don't bring him back, even though it yeah, seems like they're setting him yep. up. I think it actually works better that he goes on his own crazy adventure, comes back. The next time we see him, he's a full grown man. That would be really cool. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, just the sheer time that would be six, seven, eight years potentially. Well, just uh, what would be awesome is if the payoff is that when Kratos is off on his own again and he's in Egypt and everything's going on, it gets really, really, really difficult for him. It gets really challenging, and then right at the end, Atreus returns. And like, Yeah, and this, he's grown, and he's gone on his changed. adventures, and he's yeah. potentially eight or so years just wiser and more skilled, and he's seen so much more of the world. Um, yeah, that would be yeah. a neat idea. He's, all, you, go he's s- always going to be there to come back whenever you need, you know? They are in an excellent position for storytelling. They can go any direction they want. Yeah, they can. They're in a good place. They There's a lot, because even though, like you said, Kratos' arc is complete, it's like, there can always be another one. Like, there's always more to do, right? He's on the path now. I feel and like... So, uh, I mean, even if he becomes a static character, that'll be totally justified in a well, way. Well, because we could have other characters who go on arcs. Maybe Anubis has an arc he needs to yeah. go on, or Osiris, or Kratos Ra. becomes the, you know, more of a teacher. The, the teacher in a way. Yeah. yeah. He becomes less of a fighter more of the old wise man who he's the one who gives the quests and offers you your advice and things like that I think like, if ah, yes I... we get another one though we're gonna have to have a Mimir you can't have this without Mimir anymore uh, he's like integral um, super yes. useful from a perspective of having <laughs> conversations just in general between parts oh, of gameplay that Mimir, are a boring. Fish out of water. You know, if Mimir is this... in a land that he doesn't understand so well. I would pay good money to just have Kratos and Mimir <laughs> commenting on Egyptian landscapes and stuff. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. it, I feel like it's gotta be, because before it was Norse, it was gonna be Egypt. That was the plan. It was gonna be Egypt before they decided to go to to, uh, to the Norse myth- mythology. Yeah, and, and if you like ask anybody, Egypt is up. I think if you did like a public vote on what should be next, Egypt would win. I think Probably. the reason why Egypt it's would not win just is because the everybody's heard of it. Everybody's heard of it, but I feel like uh, in the West we don't have a great understanding of it in culture, like which Greek, we should, I think, because the we Greeks should. were extremely heavily influenced by the Egyptians. The Egyptians yeah. were like really cool, um, and and if you're working with a game sort of setting, just the just the aesthetics of Egypt are so unique and interesting, yeah. and. Yeah. There's, there's nothing I like it, I can picture really. the box art right now. The box art of Kratos there with the, the pyramids in the background. Pyramids, yeah. The pyramids. The pyramids like that yeah. image alone the, is going to oh, be dude, awesome. you already know <laughs> all the enemy types are built for you. There's going to be mummies. Of course there are. Yep. Little skeleton yeah, crawling little out of the thing. floor. Yep. It'll be those... Yeah, um, I just... Well, some of the, Gotta have a, a big focus on... Uh, especially, it'll be really important for Kratos... Because, like I said, Egyptian mythology and culture was super, not obsessed, but super focused on the afterlife and dying and going on into the next life. So, thematically, for a potentially much older Kratos, that could be very interesting as a concept to explore. Imagine if Anubis said something like, some of your victims have, you know, like, I've I've met them, I've talked to them, they told me a lot of things about what happened to them, you know? Yeah. 
he's like totally like, in no way surprised about Kratos. Like he knows everything about him already. He's heard so much. Well, see, yeah. that's another thing, right? Like I think that they could drop Sindri entirely now, or they could have him go. They could drop Tyr entirely, or they could have him go. Uh, they could drop Freya oh, entirely, I, or they could have I him go. Have a I, I think it would be good to have Tyr tag along. That seems like a good opportunity because he's traveled around. Maybe he's like the guy who can. Because maybe maybe that's the thing with Anubis, right? Because he judges people. And he looks at Kratos and he's kind of like, he can't quite figure him out. It's like, hmm, you know, like you're a, you're an interesting figure for me to yeah, figure out. Your scale out. is well, interesting your life, to say so, the least. Exactly. Because yeah. like there wouldn't be many people like Kratos. So that could be cool for Anubis, right? Where it's usually pretty straightforward for him. Like looking at Kratos is kind of like, hmm. Especially because he's I've died heard about twice. He did. Plenty of yeah. people. I've seen a lot of, you know, changed people come through here, but. Very few you know, like you I, and I know what you you know, it's like I know what you did. <laughs> like it was it's like I know exactly what you did. But I know what you did in in, in the Norse lands too. And it's yeah, like you I know, know everything what are you, you did, here good for? and bad. What's your goal? What so, is your objective? Uh, and maybe maybe it would well, be interesting. Is so, if ever yeah. they wanted to do the payoff of Kratos being released from the Blades of Chaos and getting the ash removed. I wonder if they'll ever do that. Or that maybe would that be... would be the final or, culmination or, of this arc. That yeah. would be the. It feels like it would be the end if they were going to do that. That would be the end. That would have that to be, would the, be end. the end. It's all. It's funny because it's be like that would be payoff. an incredibly powerful moment, but you have to handle that with incredible care. Yep. Yes, you would. Man, that would be an incredible payoff, though. If they nailed it. I think they've they're still pretty mysterious about the origin of the blades and the nature of the curse in terms of if it's got even potential to be removed. Imagine if it came from Egypt. That's where the blades of chaos actually they came from. They have the power to do that. I think. I think someone <laughs> said there was an origin for them in a comic or something that is canon. So. Oh, okay. Well. I think someone said Hephaestus made them, but of course you can argue that he used materials from Egypt or something like that. Yeah. Anyone again? If you're going from. Like, Egypt, in a way, is like the proto-Greece. Like, the amount of stuff that the Greeks took, or I say took in a very, in a generous sense, but, you know, took from the Egyptians is insane. The The Greeks loved Egypt. They were super fascinated by Egyptian culture and their discoveries and their, you know, aesthetics and art and their culture. So it would be very appropriate for his Greek origins to tie into, you know, Egyptian stuff. People just don't understand... Or know about how you know influential Egypt was to the Greeks. Yes, uh, very excited. And the second that they have that tiny, tiny teaser trailer where they just show the pyramid and then they show the God of War symbol and then they have the dun dun dun, and that's it. I will, I will go nuts along with the whole audience. And and then the trailer, the teaser trailer will come out, and it's like older Kratos with maybe a bit more of a grayish beard. Yeah, like walking in the desert or something, and that's it for that teaser too. And then it's like coming in three years from now, and I'll be like, "Fuck, I want to play." Who's it. our antagonist though? For in Egypt, who would it be? Would it be Ra? You have, uh, it could be Ra. It could be Osiris. It could be it's Sekhmet. It could be all kinds of gods. A lot of gods were very. Um, I still they could think... be your best friend and your worst enemy, that sort of thing. I um, think it could yeah. be a really interesting twist to have it be that there are there are Roman gods over there doing stuff, and that they are the villains of this, even though we're in Egypt. Refugees from the Greek pantheon go over to Egypt. You no, know, like I, I think that we we would uh, argue Athena. Built. Athena brought in a new, very strong new world. She birthed it out of what Kratos left behind, and that they've yeah. all been brought up and understood that Kratos is a monster, that he's gone dead and a coward, and he backstabbed all the gods. And this is what I want to deal with. I want, I want Kratos to know that all of them have been lied to about how everything went down, and that they all hate him because he destroyed and then everything. To deal with that, yeah, yeah, and then they want to kill him for it. And he's like, no, like, how does he deal with that? It's like, and he's. This is a different dynamic again than Norse and Greek that he's having to kill gods because they believe him to be something he's absolutely not. And that they have a good grievance to have with him, but it's not the the accurate one, so to speak. Um, so, I mean, yeah. it's yeah that that would imagine the the boss fight between Kratos and Jupiter like that could be so cool. 
That's why I like the series, because you when, can have and, it, have these really meaningful stories, but it's still like epic battles between the figures yeah, from between mythology. Yeah, these well-known... And, and Jupiter could have like immense respect and love for Zeus, even though we know Zeus is a piece of shit in that history. Um... And you could talk about like all the horrible things we've done, and yeah, and you could obviously bring Athena back. There's there's nothing stopping you from doing that, which would have very heavy uh, drama. What if, imagine um, like Kratos worked his ass off to save and sort out Egypt, and then he went back at the end and found that like the Norse world had been ravaged by the Roman pantheon or something while he was gone. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be a gut punch, wouldn't it? And that the reasoning for it is because of what he did to the Greek one. It'd be interesting, like, what Kratos and, and like, Set would, uh, like, those sorts of interactions could be cool. There's just, like, a lot of, a lot of interesting interactions of just Kratos with this guy, Kratos with that guy, you know? It's just, yeah, When, when it's you really characterize right. as strong as Kratos is now, it's, because it used to be, I want to see Kratos kill this person, this person, this person. But now it's like, I want to see Kratos talk to this person. Yeah, I want to see Kratos talk to Ra or Osiris or Set. Like, or the most meaningful thing that happened with Kratos and Thor wasn't their fight. It was Kratos compel, like trying to compel him to stop, to put down the hammer. That shit was so good. Mm -hmm. Way better than the last fucking Thor we saw. Yep. Yes, it's not even comparable. One of them is a clown, one of them is a great character. Uh, uh, be right back. Just one second. It'll be just, it'll be seriously, just a second. If you guys say something is bad, it's only bad according to your standards, right? So how can you say it is universally bad? Are you guys' standards just that solid? Also, hello, rags. If we said something is universally yeah. bad, I assume we're referring to just, it's generally considered bad or something. I think the last time I've said something is yeah. universally bad. Um, generally, we say like something's generally regarded as universally good or bad, but that a thing is universally bad. I mean, I don't know what we'd refer to as. It would probably be something that is just bad in all of its categories. It has no redeeming yeah. qualities. Um, they said hello, rags. As well. Oh, hello. Freya is of royal Vanya blood. The Vanya are Earth gods, so her doing this is reasonable. Are we talking about when she uh, crashed the whole forest around Kratos in the opening? Yeah, uh, we've already seen her do foresty stuff. Um, or with the giant, it's like that—that that didn't seem like a shock to me at all. Um, also, hi Rags. Hello. Do you think Kratos is woke because he isn't? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think Kratos is woke. I have a brain. Oh. Uh, if you if you think Kratos is woke, you legitimately you have like mind rot. You need to cleanse yourself of the the goggles that you view everything in the world through. Grow up. Phenomenal game, but I hate Odin's design. Characterization great, voice great, but his look it's so bland and boring. I don't agree that it's bland and boring. I can see why people wouldn't like it, but I think it fits him pretty well. I am quite fond of it. Uh, I just think it all matches. It's how I would expect the man to dress. It's, I, I think he holds himself the way I expect him to with how everything was shown to me of what he is, what he does. And yeah, I was just very happy with it. As for people finding it to be bland and boring, it's like, yeah, it's fair, it's whatever. I, uh, I, Thor and Odin were both very controversial and yes. If, if the biggest complaint you have about Odin is his appearance, hey, Pretty good stuff, honestly. Yeah, I was just really happy with the character. I remember being so sad that it was like another 15 hours into the game before I even got another scene with him, because I was just like, please, I want more Odin and Thor. Um, and I did get it. Uh, I love the approach McCreary takes with his music. His efforts are what make Godzilla King of the Monsters one of my favorite soundtracks. It wouldn't surprise me that that soundtrack is good. Yeah, I just, I can't remember anything about it personally, but it's, it's been a while. and I, I just remember Charles Dance is in it, and he says like three lines or something. Yeah, then he's gone. And also that they uh, nuke Portland or something. <laughs> Boston. Boston, I can't remember. Like, the Boston. And they have a terrible cover of Godzilla at the end. 
credits because movies just love terrible covers. The movie was weird. And there's an even weirder one that came out. We haven't seen. What? Kong versus Godzilla. Oh, Godzilla I thought you meant because Kong. Because I was about to say, remember in that episode of Willow where they have that dog shit tier cover of Black Hole Sun? I I actually hate the person who made the soundtrack for uh, Willow. They need to be stopped. They need to be I do told too. to sit down. <laughs> Every, everyone involved in making that show needs to. <laughs> Just consider a different career path. Stand in front of a mirror and ask yourself why. Why did you do it? <laughs> what, did what possessed it. you? And Warwick, please, take some acting fucking lessons, please. A little, little bit, yeah. In a game where everything else is so richly designed, Odin's average appearance feels so out of place. He looks nothing like the craven monster he was built up as in 2018. How about that? I, I, I was about to say, why do you think that is? Why do you think that when they tell us he backstabs everybody, he distrusts everybody, he steals things, he annihilates like worlds, he punishes and tortures everybody? When we meet him, he's like, hi, how you doing? How about what that? You don't look like a backstabber. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you've just summed up the point perfectly in as little words as possible. It's, uh, I quite love it. I, I loved his, uh, his vibe when you first walked in because of the fact that like, looking back, anyway, at the time, I was still, like, really trying to figure out what we were dealing with, because even with Thor, uh, he makes a really quick, good impression, but you still want to have the whole game, uh, or rather, the whole story, so that you can understand exactly what was being done. But um, just Mimir's... Part of what clued me on to being like, oh, man, this is this is super interesting, was Mimir's, like, almost desperate anger when he's uh, he's, he's pulled out of his little hiding spot. Um, yeah. Because, like, it's, it's just like, you know, calm down, Odin's being chill. And it's like, no, that's that's kind of the point. He's really, like, he's... And he does it again when Atreus talks about going to Asgard. He's just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, I have been trying to tell you for ages. Anything you're thinking about in terms of, oh, no, it'll work because this, this, this. It's like, that's all a part of it. That's all the, the fucking pantomime he's putting on. Stop. I have told you this a million times over. Stop trusting him. <laughs> and then Synthetic Man was like, he seems like a kind old chill dude. <laughs> like, what? I don't get it. He seems so nice. Like, yeah, that's because you're a fool. Yes. Uh, he doesn't rely on physical might or appearances can be deceiving. Doesn't mean his design had to be devoid of any kind of character. See, when um, you said bland and boring, that's one thing. But saying it's devoid of character, uh, I'm going to have to nah. say you're wrong on that one. And it's, I... um, it's, it's very, like... Uh, grounded, his appearance, right? He's wearing clothes. He, remember, Asgard is built... But like pragmatism, his clothing will be pragmatic. His approach to everything is like he's it's just he's a very like uh, nuts and bolts type of guy, but for the purposes of getting everything he wants and needs, he's smart enough to try and look like that's not what he's doing. What did Heimdall say? Real power doesn't reveal itself until it needs to, or something like. That? Yeah, I think so. Odin for ya. I know nothing about God of War, but I'm already crying. Probably about the Fenrir thing. Yeah. Which people still, I mean, I, still I were getting, like, wow, you, know, you guys were defending that, even though it's just like, look, if you can't deal with the arguments, go away. <laughs> it was funny, um, I was watching uh, Andor, because that, that, uh, our uh, breakdown of that will be coming up. Um, it'll be fucking rejoiced for many of you fans, I'd imagine. And, uh, you know, um, it's, it's like the, the episode literally passed the one that we watched up to three. And uh, you remember Security Guard Man that we, we were quite fond of? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, we see him, like, I think the first time we see him in episode four, he's gone home, like his, his original home, I think, to see his mum. Opens the door, and I think, uh, I think she slaps him and then hugs him, because obviously what's happened. And I, I can't remember if he's tearing up or not, but it's clearly sold as like a, quite an emotional moment. And I was just thinking to myself, like, do people really not get it? Like, because you can make this argument for everything. I'd be like, I don't know this woman. I've never met her before. How am I supposed to interpret this scene? How am I supposed to feel anything? It's like, that's his mum, and she's probably slapping him for the mistakes he made in that operation, and then she's hugging him because she loves him. And he's trying to remain as stalwart and professional, but it's the woman who raised him, and so he's going to crumble a little bit in front of her, right? Like, we know this because we know what mothers are, typically speaking. Whoa. A lot of us had them, uh, uh, as well as we've seen... Especially if you live with them, you really get to know them well. You've, you've seen other stories in which there are parents. So you, what I'm getting at is the same thing as Fenrir. It's like, these are these are 
basic thing. Like, usually the complaint comes in when there's zero context to understand the emotional stakes of what's happening. I know Atreus. I know what it's like to have a pet. It's sad when they die. Pretty simple. If you're gonna be like, that's just manipulation, um, I'd just, I'd start to wonder. I, I might even think that I need to think about how I would categorize what is manipulative and what isn't. Yeah, that would be an interesting discussion to delve into. Because I would probably start out by getting a bunch of examples. Being like, well, this one, probably, we don't, I don't feel this is manipulation. I feel like this is. Why? Let's find out why. What, what, what are the differences between manipulation and just, I mean, just, I don't even know, what's the inverse of manipulation? Being convinced? Well, yeah, because it's in that called the, uh, the, the bear thing, manipulation. It was just like, I mean, it just seems, it, would we say earned? Or it's just, it is what it is? It's just the same playing out as you would expect it to. Like when Luke says, I am a Jedi like my father before me, just like, manipulation! <laughs> you were trying to manipulate me into believing that he is a Jedi like his father <laughs> before him. Um, cause yeah, if, uh, you know, if, if you're watching a story unfold and then it just cuts to a little puppy who's dying slowly while suffering and then it cuts back to the story and they're like, we put that scene in there to make people feel sad. I would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what are you doing? But yeah, you know what? We'll probably go over that the next time we feel like something like that happens. I mean, the zebra one is, is a lot of what people want to, uh, yep. reference in The Last of Us 2. And yeah, it's just, it, it's because it's so incredibly blatant and it's so poorly constructed in terms of, uh, there's one goal in mind and it's to make you sympathetic for that guy so that when he dies, you can feel what Abby feels and then you can be on his side. They did it so badly and it's so absurd too, the scenario. And it's yeah, right the... before the event happens too. It's so funny. If you can see through the in-universe thing to just see what the purpose, what, what it's trying to tell you or what its purpose is, that yeah, might like, be a way to sort of solve it. I think, yeah, because th th that is probably one of the better examples to try and figure this out. Because if someone said, like, don't you think what he did is a good thing, though? I'd be like, yes, yes, it shows that he's, he's of a character that will rescue animals that are in need and stuff, sure. The only problem is that doesn't really change what he does in the Fireflies and what that decision means. For example, like, if, if I'm beating someone to death because they uh, they cheated in a game of cards, you're like, wow, that's that's terrible. And then you're like, ah, but you don't know the context behind it all, or additional information, it turns out they killed my whole family or something. You're like, oh, okay. But in this case, it was more so, do you know that yesterday, before Maul did all of that, he saved a cat from a tree? Like, that doesn't change much of anything, actually. <laughs> like, that's just, the, 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 sure, that's, that's good that he did that, uh, but you're not going to make it so that I now feel bad that Joel killed him. That's not happening. You have to do a lot more than that. The only problem is, of course, they to do what they want, to make me feel on Abby's side, so to speak, uh, you need to change what happened in The Last of Us 1, but it's too late. You can't. It's in stone. Done. Or it's never too late to try. And... <laughs> oh, they did try, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, like, you know, Ragnarok is just building its story. It's not contradicting anything. So that may be how I, how I would try and... Uh sort of decipher what would be manipulation but like i said i um some people have asked like why i don't do more writing and it's like part of it is because i'm still trying to figure out what i think of when i'm breaking down all these different stories and methods and that will be one for the for the future to think about maybe uh digimon of the day is vikemon vikemon all right what do we got see it in there uh Man, you just don't know what you're going to get with Digimon, do you? You really, you legitimately don't, which is, uh, yeah. What the fuck? I don't know. How come he wasn't in God of War? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, he looks like an abominable snowman it's... W w mixed with Blastoise. Bryce, you, you could, like, see some of the ideas that they were having have just lashed hard. You're like, what's uh, what's what's the goal here exactly? And you're like, well, it was some kind of animal. I hazard to guess. It was some kind of. It, and then they like yeah. want to go with like a Viking influence, possibly. But then also that just is, uh, those yeah. big fists. I'm not sure what's going on there. He's very strong. He is. He's a big fister. Um, not fist a fan personally. I'm not a fan either. 
I love when Fringy says stuff with finality and confidence, like, that should have killed him, he is absolutely dead. He's dead. Um, I know, uh, yeah, I, I hear it in Fringy's voice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, play DDLC Dumbos. Perhaps. Um, maybe. One day. Maybe. No usually, guarantees. did you play the Lost Spirit side quest in Vanaheim? They reveal quite a bit about Faye's character that was previously unknown. I did. I was in part 10 or 11 of my playthrough, but yeah. Uh, he done made a mess in the hopes of stopping Thor, which really helps out in the uh, additional understanding of the character. Uh, but what if Chris Redfield punched Boulder? Ooh. <laughs> 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 Puns. <laughs> That's existed, like, all this time. It's probably the most famous thing about that game. Is that yeah. Chris, that, it, 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 isn't it absurd that there's like a quick time event where Chris has to punch a boulder to death to solve his problem? It's funny, uh, when you fight a boulder, you do have a moment as, as Kratos where you punch a big old stone wall to knock out portions of it to then throw it onto him, but it's just like, yeah, but he's a god. <laughs> like, Chris is a guy, and he punched a boulder. And Chris is just a man whose biceps are as thick as his midsection, right? He's, right. uh... Two thirds of his width is just his arms. Uh, love the game, but here are some of my complaints. Faye confirmed near powerful as Thor. Thor, not the Thor from the last game. He beat his own son to death. Pointless giant mass suicide via marbles. You, you, well, so Faye went toe to toe with him because of the axe. I thought that was the implication. They made the axe in order to. Have it put up with uh, put up a fight against Thor. I think that was the idea. Um, we don't know the nature of their fight exactly, but yes, she was uh, Faye being Lao Fei. Apparently, she was like quite an incredibly impressive warrior. Uh, giants are obviously judging from the game. You get all kinds of different results if you're a giant. You could be huge. You could be small. You can have different magical powers. Uh, Faye was a very strong warrior. Um, he mirrors Kratos quite a bit in terms of her abilities from what. I think the implications are, hence their uh, kindred spirits sort of thing. But I don't really have any problem with that. Uh, it doesn't contradict anything from my knowledge. And then pointless giant mass suicide via marbles. I mean, as described, they feared uh, the Aesir so much that not only were they hiding in Jotunheim and they got rid of all of the ways to travel there, they also hid themselves into marbles so that even if uh, Odin or the Aesir were to find them, they'd only find corpses. I, I don't, uh, part of that is to do with them seeing their own futures and a lot of the giants would follow it to the to a T and then I guess that they also thought that was a good hiding place not sure how I feel about the whole marble thing seems really weird odd yeah that you could do that uh, yeah not but just that you, that's a thing that you do anyway but it's also just like I just don't know if someone was like quick let's all go into marbles I'd probably be like I don't know man I mean, I guess as a last, like, it, have we exhausted all other options? Well, I don't even know if I would prefer to die or not, uh, as in, in, as opposed to going to a marble. What is it like to be in a marble? I, I don't think they ever really talk about it. I don't know, it. is it just sitting there waiting, or is it, like, going on pause? Like Which is what I assume it is, because yeah. you can't, like, you don't have a, I assume you need, like, some sort of a body to experience things, but the body needs the soul to, like, have a person, you know, there. So, mm -hmm. I assume you just... You know, I, I would intuitively sort of think that if you don't have a body and you can't sense things, you just, it's like you don't exist. And when you get a body, it's like no time has passed. You just, you stopped experiencing things and now you've started again. That time in between, it's like when you're in like deep sleep and, you know, you don't really have a perception of time so much. I would guess, but I'm not sure how that works, of course. Oh, here we go. This walking know. simulator butchered uh -oh. the Kratos we fell in love with and turned him into a pacifist. A pacifist, really. You passed a fist across your face. Who tolerates being disrespected and threatened. The old Kratos would never try to reason with someone like Oden. Ugh. Thanks for the super chat, Brainlet. I, I mean, come on, man. He isn't the old you, Kratos. That's kind of the point of the last 50 kind of fucking point. hours at the end Do of Gumball 3. Be? He's not that guy anymore. He's desperately trying not to be that guy. I don't know if you knew this. Kratos in the first three games isn't really a good guy. Kind of an asshole. Um, he just kills people in his way. Like, 
but isn't that cool and oh, no, he goes to be on in this way rather he, like depending on how you play it you will grab people <laughs> I, I, I feel like an alien sometimes. I'm like, it's so awful that you could just kill fleeing civilians for their health orbs. And other people are like, isn't that so badass? It's like, what? No. What's happening? <laughs> what? Uh, um, yeah, uh, you know, the sea, the, the, the sea captain guy, boat captain, you know, whatever. But um, I love it. It's like, we fell in love with that Kratos. It's like, I wouldn't say I loved that Kratos you... in that set. I thought he was hilarious. Uh I would happily play as him. You know, if they had kept it going, he was just a crazy psycho who killed all the Norse gods. Yeah, that game might have been fun. Sure. Um, I'm glad they didn't do that, though. Glad they went with what they went with. And then, like, you know, a pacifist? He's not a pacifist, my dude. He kills a shit ton of things throughout 2018 and Ragnarok. He's killing mm. everything, basically. They even comment on it. Like, yeah, he kills, but he's sad about it now. Who cares? Do you want a crowd? That sort of shit. Like, it, it's obviously poking fun at the fact that, really, in a broad sense, he's still killing everything. But we've got lots of reason, and that's kind of what these games are trying to do. Um, and then tolerates being disrespected and threatened. Does everyone forget he threatens to kill Odin in that scene? I, I guess they... And Odin threatens to kill Atreus if, if Kratos does anything? The same argument, um... Synthetic man made. It's like, why would Kratos endanger his son? That's like his primary motivation is to not do that. Yep. And then, like, later that night, he has like an existential crisis because of the fact that his son is coming so close to death when it was like Faye's primary wish that he simply take care of his son. And then the old Kratos would never try and reason with someone like Odin. It's just like, yep. And he's a better Kratos. Look at now. what that got him. Yeah. yeah. The combat sucks too. The old Kratos had a lot more depth than this one, and he only killed people who got in his way. He wanted to spare Hercules. He only killed no. people who got in his way. <laughs> Somebody Literally, didn't play the games and pay attention. Must, Holy shit. Even I know that's horseshit, and I haven't played them. Absolutely. What about horseshit. that guy that he just kills when he's climbing out of out of the underworld? He just like stabs him in the back for some reason. No, he was in his way, up. Friggy. He was just in his way. And then he kicks him to his death when he's already up. He's already up there and fine. He just kills that guy. He was in his way. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's you didn't like, need to what about all use the his body for a lever. And they were in the way. Those screaming oh, yeah, civilians was, yeah, that woman. were running for their lives. They were in the way. Also, in the can we skip past that just because someone's in your way, it's not an That's excuse? Not like, they're in Yeah, their, well, you're right. That isn't even a good... They forfeit their life. <sighs> <laughs> I don't get it, man. Thor's design is damn near perfectly accurate to Mythos, just a bit fatter. Uh, Thor doesn't wear armor, he wears pelts and bone. This Thor's design and character are fantastic. I thought he was awesome, yeah. Uh, fun fact, Mimir is voiced by Senator Armstrong. I think people have... Uh, Wait, really? That yeah. That guy does a <laughs> shit ton of voice acting. It's unreal. <laughs> Mimir, how do we know you're telling the truth? My source is, I made it the fuck up. Norse fun fact. Mimir is actually Odin's blood uncle. So is Loki. Yep, see, there's going to be some family tree elements that they're not going to be able to maintain. Uh, fake deaths aren't gaming. Stuff like this is for people who don't actually like video games, but visual stories. Don't need a story to throw a ball. Um, I... Why are you doing the thing where it's like, you can't like video games and also like the the fake out Thor death thing? I don't know. It's, yeah, because I, I wasn't exactly convinced. I understand a lot of the arguments people give, but I don't I don't find them that compelling. I certainly don't. Likewise. Um, have to I can see it would be harder. cool if they could be procced by actually dying as well, that he would do that. But it seems like if you actually die in that scene, you just die. But if you, you know, you get to that point in the fight, that's when that procs. And it's like, a bit more dynamism to it would be really awesome. But the idea that mm -hmm. it happens and that's bad for gaming, I, I'd need to be convinced of that. Uh, a problem with Theo's idea. What if you don't lose to Thor? What then? Do I just not get oh, the cutscene or what? Well, yeah, I, I think, think Theo would say that's fine. Would you just say, don't yeah. get it. Exactly. Which, to be fair, I'm not against either. Um, I don't think that's the, uh, yeah. I don't think that's like an argument for why that should have not been an option at all. There are a lot of things that can be missed in the game via playing better or worse. Um, I tried to highlight one of them with that that t dialogue that comes out of Freya, depending on how you fight the ancient. I like stuff like that. I think it's cool. 
Uh, QTEs on PC are cancer when they tell you to press W instead of up arrow symbol, or when they tell you to look for K or something like that. Yeah, the issue with uh, QuickTime events on PC is that you have a lot more options for buttons, and on a controller, your fingers are, you're pretty much touching every button at the same time, pretty much. Um, so when they throw, uh, you know, W, E, R, T, F, C, V, X, Z, spacebar, all, you, you can't, there, there needs to be that, like, it just doesn't quite, it doesn't work because you're too worried about now you're looking down at all of the things and you're not paying attention whereas like in a, on a controller right you see the button you know exactly where it is boom you press it but on a keyboard and a mouse that might not necessarily be the case you'd have to look down to make sure you're pressing you know the right this or the right that if they choose oddly positioned buttons um but yeah you got to be more careful about that on a uh, on I'm a keyboard when you have more generally to use from. not a fan of qts Generally, yeah, I am not a generally not a fan of them. There is a time and place for them that I often feel goes um, unrespected. Let's say more base takes from Theo Peepo Dad. Well, why do you think we have him? Randomly came across a video from over a year ago which predicted Odin would be Tyr, and his reasons were fairly accurate. Well, good for him. That was a pretty cool yeah. prediction. Uh, Thor killing and bringing Kratos back does also fit the story with Odin telling Thor to not kill him in their fight. Well, like, you, uh, I can't remember if it was covered, but obviously we're supposed to interpret it as a sort of, like, he got knocked out and then he zapped him and that took him back in. They took that opportunity to show us a screen we're familiar with death and then they undid it to create that moment in, in players to be like, oh! Which, um, yeah, you I think know... It's it's a neat little creative use of the player character connection in video games that I that, that I appreciate and I think it's kind of neat and it's ultimately it's a very minor thing but I I think it sort of gets you know it keeps you on your toes and it was it was a fun little clever thing that they did and I and I liked it and I wouldn't for lack know, of a I better explanation it a it's a moment for players to feel like the game reached out outside of its bounds for a moment there and it, kind of feel yeah. something a little different it, it looks... treats you. It, the game. It, it's the game kind of addressing the player in a way, which can be good and can be terrible. But I think for something like that, it, it's nice. I, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing more of that sort of thing in the future. Dylan looks like Shmi from Hook. Yeah, he kind of did. Yeah. Cool motif throughout how Kratos has Mimir as the other side of his coin, turning his back on someone when he feels his own words inadequate. Could just be just a natural result of where he is, but um, yeah, not not. Like, are they suggesting that like when saying. Kratos doesn't exactly know what to say and he can turn his back as a result, then Mamiya can almost act as a uh, a backup. Mamiya yeah. can then sort of uh try to chip in. I, Maybe, I'm already thinking like that anyway. happens. I think with Tia, Kratos turns his back on him and then Mamiya starts talking to him. So. Maybe. I mean, they said motif, so it's fun to think about it. Close. Devil Fruit of the Week, meaning you will lose the ability to swim, I believe, if you accept yeah. this trade. I think so. The ability is change any body part into any weapon. Assuming you can change it back and then it's pretty yeah. quick and painless, then yeah, sure. That sounds pretty cool. I mean, I. To be honest with you, I don't even need swimming then, because I can turn one of my arms or legs into like a thruster or a propeller. Something like that, yeah. I guess that could count as a weapon. Would that count as a weapon? Uh, a propeller. I mean, like, well, you could definitely use that as a weapon. To use it as a weapon, or that is well, that, that's kind of where I'm sort of going with this line of thinking, right? Because I was about to say, well, an axe. An axe is like clearly a weapon, but it also is a tool, right? But a sword is it's just a weapon. It's not. Like, they're not good tools, generally. Um, a knife, like, that's a tool, but it's also a weapon. So... I see what you're saying. Like, where does... Um, like, in the spirit of the question, of if it's only some... You can only turn into things that are primarily understood to be weapons. We could probably still find something that would help with swimming, right? Um, 
I'm just trying to think. Swimming? What are, what are like primarily sort of weapons that you could turn yourself into, but that would help propel you into water? Maybe if you turned your arm into a wooden shield, it would float. A wooden shield wouldn't count as a weapon, would it? Um, it depends whether you count a shield as a weapon. I probably would. Shields have an offensive cap. They're used in tandem with weapons. They're only generally used for a combat situation. Shields can have spikes and stuff on them to help. I mean, bucklers would certainly count as like like weapons in a way, um, and how they're used. I would say shields would count as weapon. Um, All right, I was more so thinking about because like generally in games they're yeah. What is the limit here? Is it only what humanity has come up with, or is it like we have sci-fi weapons? And stuff? Oh yeah, I spoke. You have like laser guns and stuff like that. Because even anything with like a propellant force underwater would then push you up, right? And forward, depending on. Uh yes, it would. If you shot below you with enough, uh yeah, force. The um. Basically yes to this deal. I'm 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 more than happy as long as I have control over it and it's painless and I can switch it back. Then I don't see why I wouldn't. Yeah, I think for me, I'm also in that category of might as well, because I just never swim. Uh, so I would almost by default get more use out of this, though I normally have a weapon with me anyway by default. But I guess it, ca it can't hurt to be like, oh, it, and especially when we're talking about the axe or the knife thing. Like, that's just a generally useful thing that you could have on you at all times. But you could also just carry a knife with you at all times, as I do. but. I don't know. I guess so. I mean, I guess it would just be fun and cool. Uh, so, I, yeah, I guess for that virtue alone, it probably is worth it. The excitement in his voice before he punched that chest is such a neat little moment. I think they're talking about the boulder fight. Because, uh, I think, anyway, I'm assuming they're not talking about Thor punched the chest. Because I think um, boulder punches Kratos in the chest. And uh, he's happy when he's hit by uh, Kratos because I think he's he's always looking for an opportunity to feel something, and I think he thinks that if I find an opponent strong enough to punch me hard enough, that I'll actually feel pain again. Which um, I have to imagine is a real thing, right? If you were numb to everything in life, the idea of being able to feel pain might actually seem like a a reprieve. Oh, we, you know, we had a character in Hill House who was kind of the inverse of that. Um, remind she was she she would always feel things from other people she she constantly oh, had right, emotions yeah. and things so feeling the inverse of that was just like unfathomably uncomfortable feeling nothing whatsoever absolutely nothing oh fuck you reminded me that payoff is so strong because isn't it good at first you believe like because she feels everything and she touches a corpse and uh, she's, like, terrified. And so when you're first going through the show, you assume she saw something horrifying, right? Like a monster. Demon, yeah, that's Chipola, what you assume. Yeah, Or absolutely. how she died. But then we find out later on that what she felt was absolute nothingness. And it was, like, one it was of the most horrifying the experiences yeah. ever. Man, that show is good. What a great Pity show. Pity about that ending. Pity about the ending, but, man, still worth... Um, this just, this says, or a fear of death. Not sure what it's connected to or what the question is, sort of, but all right. Yeah, sorry, I just, I don't know, yeah. God damn it, Molly, you forgot about Crimbus? I blame Mootle. I also hate Summer Fring Fringulius. You hate Summer Fringy, is that what you're saying? Oh, they're saying I hate Summer too, because Fringy mentioned disdain for some portions of Summer. Uh, ironically, this coming from a Caribbean Islander. I didn't forget about Christmas, it's just that this year it was impossible to get things ready for, uh... You know, if Silent Night were out, that would be really fun to just watch for a Christmas thing, and then I could maybe get that edited in time, but... Oh my god, I've got so much going on, and Mel's coming over soon, so... I was hoping to just maybe have a couple days where I don't have to, you know, edit all day. But hey... Uh, next year, hopefully, we'll we'll have a system set up that more EFAP movies are coming out. I still want to get to the point where we have that coming out more regularly. I do too. Um, Winter Kings versus Summer Cucks: Death to the Sun. Whoa, Death to the Sun. We kind of need it. <laughs> it's a 
you know, you know, it's super useful for some stuff. So we'll keep the sun. Just you know, sun can stay. The air is so hot, everything burns. Fringy as he talks about the mythical Australia. Hi, Rags. Hello. Yeah, that's what it's like. It hasn't been too hot this year, though, fortunately. But summer's not. We're only part way into it, so it could get worse. And it almost certainly will. Based Fringy, together we can kill the sun and chill. Well, I don't know if I want to get rid of it. I just, just, I just wish I he would that about you, chill Fringy. out a little bit. In the in the summer months, just just dial it back just a little bit. Sorry about my message last time. I misunderstood the argument. Anyway, Bear's use of odd instruments like the accordion or the hurdy gurdy will always impress me. Also, I just adore the hurdy gurdy. Hurdy gurdy. Uh, his work on Ragnarok makes it so that I will like be singing his praises as a musician for a long time, even if he made like several soundtracks that were worthless after it. Uh, it's a goldie. When Rings of Power oh, yeah. 2, <laughs> Electric Boogaloo comes out, and it's just got the most bog-standard, mediocre, forgettable music in it, I'll be like, you yeah, know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't take away what he's done. Ratatoska's missing an eye. It's Odin! I think um, we're supposed to infer that, because Ratatoska said he was, um, he was near death when he reached Yggdrasil, and Yggdrasil turned him into what he is now. I think we're supposed to assume that it was like he lost his eye when attacked by something. That he ran to, to Yggdrasil. I, I guess we'd find wow. out more from mythology. It's a dangerous world out there for a squirrel. Yeah. Rags. I mean, that was literally the lesson of that Merlin taught to, you know, Wart when he was a squirrel. He's like, the, it, it is a very dangerous world and you need to Keep your wits about you. This is what it, you know, this is the life of a squirrel, is you are constantly looking for things that are trying to eat you or kill you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Rags, you're all right. The rest of you are great. Well, thanks. I'll take what I can get, I suppose. Except Fringy. You make me feel things I haven't in a long time. Wow. What? Well, that means. Uh, have been watching since the first EFAB and decided to finally pull some cash out of my tight butt. Happy holidays and all that. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's clear Bear McCreary had strong vision for every Ragnarok level. Rings of Power, there's so little to be inspired by. I genuinely think that's that's the answer. I uh, Yeah, he was clearly... There was one one of these projects he definitely cared about. The other was just he had no passion for, it seems. I have to imagine when you're writing the music for a very story-driven piece of media that it can so easily inspire you if you sort of are interested in the story. Yeah, conversely, if there's nothing to latch on to, it's hard to find ideas. Uh, Bear McCreary also did the OST for The King of the Monsters, which is honestly the best part of the movie. Check out the monsters' themes, especially Rodan's. Oh, he's I... done a lot of stuff. I it's wouldn't of, expect anything else. I'm sure it's uh, very, very... I mean, visually, that film was pretty awesome, too. It's just the writing. Oh, yeah. It was pretty cool, yeah. The writing was terrible, yeah. There's too much human bullshit. Yeah, that goes back to the writing. High metal. You would say hi back. Pick Duma. Duma wasn't even on that episode. About it. <laughs> hi, Rags. Hello! Did you watch Organized Chaos Obliterate Baller's video? <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, organized chaos is so based and red pilled. Based, in, he's pilled on something. I don't know he's what it so, is. He's so amazing at yeah, man. He definitely convinced me. All of his arguments were so good. Fascinating he, character. It certainly is. Well, yeah, because by the time this comes out, you guys will have seen us uh, watching his video on my video. It's something else. Uh, <laughs> he really pushed the limits of talking about something. Like, it's like he was paid to disagree with me, no matter what. Like, well, it, Yeah, no matter what you said, and then it ended up that he contradicted himself plenty of times. And that weird thing of shitting on dialogue, bizarre. That was really isn't odd. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like, just because, 
just because that was a, a suggestion. I think I think it was Drinker's suggestion, right? Like have the characters have a conversation. <laughs> you know, Dialogue? it's like, oh man, no, that's pretty that's lame. Original. Yeah. This is a visual medium, even though characters talk in movies. It's pretty I can't normal. yeah. The movie critic who's just so stupid. He's like, don't, don't poo-poo dialogue, my dude. Well, I think it's just, um, it's the thing of where you've, 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 uh, you've pulled the wrong lessons from writing advice. Like, you don't realize that show don't tell doesn't, is not like a flat condemnation of, of dialogue. You can show and not tell with dialogue. It's called subtext. Like, it's, it's real, dialogue is incredibly useful because it's like a, something of an insight into the way that a character is thinking. But like it's not just what they say, it's what they don't say, or it's how they say it, or when. Like, I don't know, it's a little more complicated than just visual good, dialogue bad. It's just really strange. <laughs> but hey, anything to disagree with you, I guess. Chat, behave yourselves. I don't know why that was over, but alright. Mm. Hi Mauler, Rags, Fringy, and guests. Hello! I left space there, bringing to say. Oh, I, I, yeah, hey, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if there was like a message. Thrilled there's a Ragnarok slash gaming EF app and that there's going to be more than one. Also, really enjoy this format, Mauler, plus high rags. Hello. Yeah, I mean, it could come up again sometime. Depends on what games come out and what interest sort of aligns. You know how it goes. There's a very interesting quote from the Prose Edda, one of the main written sources for Norse mythology. Narf is a giant who dwelt in Jotunheim. He had a daughter by the name Night. He was swarthy and dark like the race she belonged to. Oh. Well, that, that wouldn't necessarily mean skin color, but it that could. could. That could, yeah, you're right. Could. Dark could but, um, mean a couple of things, I guess. Like she's... Yeah. You know, a dark-skinned person or a person who's just more metaphorically dark. My prophecy. Writing is wishy-washy boring on a good day. Bo does the boring prophecy talking to gameplay is all the worst walking sim. She gets cool again when she's given stuff to do. Yeah, but, well, so this is kind of what we were trying to talk about with the prophecy stuff. I feel like the game utilized it in a pretty strong way, right? Especially when its whole point it wants to make is the power of choice. And that, uh, you know, like, locking in this grand idea of prophesized of these horrible events and all these different deaths and stuff, but simultaneously trying to drill it all the way down to someone like Thor being like, we don't change, we are monsters. Uh, better to just do what we are, be what we are. And then, according to who? According to what? This game obviously isn't saying that are the prophecies of the reason everyone's doing everything and that everything's set in stone. A lot of the prophecies you find on the shrines don't come true. Like, it's worth mentioning. One of the shrines you find mm. has Thor dying to Jormungandr. Obviously, more of a reference to the mythology, but that does not happen in the game. And that it's uh, it's arguable that those the, the most important changes happened because the individual characters changed their... I think Atreus and Thrude have more chemistry than Atreus and Angraboda. Um, I think I agree. I would say so. I think Atreus and Thrude is much more interesting because of the fact they come from, like, warring families. Yeah. Yeah, that's I that element, so because, you know, Kratos and Atreus killed her brothers. That too, yeah. Thor hates them, but she doesn't seem to hate them quite as much. She actually gets along with them. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's more of a uh, clashing dynamic. Yeah. Follow me for two hours doing chores while I don't tell you where we're going. Who am I and why you should care? Most The Last of Us 2 part of the game. So now I'm just I wondering what it means for something to be more. The Last of Us 2. Like, boring slash confusing? Because I was going to say, it's just like, getting weird We're not that being we able throw that to... in. Yeah, like not accomplishing much with your time. <clears throat> I Yeah, I'm not exactly certain. Uh,. She does give you plenty of information. Like, it seems to me everyone who hates the Ironwood section missed at least what the Ironwood section achieves. One of the big ones being, of course, it allows Atreus to understand his rage form. Like, that's, that's pretty big in terms of developing him, or at least his abilities. 
the fate of the giants convincing her to do more with her life than what is written. Like, these things happen there. I know that none of us like Ironwood, but, like, you gotta acknowledge what happens there. It's some things, yeah. It, I mean, it, it did accomplish things. It just took way too long to accomplish them. There's way too much dead space in there in terms of potential. Uh, what's weird is what else could they do with the marble souls? Put them back into the human giant bodies? How many soulless bodies are walking around? Well, so first of all, before we can make oh, that decision, we need days. to know what the the people wanted when they went in, and then what does it mean to be in those marbles, and then what does it mean to be put into an animal? None of these questions are answered, and then they just do it. Um, yeah, I think that's just a it's just a flat out I think a weak ass part of the story. Um, yeah. They want to make Jormungandr. That. That's, that's what that is. And then how many soulless bodies are walking around? So that's a weird thing, right? We see what happens when the animals are taken of their souls. They sort of wander and, and they're like one of them's licking a stone because it's just done. I, I guess they die eventually. Their body would just run out of sustenance because they don't even know. Yeah, yeah. It, would, it would just starve, which is a... Horrifying. Which, you know, a, a part of you wants you... It's weird because you kind of want... You think, like, that's a terrifying thing to happen. And they're like... Well, I guess but nobody's is there. Is there even anything? Yeah. yeah. If there's no one, if there's nothing in there to even, Heal like, it. nothing is getting experience. It's literally just a robot, like a flesh robot at that point. It's just an automaton. There's nothing in terrifying. there. Yeah, it's because it's not the. There's nothing in there to feel the pain and anguish of wasting away. It's just. I mean, it's it's just a a body, a zombie, so to. It, essentially, it's a zombie. Um, but yeah, without a person in there, it doesn't. I guess it doesn't mean anything. It's almost like what's terrifying is the potential of, you know, that this, it's kind of a, and it goes in the shell too. I think Innocence talks about this with like dolls. When we look at a doll, we see like a body that makes us think of the, the empty potential of what a human could be reduced to. And you get the similar vibes with this and this and, and, and a body that doesn't have a soul in it. Um, but again, they don't they don't do too much with it. So I could only assume that anything you do to that body is I mean the most like if you came across one of those bodies that didn't have a soul, right? Then I mean it would be immoral to destroy it in the sense of if the point was to get the soul back into a body, you know, in a way that that does still belong to the if the soul is like no more, it doesn't exist then that's one thing. But if there's that person's soul out there that needs to get back into that body, which it still owns, then it would be immoral to destroy someone else's property at that point. Um, and not just the moral implications of that's the vehicle for them to experience the world. So it's more than just property destruction. Um, you know, it's, it's the amount of, it's like, you know, Krypton had its chance to destroy all the eggs. It's, it's the amount of potential that you've you know rid the world of things that just can't happen now because you've decided they can't happen um it's very abortive in a way uh it's unpleasant to think about but the that just wasn't really explored that much they were doing other things also one moment real quick i just gotta test only Fringy played soma so we could make a great comparison to and then they name a thing that i'm not even gonna name Okay. Well, good thing I missed that in chat. I mean, it wouldn't spoil anything out of context, but I'm not even going to give you that. Sure. You need. Okay. But yeah. One day you'll play it. One. Day. Yep. At least snakes have stellar throat game. Right. Also, the giants went into Pokeballs so that they could hide from the Aesir. The Aesir are oh. still around Atreus. What the fuck? Yeah, we read this one out live because yes, true. Uh, the only stated purpose they're aware of for why they went into those marbles is not over. It's still a thing. So, a basic respect of why they chose the action is being ignored. Just because Atreus is like, I don't know, fuck it. Mm. Great, man. Uh, Genshin Impact is best explained as Breath of the Weeb, Waifu Wars. Got you back here, raggers. Yeah. Also, its gotcha rates are horrendously predatory. I, that's, I know nothing about Genshin Impact, apparently. Like, the more I discover about it, the less I know about it. That's sort of my position. I, it seems the, le the more I learn, the less I like it. Uh, Fringy, you once called Bohemia Boletaria. 
I, I might have. <laughs> <That's, laughs> you must have been thinking of something demon, else when he said that. Demon Souls, I think, is Bolotaria, right? I think so, yeah. Maybe it was because I was playing Demon Souls, because I got that for PS5. I need to come Probably. back to it, though. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Bolotaria. I love the transition from the final Fae Dream back to Kratos' tent. Yeah, like, uh, the... He's sort of standing with her, or sitting with her, and then the floor comes from behind him, and then the, the tent starts to come in from the top as well. Like they, I think they do a different transition for each time he gets back into the real world from each of those. I'd have to check. It is cool nonetheless. They had a lot of cool transitions in that game. Reminds me of, uh, actually, Hill House. Hill House had loads of really good transitions for the past to present, present to past. Sort of just finished Callisto. Can't in good conscience recommend story and characters. Sorry, can't in good conscience recommend. Story and characters are thin. Gameplay is mixed at best. 11-ish hours. Extremely linear game with small side areas that dead ends. Gonna try Signalis. Ah, that's a shame, in it? Speaking of the more I hear about, the less I like. Have you noticed how much older Kratos looks here? Like he's truly showing his age one of the few times in game. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, the, the, you can spot a lot of the, like, crow's feet and sort of, um, sort of standard aging elements that you, you'll spot. I, I'm curious if we go forward 10 years or something that if they'll, uh, they'll start considering making him, like, very, like, getting into much more of an old man Kratos sort of stuff. Surprised. Definitely feels like uh, eras of his life sort of thing, but I don't know if they're ever gonna kill him. I really do wonder if they'll they'll ever wanna. It'll, it'll... <laughs> I was about to say it'll only be once the game stop making money, but it's like that's they'll just not make them at that point though. It speaks volumes of Kratos' character and of how he raised Atreus that both remember their interactions with people they care about so well as to recant their words to them in opportune moments. That's the thing they they've spent so long with each other. That uh, the big epic sort of uh, tragedies or, or adventure parts where something is said, it's remembered their whole lives. So, And, you know, it wouldn't have been the only time that he would have said certain things. It's just the time that we heard and saw them as well. Heimdall is just rags in God of War. Change my mind. I'm not... I'm... No. <laughs> rags is a lot nicer not at than all. Heimdall. First off, yeah, I am a lot nicer than Heimdall is. Secondly, I have a I'm very optimistic, I think, maybe even to a point or to a fault in how good I think generally of humans. Um I I'm not I'm not a very cynical person at all. Um yeah, I don't I don't see how you got that. Heimdall and I definitely are very different from one another. I agree. Why does Thor still have the cut? That one was a particularly deep one, didn't heal right. Anything we can say about that? I yeah, I mean, getting hit by Leviathan like that by Kratos, that's a that's a big deal. The big uh, that's that's the kind of wound that'll leave a scar, I'd imagine. Maybe given a lot of time it would heal back up, but maybe not. It's a little bit hard to tell, but both seem like they could be possible. I love Heimdall's haughty shit poster energy. I, I really enjoyed him as a character. I thought he was uh, he was really well done, and a great sort of just element to throw in among everything else. And uh, I think they took full advantage of his power as well. And I don't know if that's what he's like in mythology, but it was a it was a cool interpretation of of how he could use the power. I think Heimdall speaks, acts, and moves a lot like Weyoun from Star Trek DS9. Extremely close resemblance uh, to push very similar traits. Have you seen DS9, Rags? No, I actually haven't, no. I know very little about Deep Space Nine. I haven't seen it either. Neither have I. Uh, new Amnesia is coming, Shady Boy. I, uh... Oh, they said, how about that? Uh, I, I am very much scorned. I, I am not happy with them, so it would take a lot now for me to come back. It would have to be, the game has an incredible trailer that tempts me beyond belief, and then several people I trust tell me it's an amazing game. That's the only thing that's going uh, to get sorry, me to play now. Who's this? 
new amnesia game oh yeah for, i mean you i mean Mahler and i are on the same page on that one like i the best that i could say that i have in terms of curiosity for the next game is is i i guess just i mean it, it would be like the next the, i mean the rest of the willow season it'd just be like wow is this how bad will this be and in what way I have I no know. confidence I, whatsoever that the game will be good, but there always is there, there's that element of me that's like legitimately curious. Where do they go? How do they course correct if they do, or do they just make another shit video game? Uh, Amnesia Rebirth felt like getting slapped by a friend. Uh, kind of. And so I just I feel disrespected. <laughs> I'm just I'm not I'm not getting yeah. involved. Like I said, it'd have to be a unique circumstance for me to give that thing a chance. I'd be like, nah, I'm out. I'm thinking so. It's pretty much the same for me. Hola, Ragola. Hola. Yes, any SSD is an upgrade from a mechanical hard drive, but you don't need to overspend for NVMe. Games don't benefit from the large bandwidth. Yeah, the only the only really good one that I the only, like the, specifically in this computer, like the boot drive, the C drive is the fastest one. The others are not because they don't really have to be. Um, but you know. I, some games, you know, they benefit from SSD. A lot of them do, in fact. And, uh, in fact, a lot of games in the recommendeds for them, they say, you know, and now better SSD, with an SSD. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's part of what's been pushed with, like, PlayStation 5 and kind of to a lesser extent Xbox, but especially with PlayStation, it's, like, super fast, like, loading times. It's I mean, really I know in, fast SSD. Just today, as I've been piddling around in Guild Wars, I've noticed that whenever this a group that I'm in goes into an instance... I'm the first one who's moving and grooving, and I'm waiting ah, for other people to. They're still yep. sitting there, loading as their characters are part of the world. They're, the characters have been sort of loaded in, but they're still, you know, they're still at a loading screen. And I've, you know, gone ahead. You see it. Speaking of fun mythological games with excellent character writing and absurd amount of optional dialogue, Hades, go play it, Dumbos. I've heard good things. Lots of guys. But also hollow rags. Hello. People were expecting Patrick Stewart Odin. Instead, we got Saul Goodman. Not definitive Odin, but for what it is, I like it. And we were ex we were expecting Patrick Stewart Odin, like I a very official by the books, um, not very personable, keeps I'm to shot. himself sort of. Very, you know, duty-minded character. I don't know. Is that what we were expecting? I had almost zero expectations beyond what I'd been told in the 2018 game because I started to try and avoid any more information. Can't say that that was my experience. Um, I was just happy to see what they were going to do, and they've earned. They're the opposite of Amnesia Rebirth, where if if that same team made the next game, it wouldn't matter if the opening hour was all stuff I didn't like. I would be like, I'm going to have to wait until the entire game is over before I judge it, because I have so much faith in these people. And then, you know, if I complete it and it was shit, I'd be like, right. Yeah, wow. I think that's kind of what happened with me in Amnesia Rebirth. I tried to give it as much good faith as I could for a while. Of course. I mean, I think everyone did. I you mean, know, look you, at the pedigree like, of the company. You're dealing with the fear flashes, and you're just like, <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, this won't be the whole oof. game. This yeah, will be yeah. this will be a little, just a little temporary thing, just and to get us I'm, on edge. Maybe I'm fucking something up. Maybe I'm supposed to be using the matches in some way. Or maybe I'm supposed to stay in the light more. You know, you know, like some some something's some, some probably wrong. I'm probably doing something. Yeah. Coming out, yeah, this guy's coming out after an Amnesia: The Dark Descent and Soma, hitting Amnesia: Rebirth was like a fucking brick wall. It sucked. It was just unbelievable. What an insane disappointment. Love you guys. Here is loot. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Some hack silver for the lads. Thank oh, you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I love loot. This Thor is a lot like guys in my family. It's the thing. A lot of people related to either Thor or Throod and what was happening in that relationship. Not exactly uncommon. This isn't Odin. Source? It was revealed to me in a dream. <laughs> nice. I, I, mean, get, uh, I wish I could get some of that. 
It's a, it's a thing. It's a complicated thing. When someone says this isn't the Odin that it should be and stuff, they could very well be people who've never even read a lick of fucking Norse mythology, but at the same time, maybe they would defend it that way. They'd be like, I don't have to have read it to know that this is not how you do Odin. There's almost like a perception of what a character should be, and I think a lot of people do accept that. That has nothing to do with any particular source. It's just what we believe the, the thing is. And uh, I feel like the original games really did create a lot of their characters based on that sort of system. Zeus looks exactly like how most people think Zeus looks. That's just, uh, it, there was nothing subversive about Zeus, except he was kind of a dick, but even that is kind of like, well, you know, he did dick things, so. But then they revealed all the gods that became dicks because of Pandora's box being open, so. I'm still not clear on what a lot of God War fans think of that. Kind of retconny. And also takes their agency away a little bit. Even to the point that when you're beating up Zeus at the end of God of War 3, the, the black smoke comes out of him as if to imply the evil from Pandora's box has been released. I'm not sure what you're supposed to make of that exactly either. Like, like once you do that, is he back to being a good guy? And he's like, oh no, don't kill me, but it's too late. Uh, um, though Hades, as was talked about before, is still somebody that I think a lot of people are like, ew, don't design him that way, boo. So, you know... I'd like to say Marvel's Loki is bad because he wasn't impregnated by a horse. Not giving birth to an eight-legged horse absolutely ruins Loki's character. Stuff like that is why the whole, like, have to adhere to source argument starts to get troublesome. A lot of things that people are not going to want to be accurate. But then it's like, so you only make accurate the things you like. A bit awkward. Wait, is God of War Ragnarok just a ripoff of Hook? Odin has one eye. Captain Hook. Dylan is Smee. Atreus is Pan, Pan's son who goes to Hook. Kratos is Pan. Kratos does kind of seem like Peter Pan, doesn't he? They're very similar. Not hearing any disagreements. No, no, not not from us. Alrighty then. I saw a review from someone who was confused why Atreus was sad at Fenrir's passing when he had hunted a deer earlier. Some people are beyond help. Oh, gee. I can't imagine uh, why Atreus is chill uh, with hunting a deer, but he's sad when his fucking wolf dies. I can't imagine. The, the, wow, your pet dog died after spending over a decade as your loyal friend? Yeah, but you squashed a cockroach the other day, so... Wow, you had chicken much? for dinner, but you're sad when the dog wow. dies? Weirdo. <laughs> Pretty fucked up. Hmm. Geez, some people are... Assuming this is not a made-up story. Jeez. What a retard. Just got my Fringy and Mola plushies. They're great. One to go. Hi, Rags. Merry Grumps. Hello. Oh, Super you too. Super glad you're happy with it. Yeah, uh, funnily enough, my Fringies have delivered. I still haven't got my Molas yet. Really? Okay. I right yeah. just got mine the other day. They have arrived. Before we check the site, actually. The updates. Um, I love how the Norns say in tens and everyone remembers kills. Yeah, I read this one out because, yeah, everyone everyone talks about it as though it's it's in stone. And that's why it's motivation. But, uh, Heimdall's intention to kill Atreus uh, w w was, it, it was like born out of him noticing Atreus' motivation to subvert Asgard. But that changes, uh, as you can find from bonus dialogue if you talk to I'm dull. He's like, hmm. You don't even know what you yeah. want to do. And how interesting it is that ultimately it is it is Heimdall's intentions that get him killed. You do not get to decide my fate. Cringe yep. soy. The Norns reinforcing Kratos' lesson to Atreus. Intentions do not matter, only the consequences. Top-notch stuff. Well, in relation to the result, right? Like, it's, at that point, the intention's not going to do anything because what happens next is going to just... I, I quite enjoy it as a sort of, like, but I didn't mean for thing to happen. It's like, that's great, man. Real useful at this point. Um, but yeah, obviously, Kratos, uh, he's still destroying a path here, but for completely different reasons, better reasons, quote-unquote, the, the Norns are just, like, lol. Pity your story will end so soon. What's an endgame time Kratos would have died if it weren't for his character change? Saved by friendship? 
I think um, there's a lot of ways to interpret that. Would Kratos have died had he not made significant changes in his decisions in the end game of Ragnarok? It's possible. Maybe. If he yeah. continued to attack Thor, maybe he kills him and then Throod is like, works with Odin to stop you as a possibility, and maybe it actually works. You know, there's lots of different ways things could uh, roll out differently if Kratos hadn't decided to save the civilians to save, blah, blah, blah. Um, Remember, they delay Ragnarok as a result of him trying to save the civilians. There's all kinds of ways that if he hadn't, he may have died there, you know? Um, however, it could be that uh, when they say, pity your story will end so soon, if the Norns are like ethereal creatures that lived forever, then him dying soon could mean, you know, one day, one century. One of those things, they, they're weird or maybe, creatures, uh, right? Maybe a story doesn't necessarily end because of death maybe it's like yeah you finish your journey you finish your arc of sorts and that in a way that means your story's done to them who knows you know if you reach your yeah who knows who knows? it's very open-ended to interpretation which is uh and there's no reason know, to think the norns can't lie they could probably fuck with them that. uh brock x kratos best bro ship yeah uh, really good job with that Absolutely, they did. If you equate the nature of a thing to its purpose or function, then surely its form is equal importance, not less? Perhaps I misunderstood, but even in context, what Brock says seems kind of floompy. All he's talking well, about can't... is uh, the form. Form might tell you something's nature. It's, it's potentially possible, especially like in mechanical sense, but whether or not you have that, what he says stands true. The the nature of the thing, like what it is, what it wants, what it does, is going to be more important as information than what it looks like. Which is all he's it's really getting at. It's also very important to in you know in the way that the question was worded. Do not link something's um, uh, nature with its purpose, because in a way they're 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 in great opposition because. Something's nature is what it is, and it couldn't be any other way. Um, whereas the purpose of a thing is something that's imbued upon an object. Purpose is, purpose is not intrinsic to something, whereas something's nature is. Um, so, for like the like um, a, a purpose requires a a user of a thing or a mind uh, to use something for a specific yeah, they reason. Said purpose or function to try and broaden it out i think on purpose they which kind of comes back yes, to what you so. said about the axe earlier right like you look at an axe and you're like weapon and it's like well yeah what's the purpose of an axe it's like well generally we know what it is used for but that's still a generalization it's just useful to say that when truthfully the purpose of an axe is whatever i essentially want to use it for i imbue that axe with purpose through its usage and it does certain things better than others which is why generally when you say what's the purpose of an axe we can all agree it's you know for chopping things uh but it's it's not necessary to the you know to, to the metal and the handle and everything it's not it's not intrinsic to it that mm. its purpose is to do anything yeah and obviously what's happening is what is kratos the god killer like one way to summarize him what is his nature it's like he doesn't want to kill everything he's in fact he's kind of against it at this point because and then you know what is he? Oh, I love that sequence so much. It's like what is he doing right now? He's like he's crafting a weapon to kill a god that will likely start a war that will end in bloodshed. And it's like so he's doing everything that he did in the originals. He certainly looks like something right now. And it's like yeah 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 yeah. But think about why he's doing all the things that he's doing. And that's what they start saying him and Atreus back and forth to each other throughout the third act. Like, why are we making these decisions? Because uh, because they're the right thing to do, not because it's written that sort of thing. Not because we match some kind of bad thing in terms of our form. Our nature is more important. Don't touch my spear, gross piv. Yeah. Well, I guess, is that how far we are right now in the story? We're with Brock informing the spear, huh? Hmm. Alrighty. Perhaps the two spears also refer to the two faces Odin puts on in the story, as both he and Tyr have spears associated with them. Uh, it's possible. Possible. It's when they were talking about that shot where he's between the two spears, and it very much looks deliberate. Yeah, it's it's very deliberate. I just kind of wonder what they were thinking when they did that in terms of what they wanted us to yeah. be thinking about. 
Um, and Faye was an example of fridging. Reference for anyone who remembers the EFAP episode in High Rags. And this is the thing, man. I... I just, like, I was never convinced by that whole fridging thing. I just won't be. Um, I need them to I address Uncle Ben. Is that fridging? And if it is, then what, what the fuck's the point of this anymore? Like, if a, a character dies for the sole purpose of, it seemingly, in the story, of motivating someone else to do something, that's bad. Or, I guess it's not even that it's bad, it's that it's a trope and that it, like, removes the agency and meaning from that person, which I just, like... I mean, it's all in that episode. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm bringing it up. It frustrates me. Long-time listener, first-time caller. It's not the typical EFAP speed, but I'd like to recommend Causeway, a new film from A24 slash Apple TV+. I haven't heard of it. <clears throat> Neither have I. Uh, strong through-line, incredibly well-realized characters who are expertly performed, and yes, themes, but not at the expense of plot or characters. Also high rags. Hello. All right. Yeah, we hi. like themes. Yeah, we do like themes. It took us like we years like to that convince are... our audience we actually like them. <laughs> like, yeah, it's... we we like themes that are well supported by the material. Thanks, and, Ryan. Uh, they aren't contradicted <laughs> by the messaging of the film. Well, it's yeah. like subversion, right? Like now, now a lot of people see that as like a dirty word. So sad. So many of the greatest yeah, of all time do subversion. Exactly. What, what is Unforgiven, if not one of the biggest subversions of like a, its genre ever? Yeah. Um, I've been looking forward to this. That's three different people who've said that. Quality mm. meme. Quality meme from... It is a quality meme. From, uh, well, beloved films, let's call them. Yes, they definitely are, yes. Uh, damn you, Mubshly. Still not done with 2.15. It's not my fault. I'm scary. Ten and a half hours last time, and we haven't even gotten to the real good stuff yet. I don't think my heart is ready. Also, hi, Frags, and... Oh, sorry. Hi, Rags and Frongo. Hello. Hey. I guess we're on part two, then. What's up, peeps? I'm bricked up and ready for this breakdown. Bricked up? Bricked what up? What does it mean to be bricked up? But like alcohol? Or, or are you I'm ready to take a up. shit? I don't know what I mean. Maybe he miss. Maybe he miss. <laughs> I'm bricked up. I'm ready to lay a big old brick. I'm ready to lay a big old brick. Ready to lay a big old brick. Ready to lay a brick. Oh my goodness. I hope it doesn't. I hope it's not brick shaped. That would be very Oof. unpleasant if it was brick shaped. Them edges. Um, Maybe he misspelled what bricked up. The problem is, I'm trying to figure out what the word would be. <laughs> yeah. Trying to figure out what would be the word. I've been looking forward to this part two, take two. Nice. Yes, so we are. The uh, second part of this big old journey. EFAP's Vi Violet Night for Christmas. I would, it's just not out. It's not out yet, so. But it's in, in theaters, but we can't exactly turn that into an EFAP movie, you know. But perhaps next Christmas. Maybe. Because... Chat doesn't have all their soul bits. Aw. Hey guys, same thing I said about the Last of Us 2 streams. I've never played a single God of War game, but I'm totally engaged when you guys go over games. Also, I totally dig the new format. Oh, that's good to hear. I do hope that people nice. who have no context for the stories we cover get enough context to understand them, you know? I hope that's, so too. Because yeah, um, I went into Ragnarok with not too much context. You'd show me stuff you'd shown me stuff from 2018. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part I went in not really knowing too much. So, I got a great deal out of the story and the characters, even with my very limited amount of context. Uh, thank you guys for entertaining while I am at the hospital with a massive hole in my neck. Oh no. Well, since you typed that out, I assume you're, uh, you're making it, you're alright. Hang in there, sir, whatever may be happening. Hope it's not too massive of a hole. Whatever it is that's going on there. Any thoughts on Home Alone 3? It's my favorite Home Alone because it was the first one I watched with my grandpa. I can't even know if I've seen Home Alone 3. I'm trying to think of what it is. I don't know if I've seen Home, Home Alone 3 either. Three. I've seen 1 and 2 for sure, but yeah. uh, I don't know about 3. Home, let me... Uh, let me Maybe the cover. Because um, they made a bunch of Home Alone movies, didn't they? Like, there's... Home like Alone 3, 1997... Um, 
Who's in it? Scarlett Johansson, David oh. Thornton, Haviland Morris, Alex D. Linz. Hmm. But, but this is like, I guess this is not. Well, I mean, it was written and produced by John Hughes, directed by Raha Gosnell. Raja Gosnell, maybe. Um, mixed reviews. Doesn't look like we have. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I, I guess we got a new kid. It's not the McAllisters anymore. A uh, Peter plot is Peter Biopra, Alice Ribbons, Burton Jernigan, and Earl Unger are four un. Four internationally wanted criminals who work for a terrorist organization. Yeah, I, I don't oh, no. think I've seen that one. I think I only saw oh, one. My I've stories. definitely not seen it. I've got zero memories of this. Oh, in Silicon Valley, California, they steal a $10 million missile cloaking microchip and hide it inside a remote controlled toy car to sneak it past security at San Fran International Airport. However, a luggage mix up causes a Chicago bound elderly passenger named Miss Hess to inadvertently take the thieves' bag containing the car. I have seen this. I have when I was a young lad. I I I have uh, memories, particularly of specifically the terrorist guy when he learns that the toy car is bound for Chicago. He says, "We are going to Chicago," and then it cuts to another scene. But I I remember very little about this, but I have seen it. Yes, interesting. Any... I think the name of the kid is, um, I don't know, Alec, I don't even know. Who the fuck is it? Alex Pruitt and Scarlett Johansson plays Molly Pruitt, who I Pruitt. assume is That's the, the name mother. of the guy in Midnight Mass, the Reverend guy. Priestman ah. Pruitt. Yeah, my second grade teacher in school, her name is Miss Pruitt. Oh. Weird that I remember that. Also, y'all watching Cocaine Bear? Yeah, maybe. I do that. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Devil Fruit of the Week. This is the one again you gotta sacrifice swimming for. The Beast Beast Fruit, which allows the user to generate and manipulate biscuits at will. Fucking yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Generate them? I can solve world hunger. Or at least close to it. <laughs> I guess the world's gonna have to eat biscuits, but I don't know. There's gotta be... Imagine. Imagine. Imagine that power. Also, manipulate the biscuits. Well, that means like tele telekinetic, but with biscuits. Biscuit kinesis. Okay, biscuit with that. dough. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, what would it be? Dough be. Yeah, I don't know. I have to. I have to think on it. Yes, I basically. I can't see any downside to this, really. Uh, Hugen and Mune and thought and memory. Is that what they mean? I do not know. Sure, they mean something. Theories on what's behind the rift. Could it be us? I don't think they would go for that. I could believe that it's like pure knowledge. I just don't know how that would manifest if, if an entity was to absorb it, you know? What does it mean to have all knowledge? I wonder how that, how that would go. But Because uh, I have a feeling that's going to come back. Whatever that rift led to, there's probably going to be more to that in the future games. Like... Every it would be interesting if every pantheon or every culture kind of had their their own tear or the tears were kind of like the orbs in amnesia where like yeah. every like multiple civilizations are aware of them and what they do with them is, you know, what they do with them. But they're almost like this universal kind of mysterious thing that different cultures can get a hold of. So maybe this rift into ultimate truth is something that you know, in, in different realms, worlds, and dimensions can be accessed potentially by people. I think that um, it's worthwhile considering that with Odin and Zeus being dead, that that could cause something. Like, uh, Yeah. Uh, in that world, potentially. Like, those guys were holding something back, or something didn't happen because they were alive, and that or they had a project that they were working on together that is now, you know, something that's going on. There's lots of things you could do with the fact that two of the, the biggest gods of all time in terms of culture are, are dead. Uh, Yon was a busy guy, yeah. 
Wow, an EFAP episode and the plushies on my birthday? This is a good day. Thanks for all the content, guys, and hi, Rags. Hello, hello. Uh, after 200, I started a start-to-finish EFAP binge, and thank God for two times speed and 12-hour shifts, but now y'all sound blasted at normal speed. Woo! Can't, can't watch because I'm not done with Ragnarok yet. I, I've had that before when I've listened to something for a long time on times two and then it goes to times one and for a moment. What's wrong with you? Yeah, I'm like, why are you guys talking like in slow motion? What's going on? Uh, Odin lucky no one looked for Tyr in his room, no? So the way it would have to work is that nobody goes into the broom closet. The thing that Odin is relying on is that he's like, I've been tortured for many, many years. I just, please, when I go in here, please just leave me the fuck alone. And the way that they get his attention is they'll knock the door and ask him to come out. So, um, you could Which say... Which Mugen might be able to, uh, relay to Odin, who knows. Yeah, like, as soon as there's a chance was. of them doing anything, it might be the, uh, it would be Munin at that point would, would call for Odin. Um, I think you can argue there's some level of luck to it, but I would say it's still in the more likely camp that nobody was going to just burst in there suddenly. And if and if they open it up and he's nowhere to be found, that's not like an unsalvageable situation. Yeah, he has to then port back he's in like, somewhere I was, else and be like, I was just walking around. I was, I was wandering around Yggdrasil, you know, that sort of thing. I think a cool detail is that uh, when you find him in um, Svartalfheim, if you look around the room, you can find a couple of uh, raven feathers. Lol. Susan be like, great bleeding fuck, you freed Ra. <laughs> Susan feels that way about a lot of people. Uh, Sindri doesn't respect Atreus' right to bear arms. I think he's, he he's cool with him having bear arms. It's just when you... Yeah. Nice joke, though. Yeah. I really enjoyed how Loki has some secret sly trickster here or there, but causes a lot of chaos, often unintentionally, like with Garm. Yeah, they tried to obviously crank the Loki elements in his personality. There's, he wasn't called Loki for no reason. Not the god of wisdom. Heimdall constantly has to hear what they think of him. If he has to put up with them, he probably thinks it's only fair that they put up with him. Yeah, I, I think that there's a reason he's the way that he is, to do with his abilities. It's a shame, because if he was... You know, if he was a really nice person, people would probably be really nice to him. But I think because he is, is I think he's grown naturally cynical as a person. When he behaves that way in front of other people, they have a negative impression of him. And so it kind of feeds in on himself. Hello, Mola, Fringy, and Rags. Hello. Hi. Receive my awesome Mola and Fringy plushies, eagerly awaiting Rags next. I'll tune back in once I finish Ragnarok. Oh, awesome. Yeah, Ooh. I got them too. They look uh they look really good. Um as I th I, I I think the rags ones will be arriving what? Like probably weeks from now, right? Early? Yeah, I think uh early January something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head though, so It's funny to hear you praise the Wrath's Path introduction when I think it's the worst time to do it. Having a big single target burst move Introduced during a huge horde battle seems counterintuitive. I think it'd work better during the Heimdall fight. The Wrath's Path introduction. Oh, they're talking about um, the form of rage mode where you can have the uh, rage drain for like a boosted attack. You're say they're saying, I think that's the worst time to do it. Having a big single target burst move introduced during a horde fight seems counterintuitive. Um... The thing about it is, it doesn't, like, wipe out one huge target in the same... Like, it doesn't... It wouldn't do that for, like, any of the mini-bosses. It just does a significant chunk of damage, but it does instantly wipe out most of your average mobs. So I think it, it makes a lot of sense they introduced it there. Uh, and it's, they definitely don't want to introduce it as late as, like, the Heimdall fight, I think. That's, uh... You're running out of time at that point, right? In terms of letting people use it in the story. But um, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I can I can understand why why you'd make that argument. I think it's kind of fair. Um. Oh, that's a shame. Zero punctuation was not all that fond of the new God of War. Sad face. Well, that's, uh, 
I haven't seen his review. Me neither. But uh, I often find myself either agreeing or disagreeing with him here and there. You never know. Respect for the man for uh, going for this long, you know? Absolutely. Super. He's, he's a very talented person. Uh, how would you rank the God of War games? Um, I think it's been said before. Obviously, Rags and Fringy can't really answer in terms of ranking all of them. Um, for me, it's it's as they were released. My favorites from least to most is one, two, three, four, five. Ending my playing the PSP games and Ascension, which I think I might do when uh, Metal comes out. A language that Kratos killed personally. Oh, Greek? Kind of. I mean, there's still plenty of people who speak it left. Yeah, the nature of its existence is, I suppose, up in the air in terms of it, yeah. Well, uh, like, the, what happens at the end of God of War 3 is that all of the people who are left are all, like, screaming and running around. The implication, of course, being that this is a horrible place to be, but they are alive. And Athena's yeah. planning to make the, the place better, so... It's probably actually really difficult to wipe out a whole, like, culture. You yeah. gotta get everyone. Gotta get them all. It's hard to do. People don't That's generally want to die, so they'll try not to die. Why did the mask go to hell if the peace isn't there? So they went to Helheim because of a mistranslation, and then it pointed them to Garm, I think we're supposed to assume, because it attunes to the goals of the user, uh, and then a the user has to be a giant, question mark, and uh, Atreus senses like larger creatures that are in pain slash suffering whenever he goes to any of these realms. Did it with the Hafgufa, and uh, I think there was another example, right? Um, I don't know which realm it would be, but I'd have to look around. But yeah, obviously, it is precedent of a sort. I think that is the interpretation we're supposed to go with. There's, there's nothing overt for it, I don't think. There is a Polish movie, Oduach Takich Zdrakogzde, The Two Who Stole the Moon, made in 1962. Two, bleh, two twin brothers decide to steal the moon and sell it so they don't need to ever work. Nice. I wonder how much a moon's worth. Some Probably moons are definitely worth more than others. Some moons are great. Some moons are shit. Like Pandora, that's a moon, right? I just, I'm still stuck on the healing it part. Do you need like a net? Would a net do it? I don't know if she'd okay. do it, but maybe you could use like, um, like what, what did Gru do? He used a shrink ray, right? Was it Gru that did it or Gru's villain in the, in the, I don't remember anymore. Because he's, uh, he's that guy, right? The one that's in like a yeah, yeah, like the the Edna Mode looking dude. Yeah, um, I don't. I he wanted he's he he was really obsessed with the freeze ray, wasn't he? Oh yeah, I think so. You're right. But I think Gru was gonna well, he he needed did... to shrink it. No wait, Gru used the freeze ray, didn't he? In the beginning, when he he's, he wants to get in front of the queue at like the Starbucks or whatever, and he freezes. Oh yeah, yeah, people. yeah. I haven't seen that movie in so freeze long. Right. I can't freeze right. I think that's the joke. Yeah, I haven't seen it in ages. I remember liking it, but mm -hmm. it became an abomination, as far as I'm aware. Yes, like many things that just keep going and going. I'm sort of a Norse mythology expert myself, Spider Man. A lot of them popping up, yeah. Yeah, a lot of them. Earlier, before Kratos talks about slipping back into his old ways, then delivers the most violent kill to an enemy since OG God of War. Get wrecked, Heimdall. That's the thing, man. I saw a lot of people saying it was weird that he thought... It was just like, a, I guess, the gore aspect, because a lot of people said like that, that kill on Heimdall was a little more creepy than any other kill Kratos has had. Yeah, it was very personal and up close, and his face was fucked up, and, you know, his last words were calling him a monster, and... Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't really quick. It was, you know, it's strangling him essentially, and Mimir compelling him not to in the background. Brother, brother, Don't this isn't do who you want to be. Oof, good stuff. Uh, Heimdall may be a shallow oh, yeah. character, but he's so important in the story. Like I said, I wouldn't. I don't know think him he's shallow. shallow. No. no, I don't think he's shallow. He doesn't have as much uh, time as a lot of other characters, but in the time that they have, they've created somebody who I understand and who I don't think is one dimensional. We saw it. It was that battle does a lot of work to emphasize his flaws. His flaws more so than just being an arrogant asshole, right? Like where That's it all the thing comes about from. Dimensions, right? Um, 
It's like, what does that even refer to? It's just like, how many modes of operation does the character have, and what do they care about, and how can they conflict? And so it's like, what do we get at first? It's like, arrogant asshole who thinks he knows everything. It's like, all right, mode one, what else we got? It's like, we already have mode two, where he's an arrogant asshole who thinks he knows better than everybody to everyone except Odin. When it's Odin, he shows massive respect and submits to anything Odin says. It's like, oh, that's mm. kind of interesting. And then, of course, like, um, having him be like, oh, please don't kill me, oh, no, like, like, this is like, oh, 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 this is, this is adding to it, because the arrogance is, is almost unfounded, but the second he realizes that, uh, it's actually through pity, it's like, th there's loads yeah. of things getting added on, but I think, yeah, it makes him, it makes him more complicated than one note, and, um... Well, I think it's, it's pretty straightforward, when he says, you do not get to decide my fate, I feel like that line basically defines him, like, pretty clearly, this is, this is his core... He sees all and he knows how other people act and he believes that he is totally in control and the notion that he isn't is unacceptable. And consequently, it actually results in his death. Yeah. He could have walked away. Like, it's, 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 all, it's all very ironic, right? You think you get to walk away. That's not how this works. It's like, it is. Kratos is giving you an opportunity to walk away, but you can't see that. You refuse to accept it. And then, yeah, he gets himself killed. Like, basically. Essentially. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and I think Mamiya knew already, right? I don't think a warning's going to cut it. Yeah, he knows. That, well, because he knows better, but yeah. It's just such an interesting dynamic that this guy who sees all and knows all and is, like, incredibly in control of situations because of that is hyper-insecure the moment that that gets challenged. He's just not used to it. And, like, to me, that's dimensions. Yeah. Um, like I said, he's, he's, <clears throat> he's nowhere near as complicated as, like, Kratos, Freya, Odin, but he's still got, he's still got depth and what little time we get with him. That's what's so impressive about the, uh, about the writing in the game, is that even in very small moments with, uh, with characters, you just get the sense. It's kind of like, you know, it's like the, the iceberg theory, right, for writing, where even though you have, you know, not a whole lot of information, if it's written well, it just sort of, uh, conveys a lot more information beneath the surface. It feels like it's built on top of something that you haven't seen, but that you can infer. Good stuff. Absolutely. Uh, Y'all didn't mention, with the spear, Kratos now controls all the elements. Fire, blades, ice, axe, earth with melee, and now wind with the spear. That's, a way That's to kind of interesting. It. I hadn't thought of it that, that Don't way. forget about heart. I, um, I, if they make a new game, I am genuinely going to be curious which of the weapons they're going to drop, if any, because all of them are Ooh, so fucking yeah. great. Well, because, I mean, he's got to, if he goes to Egypt, he's got to get some Egyptian weapon. That's the thing, I wonder if they'll they'll just commit now and be like, right, we're going to have these three weapons and we're going to add more. And then we're going to add one more, you know? And Until then he gets an old... Involved. Yeah, Doom style. The thing is, like, I can't see... Like, if you just drop the drop near spear, it's like, really? That nah, thing is so good, I, I want to keep, keep the spear. It's too personal. If there's anything that I would drop, I would get rid of the axe. Is the, um, I think there's reason behind that being that it's the Norse weapon, and if he moves on from the Norse land, it's like I can see him. Well, so you know, so not it's it not a, it's not a thing. It was a begrudging letting that one go because I'd want him to keep them all. Because what I like is that um, it feels like each of those weapons. Not only do they fill a clear slot in terms of their utility, but narratively, you've got the Norse weapon that belonged to his wife. Then you've got his old Greek weapons, and then you've got Dropnir, which is a combination of the both. It's a Spartan spear, but it's made using an el you know an aspect of Norse mythology. Yeah. It's really awesome. Um, and if I you want to keep adding on, that. he's a god of war. Makes sense that he has a whole bunch of weapons. Yeah, and the, the problem is it's just it's a matter of uh, and you design the, it and balance it in a good way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it can get to a point where the more weapons you add, the uh, <laughs> the harder it gets to make each of them feel unique, and the harder it gets to balance it all. Yeah, you want to have maybe weapons be more role oriented yeah we, we don't um, want to do well we want to do the thing that halo does right compared to call of duty where each weapon in the halo sandbox uh is functionally distinct from the other like yeah, even you when give you your like for like the smg isn't quite the same as the assault rifle even though they're both fully automatic medium range weapons you know the yeah, smg this... is a little bit more short range and the uh the the assault rifle is medium range and is kind of the shallow clip is specifically designed to tie into like melee attacks, yeah, whereas the SMG so is more of a dual wield weapon. 
you got your blades of chaos, which are crowd <laughs> control with lots of cleave to them. Yeah, AOE, fast uh, AOE, AOE, and then you have the axe your weapon, is heavy hitter. You know, yeah, probably your you probably want your your spear could be single target damage for the most part because uh, it's a spear you stab with it. Um, and it's got some range to it as well. Maybe the axe has got a lot of crowd control associated with it. Um, you know, it's a a general all-purpose thing that's good at keeping enemies stunned or slowed down, things of that nature. You, there's a lot of options that you could explore. I feel like, um, I, well, the, the problem is that, well, it's not really a problem, I guess. Drop near kind of slots into the uh, projectile weapon slot pretty well. Because all I was saying is, yeah. like, maybe the next one's Throwing projectile, but... Magic of it. I don't know. It might be. It it just gets harder to to carve yeah. out like a a niche. But that's something that, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what what would be the Egyptian weapon though if they picked one that was like a quintessentially well, the Egyptian of weapon. Of course, had the kopesh. Uh, right. They had that's, uh, yeah. generally they had maces were big in, in Egypt. Generally, the the mace was a symbol of authority. Oftentimes, a pharaoh or a general would be depicted with a mace. Um, you know, a good bludgeoning weapon. Uh, you've got, of course, spears, bows and arrows, um, you know, and all kinds of I feel of, like it know, would be the Kopesh, be... right? Surely. That, it's the that most feels... iconic. Yeah. Um, but the problem is that it's essentially a sword axe. It's a sword. Uh, but maybe that's the nature of it, right? The axe is, the axe is very much an axe. Maybe the sword slots into the middle ground between the blades of chaos and the um and the and the axe, and that it's like it's it's kind of like the happy middle ground. It's stronger than the blades of chaos, but it's faster than the axe. It maybe that's to... the way it works. Maybe I mean it's tough. Maybe to... you tie it into melee combat, right? Like the sword and the axe together. It, it's hmm. possible that the instead of maybe maybe a a runic based magic system we go with some like instead of egyptian weapons being given to you maybe, it's maybe they could magic, be tied yeah. into the like to the rage modes or your special abilities that you activate that's when the egyptian stuff comes out mm. um maybe in you you maybe a god or goddess gives you a blessing of some kind and you could summon their power for a short time um or you just instead of saying you know we already have essentially two sword like weapons you have, you, you give them the mace, you give them the, the, the single target, big anti-armor, um, you know, clobber and weapon. Uh, but th there's a lot of options to do. They have so much to work with and there's so many things that you could do with it. They mentioned this boat in Helheim in the last game. Uh, you talking about the boat we use in the first the 2018 game? Oh, the the flying boat? Yeah. Or are they talking about the fact that we're on a boat that was rigged up with the, uh, to float? Or the, yeah, they, the... maybe they're talking about how we referenced Freya's floaty boat in the previous game. Like, that's possible. I, right. I remember that. Uh, hmm. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I can't quite recall, but it wouldn't surprise me. Chad Bierger. Yeah, he... Yeah, he is. Sacrificial... So, oh, about Odin not sending everyone he has to get Heimdall home, or at least take the key to Asgard off him since he knows Kratos wants to kill him? I th I don't know that he has any concern, really, that he actually would kill Heimdall, and he probably told Heimdall not to uh, do X, Y, or Z, but like at that point, it's just Heimdall's doing what Heimdall wants to do. I think I, I don't know how that would, that would work, right? Because we know that Tia knows that Kratos intends to kill Heimdall, does Odin then say, "Hey Heimdall, one of my best warriors, don't, don't what exactly, you know? Don't." All right, I've just seen something that's just so you know how like a couple of days ago it was the fifth year anniversary of the Last Jedi. Uh huh. <laughs> I've seen I've seen a a, a Twitter thread um, where someone's like that they're, they're praising the Holdo maneuver. They said three mm. stories came together in an explosion. It's like. <laughs> yeah, An explosion I guess is did. a good way to uh, describe <laughs> that. Yeah, they did. <laughs> so, it's just it really funny, isn't it? Because it's involved. like that's one way to look at it. <laughs> that's one way to look at it. Is like ah, uh, the three stories have you know coalesced into one epic moment that destroyed everything. It's amazing. Five years Almost ago, now. yeah. 
You don't see as much loud praise for that film, though. It's kind of no, funny. you really don't. But you see that with a lot of things, right? Like who is uh, who's still talking about whatever the what were the more praised Marvel projects of the year? Well, Moon Knight, the sentiment turned on that one. I guess Shang Chi's one that didn't really get turned on as much, but I mean, people have been shitting on Simu Liu a lot lately. So yeah, he's a maybe. Uh... maybe the... He's, 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 well, pretty cringe. Uh, he's pretty cringe on social media. The thing media. that he, because they put the, the trailer out for the new Barbie movie, which he's in, and I think he tweeted something like, just, I gotta the find it. The Tarantino um, thing? It was related to the Tarantino thing, or at least that's all that anybody could see based on, let me see. He said, it's all just formulaic superhero movies nowadays, upside down smiley face. And yeah, of course, it's like, dude, like, get over it. <laughs> like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, chill. But when, I mean, that, that would be an example, right? Like, veteran who, who would... directors are, are sort of shitting on the industry. You was like an up-and-coming actor shitting on him back. It's just, it just looks awful. Uh, yeah, especially when Shang-Chi... I guess the sentiment did kind of... Because people started clowning on that for like the visual effects, like in that final battle, how it's just this big grey, like brownish grey space, like on a cave, like next to a cliff. Where this fight is happening and it all just doesn't look real at all. But I mean, that was one of the ones that people were praising more so than the others. But like, at what point, how often is somebody in, you know, let's say in 2025, just going to be like, do you want to rewatch Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings? Like, who's going to just do that? Including the people who said it was good. No one's going to do that. Because it's all disposable. People watch it and then they consume it and then they have thoughts on it at the time. But then it doesn't have any enduring legacy. It's just gone and forgotten. But people still rewatch Iron Man. I don't know. We're we're in an era of disposable entertainment. It's really lame. I yeah. saw that there was uh on Twitter it was trending like hashtag fire James Gunn. Jeez, really? Yeah. He's only just started. <laughs> it's it's his first month on the job. You can yeah, but they you know there's <laughs> all those decisions like Henry Cavill and stuff like that. That's, that's why they want to go. Yeah. On. Well yeah, that's uh but I mean in a certain sense that's kind of like brave, isn't it? as a choice to make, especially if you believe that you're taking things in the right direction. Uh, but yeah, as for why didn't Odin basically, like, I don't know, put Heimdall under ultimate protection, um, I'm not sure that, that, that Heimdall would need it. He's, like, kind of amazing, and uh, as they said, his reputation is unkillable. I'm not sure what, what it would look like, right? Odin goes back to Asgard and says, hey, Heimdall, they, they want to kill you. I think Heimdall would be like, well, I'm going to kill them. I think it's it's kind of that simple, and obviously that's what's happening in uh, Vanaheim. He's like he uh, first of all he's happy to kill both Freya and Kratos, and I, I don't blame him for his confidence, right? Like not only is he an arrogant prick, but he's like never been scratched by anyone. Uh, gonna make you feel invincible. Yeah, he hasn't even been touched. You don't think you'd have to even worry about him. Um, how is it we have a mask and Loki and no reference to the Jim Carrey movie Mask? Very true. Sorry. It's, it's the one the thing mask. that God of War Ragnarok needed one to thing push it into true to greatness. Dude, that, that movie is... Pr I remember enjoying that movie a lot, The Mask. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a classic. And, the, and then they made Son of the Mask, which was uh, Horrible not so from what good. I understand, yeah. I love it when Kratos asks Loki about the mask and shows shows he has faith in him. He shows that in several moments in the game. Yeah, I mean, because because of course the one that was more negative was him screaming "boy," but then standing there to let Atreus make the choice. Yeah, and fucking then right Dumbo the was like, "Wow, Kratos still hasn't caught up to him." It's like he's obviously like doing this is, on purpose. He's giving him a choice. He's letting him make the choice. And then, of course, at the end, the fact that he's more, much more comfortable just saying, this is your choice. Because it's basically a recognition by Kratos that it's like, this is Atreus' story right now. What's happening here? He needs to make the choice. Thing, people have been like, wow, he's not even the protagonist in his own game. It's like, they're both the protagonists. They're, like two. Protagonist. Yeah. they're just different stories that they're having. Atreus is much more so the protagonist of, like, the broader Norse, like, adventure, essentially. Like, in terms of tying directly into Ragnarok. But, I mean, Kratos is too, because he's the general who leads the army to war in Ragnarok. He makes most of the... Yeah, that, that montage wasn't there for no reason. It's like he makes most of the decisions in the game. He makes tons of decisions, yeah. 
Like, I mean, I, of course, we've talked about active, passive. Like, Kratos is not a passive character. He is very active. Nor is he a pacifist. No, he goes to war. <laughs> <laughs> like, <I don't> <laughs> the <laughs> game fights, is all about, like, how he's desperate to avoid war, but keeps he keeps finding reason war, not to. He doesn't want war, but he'll to. fight it. He'll, he'll fight if he... It's like he said in his speech, I didn't want this war. He's right. He didn't want it, but he'll, he'll fight if he needs to. Yep. Hello there. I've never played God of War, and I don't know if I will in the future. Here's some money. Oh, thank you. Oh, nice. F for Brock, God of the Scroat. Yeah. Scroat God. Feel it in my scroat. When I freed Tia from the super easy prison, I suspected that either the game was badly written because of all the recent story failures, or that that wasn't Tia. I'm so glad God of War was amazing. Like I said, man, I think that's one of the first things I said when, when it was revealed. I was like, Fuck, that makes sense now. I was going to complain yep. about it, but there you go. Uh, Odin played on Mamiya's guilt. Definitely did. Uh, same for Freya as well. This, uh, All three of them see each other in themselves, right? Like what they've had done to them by Odin. And so there's less pressure to grill uh, Tyr on his claims. But Brock doesn't give a shit. Brock doesn't care what you've been through. He's going he's gonna to be pointing out your bullshit. Pretty consistent about him. Brock is why critical thinking is valuable IRL. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, keep your brain running no matter what, and you'll be surprised what you can find. Stuff is just like, wait a minute, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Poor Brock, I felt that one in my scroat. Yep. Scroat. When Brock died, I ran through the rest of the game mad as fuck, ready to kill Odin. Yeah, Yep. that was the point where I, uh, uh, I was now like, Now it's yeah. personal go into the credits now, boy. So I was like, I'm just playing this until I see the end. You know, Anubis is the god of lost souls. Like I said, there's a way to get Sindri into the future narrative that it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you pretty much have free reign to uh, do anything, of course, but you pretty much have free reign in the realm of appropriateness, where as long as Anubis is essentially something to do with death, the realm of the dead, passing on to the death, the process of dying, learning to learning to prepare for moving on to the next like, world uh, then it'll be it'll be fine there's a whole bunch of stuff to do there there's a lot to latch onto with philosophy right like it's a common thing that gets brought up in stoicism essentially that like learning to live means learning how to die well essentially you know learning how to be prepared for the inevitable that's the thing i don't it's even know what, um what kind of payoff you do there if you did have it be that sindri was searching out anubis to bring back brock it's like do you just go with like he needs to learn to let go or do you have it be that he actually basically sacrifices himself to bring brock back or something you know you, there's a lot of different mm. directions you got you options know. and you could and they would all lead to different roads thematically as well <clears throat> it's kind of the cool thing when you've written a story well is that when you want to go further, as long as you have the similar mindset when you're creating the prior story, you just see that there are so many opportunities that you've left available to you, you know, yeah. in terms of telling a story. It's good stuff. Metal plushie? I guess if you would like to do one, it's uh, not an impossibility. It's going to be whether yeah, or not he thinks him. it can be funded and stuff. A complicated I... situation. Yeah. But if it, if it happens, you we will be the first to, well, I guess second, to let you know. Maybe even <laughs> first. We let you know before he does. Maybe first. I miss you guys Maybe watching... Maybe steal his likeness. Oh, Make God. Make a plushie out of it. This one's kind of funny to think about now. I miss you guys yeah. watching videos and responding to them, but this is close enough. I like the coverage of games since it avoids most copyright. <laughs> oh, well, if you wanted to see us responding to stuff, you got a double dose of fucking cringe. <laughs> like... That's what the reason uh, he yeah. it. Yeah, god damn. Uh, I enjoy when you cover good content. Do it more to balance it out. And more gaming content. Merry Christmas. Also, fuck you, YouTube. Notify me better. More autism. Love you. Um, I mean, this is the kind of thing. We don't really go by, like, how much negative stuff have we done. It's time for a positive. Or how much movies have we done. Time for gaming. As you can tell, it's pretty much just about what's coming out and what we're interested in. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. So, um... I can understand that you like these ones more than other ones or whatever, but, you know, it's just kind of... The main thing we're gunning for is what we're all passionately invested in chatting about. Yes. And yet he honored it. Ref references Loki's talk with Odin in Asgard, a talk that Tia should not be caught up on. Um... 
the the whole peace aspect saying yet he honored it is probably referring to how Odin hasn't overtly attacked them. Yeah, that would be yeah, my that's of how that would be red if you didn't know who he was. And you could push back and say the Einherjar have attacked us. You're like, well, we're in we're going to places there, but like Odin himself has not. Has not come after them. Stabbed yeah. you with his big old spear. We built a wall and made the giants pay for it. Clearly a woke nice. game, Kappa. Very oh, yeah. true. Odin, we make a good team, don't we? Thor, tell that to Baldur's snapped neck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get old. That's a good that one. will never get old. <laughs> Uh, the haze in the end battle, literally the fog of war, adds so much to the atmosphere. It's uh, it's the soundtrack for me, man. That's what makes oh, yeah. makes that whole ending. It's such a great track for setting the mood. I love it. Uh, right there, she's standing. Atreus should see her. Um, if you're talking about when Thrude sort of surprises him. It's the he climbs up, he turns around to to help Sindri up, and then he turns around, and then she's there. So I think there's room to argue she was, uh, you know, she came at him when he didn't see her. I'd have to I'm see it again though. Sorry, maybe. I, I'm still thinking about that line. Zod snap neck. That's <laughs> just like hey. it's so. It's well, he's uh, just kind so of his vision. He's coming out with his first movie soon, isn't he? Uh, oh, I suppose so. Yeah. I think I don't know if he's finished filming it or not yet, but. I mean, but oh, because he's yeah, he raised like, didn't he raise a shit ton of money for it, like over a million? Or uh, I think so. Yeah, for uh, for like his big feature film, that's gonna be something. Well, sure I'm sure that he would have spent more time working on that script than on the. I uh, sure fucking. I hope think. So. I think he, <laughs> Well, I'm pretty sure that when it when it all uh, got him in trouble with people, he repeatedly was emphasizing that he wrote it in 20 minutes, which I don't. I don't believe. Um, I don't. I don't know that you can write that much in 20 minutes. Like you could if you were just blazing forward, but like I'm pretty sure that. But at why the time, would you even putting out? Who would, would release you that in 20 minutes? when you've blazed well, in 20 minutes? You know what I mean? Like, so, so, here's, well, so here's the awkward part. I distinctly remember that people had pointed out that in like streams that he had done around that time, he had like mentioned specifically the, the Zod snap neckline, like before he had published it, you know? Like that it wasn't, like that that was actually a line that he had identified. I could be wrong, but I feel like I, I, that, that just sounds familiar to me that like, there were actually streams where he was talking about that film, and he had he had used the line "Zod snap neck" before he had posted the screenplay, which indicates that he had actually thought about it for a little while longer than twenty minutes, which is kind of amusing. Yeah, because like "Zod snap neck" is is uh that's like a look. I'd give I'd give it to you as a first draft line. You know, sometimes you got some clunky lines, <laughs> but like if that was one that you thought was really cool beforehand, damn. <laughs> It's just funny. Zod snap neck. It's so awkward. <laughs> Tell it to a broken neck. Like, what does that mean? Good for him. <laughs> that, that, that he had well, yeah, I mean, courage he's to write that now, down. Right? So, so, I guess in you, long you term, admire right, the it, all, it all panned out. Well, I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool to go out there and make stuff, ultimately. Yeah, it is. Uh, there is legitimately something admirable about it. Even if the uh, even if the talent well, or regardless the, of what the outcome of the, of the yeah like the fact that you actually did bad it. work is yeah, yeah exactly doing the work yeah even Sif's decision at the end is consistent with her love of her family and past decisions also step on me mommy Sif oh my um yeah I mean yeah like I like I guess we had inadvertently talked about earlier uh, oh, yeah. she yeah. has a very strong tie to her family. My only so, complaint yeah. is that Thor died. I'd love to see him redeem himself to be better. Imagine a Kratos and Thor broship. Obviously, his death. Yeah, that's why it's a bad. tragedy. Yeah, that's why a it's a tragedy. Um, and you know, you can what you can draw from it as inspiration is like, don't wait for someone to tell you to change. Make that decision yourself. Don't but, wait for someone to stab you in the hand after they've <laughs> thrown an axe at your gut. Um. But yeah, that, that's what I mean. I like that they provide lots of different endings and pathways for different characters that regard a similar point. Often what you do is get that theme nice and strong. 
How did Odin know Groa's mural prophecy that led to the boys to search for Tyr in Muspelheim? Does Odin get info beamed from the Green Ravens? Implications. How did he know His Groa's... ability to... Say again? I'm, I'm curious about the question. Odin know about Groa's mural prophecy that led to the boys' search for Tyr in Muspelheim? Well, so he knew about all the shrines. Um... Are you, oh, so wait, are you asking... I'm 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 not quite clear on what the question is here. They didn't search for Tyr in Muspelheim. Search for him in Svartalfheim. I got a mix up too. How did Odin know Groa's mule prophecy that led the boys to search for Tyr in Muspelheim? Or like the the one that they I found think... in Midgard? Or I the think one that the he question showed. is, how did Odin know where to place fake tier? Um, and my assumption for that would be that he's probably got a plan for the likely realms that they would search. I think uh, Svadalfheim was just a really good bet anyway, because it was under complete control of the Aesir. And you can't get, right. they couldn't get to Asgard. It's not going to be in Niflheim or Muspelheim. Uh, Mamiya says there's a little influence that he has over the primordial realms. Obviously, it could have been in Midgard and some other places, but I think at that point, wherever they ended up looking for him, Odin could likely set it up ahead of them. Um, yeah, I mean, he can get around pretty quick. And then, of course, you got Durlin. Uh, is he sends them right, in exactly. that direction? As soon as he's done that, it's like, well, they're probably going to be heading that way. Well, that's probably part of it, right? He, he would have told Durlin to do that, and he did. Yeah, and then it's like, okay, they're on the path. Get yeah. over there. If I may, Mola, what about the noose? I find it odd that Odin would leave that around in Midgard where Freya is after she taught him magic. Still cool. Um, I feel like we didn't get quite enough information on... Like, they tell you about it. He hanged himself for nine days and nine nights or whatever as part of Thank some you, magical thing to... Uh, sorry? Thank you for saying hanged and not hung. It no is problem. hanged. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the correct it's way It's the thing a lot it. of people think, yeah. <laughs> Uh, like, I'm hung, but I'm not hanged. It's an important distinction. Uh, yeah, uh, so, so we don't really have enough on that. That item was imbued with some kind of magic, but he also didn't, like, it got left behind, I guess? He didn't keep it? Because he uses it to power up his uh, staff at the end of the game. So I guess it went somewhere? Because uh, it was from Yggdrasil that he hanged himself, I think, as well. So, I, yeah, th we don't really get a lot of information on exactly what's going on with all of that. Um, but nothing that necessarily contradicts. It's just, uh, vague. Not enough information, yeah. And thus, Loki's mask traveled the multiverse until it was discovered by Jim Carrey. Yeah. How great. Freya was played by Mike from Until Dawn. I don't even remember wow. which one Mike from Until Dawn is. <laughs> but I think enough. he was, like, the main wow. male guy. Because there was Hayden Penetier's name, I think. She was, like, the main. And then I think he was the next one. Huh. Right. Uh, the J-liked tweet of the day is, People who claim not to care about politics are Judy conservatives who are pretending not to get laid. Pretending not to be to get laid. So people who claim they don't care about politics are trying to come across that way to get laid. I see. I mean, I think... Interesting opinion. I think there are people who legitimately do not care about politics, though. I think a there lot of people, people don't, don't care about care. politics. There are a lot I of people who fucking hate part, politics people, and want to avoid I mean, like, it. Most people don't care that much. I mean, most people just don't vote. Unless when you convert politics into basically everything. If you say, like... Now, if your interest in the gaming industry is political to an extent. You'd be like, oh, okay, so everything <laughs> fine. I guess I care about politics then. Well, I mean, if if it's just like at your fingertips on Twitter as you browse the internet and something political pops up, you comment on it. That's one thing. But actually caring to the point that you're doing things or paying attention or staying informed, so that's a much smaller number. Yeah, everyone's going to have like a, a, a care flaw, so to speak. It, but it would be yeah, reasonable to so, say plenty of people want to move through their lives without really thinking about a lot of it. Yeah. This one just says, I cried. Don't even know what... Oh, the next one says, Dad of boy has become dad of man. So I assume that's about the... Uh, Reyes finds his the own ending. way. It says, here's the best part, happy Kratos. It, it is amazing. 
Yep, I I, I love that payoff. Multiverse of Madness has been awarded the best movie of 2022 at the PCAs, beating the Batman, Top Gun, Maverick, and more. What? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what can you do? <laughs> it's just like, oh well. What can you do? There you go. Uh, do you guys think Faye scenes are more like flashbacks or Kratos' brain distilling the knowledge Frey taught him? I prefer the latter interpretation. Combo. It's, 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 you've got lots of crazy things happening in them, right? And it's, it's change of clothing. Sometimes the environment is uh, changing while he's moving in and out of it. It's probably a memory that's being recontextualized in the form of a dream. Like, uh, no reason to think not of uh, that. But, but I think you're right that it's, um, he's, he's remembering these significant moments because they're coming into play significantly in his life now. Like, the advice is becoming very practically used. Uh, the evil is defeated. Hassan just got banned off Twitch for copyright infringement. Well, he'll be back. It's all right. <laughs> I think there's only going to be back. Yeah. They'll never, you know, they'll never, you know. Despite all he said and all he's done, they'll never get rid of him. Oh, because I cried again. Was Not the ending... Predators and the mural. I, so, <laughs> I, do, yeah. I do really love... That's my favorite. That's my favorite part of the game. Was the ending mural the original prophecy? I thought it was changed, supposedly done by Agraboda after Ragnarok to show Kratos changed his future, uh, his fate. Um, they do show the um, the sort of the mural itself. The first two pa panels are of a particular art style, and the third one changes significantly, and it looks a lot more like Agraboda's drawings. I think the implication wow. being that he has indeed changed his future. Uh, it wasn't that way the first time around, or, so, or rather, it wasn't going to be that way if he didn't absorb the lessons that he got. Because this thing, Faye was very motivated to to give him what he needed to put him on a different path, right? And a lot of it comes in the form of telling him some stuff to really, really think about, and then use as he approaches all the events he does in the two games. The game's so good, Rags will never play it not so good that I'll, it's so good that as, as if they're linked it's just I, I don't have a ps5 maybe one day you'll get by the time you fucking consider getting one the ps6 will come out yeah i just i'm i'm probably just not gonna buy a console because i just don't think i'll ever end up playing it got my hands full as it is when an animal is wounded it must stop the bleeding or it will die and this this is a distraction actual therapy thanks massives hi doggy hello there's a lot of very inspirational and meaningful lines that can help you out day to day. But same for a lot of the greatest media. It can be really helpful. This just says Andor. Well, perhaps in the future. Mola, would you consider making an unbridled praise? Presumably they're talking about God of War Ragnarok. It, would be, it wouldn't be an unbridled praise. It would be like a, a whole breakdown. There'd be so much to talk about. Take forever, but uh, hopefully the three EFAPs come in some form of a praise, I suppose. In keeping with today's theme, Hades 2 is woke because the main character is a woman. Ew. They allow them to be in games now? Disgusting. When will the madness end? I don't believe it. They should be ambient NPCs or vendors at most. I remember when uh, the Metroid series went woke. Well, like, Samus well, is a they... girl. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. So like, embarrassed for them. them. And yet, yeah. Lord Longbong <laughs> of Mewbshlington Abbey, is there any good chance of a Kong fap? Of Peter Jackson's oh. Long Kong? When there's less Ooh. going on? It'd be a movie fap for the ages. P.S. Oh, whoa, Wagsies. Riches for the good boy. Hello. You and thank what? you. I think so. That sounds like a... That sounds like a neat idea. Maybe when there's less going on than what's Maybe going on. Maybe when there's right less now. going on, yeah. Which is which is later. It's not now. Not now. What's going now. on now? I'm creating my first graphic novel. The premise is three children of the Mad Queen are banished from the first castle. They must redeem themselves by killing the prince in the second castle. Uh this is one of two, but I can't see any two of twos. Oh. Well, it's just an open-ended story. Who knows? 
Oh, one of them wants to go straight for the kill, the other wants to prevent a war from happening, the third is conflicted if the redemption is worth it. Okay. Well, sounds interesting. Best of luck. Go nuts. Graphic novels are pretty neat. E. Uh, Fringy, talk about elephants for three minutes. Um, I could give it a try, but I'm worried that I'd get some facts wrong. Something I do know is that ele uh, <laughs> elephants. I was about to. Say, I, I was. I was combining elephants and intelligent. I'm gonna go pee elephants while you talk about elephants for three minutes. They are Fringy. emotionally complex animals, as far oh, as I can no. tell. Well, no, but they actually are. Well, I guess the rancor oh, is too, maybe. It's but, true. Um, this is like the rancor. Is there anything well, in an elephant's brain that we could, uh... Um... Oh, well, oh, is there, like, any juice in the elephant's brain that would, it's like, stop aging? <laughs> juice. <laughs> glowing, you glowing juice. Brain makes, yeah, exactly. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> but, but as far as, as, uh, as I understand it, yeah, e elephants are among, like, the most intelligent animals, like, uh, on, on the planet. They're super-duper smart. I mean, by animal standards, I suppose. Um... They are very social. They apparently mourn their dead, which is very interesting since, like, very, very, very few species do that. Um, they can recognize themselves in the mirror, which is an interesting one in terms of self rec you know, like, self-awareness. Yeah. Though, interestingly, I know, I know that uh, in terms of passing the mirror test, dolphins pass it, chimpanzees pass it, um... Elephants pass it, but also magpies pass it too. Magpies specifically. Magpies are smart as fuck. Well, I guess it's interesting that it's a lot magpies of the specifically. are very smart. Well, yeah, because that, that's the thing with crows, right? And ravens, that they're fairly intelligent. Which yeah, is, as which far is as I know, amusing. that whole kind of family. The saying bird is, brain. Yeah. It's like, well, some birds are pretty smart, actually. It Absolutely. should probably be like lizard brain, right? Because lizards tend to be. Yeah, not generally bizarre. reptiles are not. Renowned for no one ever forward. says as smart as a. I think the a best you get is frog. that serpents are associated with cunning and cleverness. Right, but, I think but that's, that's just them hunting, right? That's instinct rather than long term planning and strategy. Well, I think that's just like a, a biblical thing, uh, as far as I'm aware. The serpent right, in the Garden of Eden. Snakes like to slither around in the grass, sneak up on things, but I mean, it's, you know, a lot of animals do that, right? Like lions, cheetahs. Well, lots we, of animals what's interesting hunt. is that originally the it was a serpent in the garden of eden it wasn't a snake yeah uh, it was sort of a right. nondescript kind of scaled creature but eventually serpent became snake and so snake got the association with you know lying being cunning and clever um when you know, the reality is people. that snakes spend like 90 percent of their time just laying in the sun <laughs> yeah, it's like pretty much all reptiles. They're very, they're often very sedentary. A, yeah. a lot of, well, them, I mean, you know, ectotherms are. I guess most animals are really like when you think of lions, people think of like the the king of you know they, they don't live the in the exciting jungle. Bits. They're the king of the savanna, really. But yeah, they think about the exciting bits rather than sitting around just laying about and not doing anything <laughs> for most of the day. Yeah, animals like, have that in common with humans. Them. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but I mean, in terms of it's i guess it's it's um it's kind of interesting where those things cuz cuz in terms of elephants it's they have big brains obviously in terms of like the size of the brain because of how big they are but the more relevant part is that they have big brains relative to the size of their bodies i believe i believe elephants do i think yeah i think brain relative to the size of the body is is a general indicator for intelligence well I think there's that, but there's also the wrinkles because, yeah, for instance, like koalas, have very, dumb, yeah. koalas have very, very smooth brains. Koalas have incredibly smooth brains. They oh. try their hardest, but they, they have super duper smooth brains. And as uh, we were saying earlier, snake wise, uh, you know, the phrase to speak with a forked tongue is, of yep. course, another one of those snake like, you know, things. It's just, yeah, that's, uh, the, 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 the TLDR Muller was that elephants are emotionally complex, complex creatures, mm -hmm. except they are. That's the big thing with elephants. Elephants are awesome. They're really cool. There are no dumb questions, just easy ones.
In Norway, we have a sports ball made of rags called basse. What? Say that again? Hello? In Norway, we have a sports ball made of rags called basse. Or, or base. B-A-S-S-E. B-A-S-S-E. I hope when I can get to play this in a year on PC that I will have forgotten all about this game and its moments. If not, Truck Coon can help me out. Hi, Rags. Hi. Um. Yeah, I mean, be able to make quite a few sales when it hits PC, I'd imagine. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, so that's us through part one and two of the Ragnarok streams. For part three, I suppose. God of War was ruined, a video essay. Yep. <laughs> what I hear. What's your opinion on Fritos? Is in them hooking the up? Chips? Fritos? I love Fritos. Well, I mean, they're okay. They're fine. They're just really basic corn chips. I mean, there's really nothing at all exciting or interesting about them. It's not like an impossibility that you could have Freya and Kratos. Like, I just don't see it. Just, um... They're like, they're friends. That's what they are. Their comrades. That's the thing about your opportunities as a writer. It's like, why why remove the chance that they could just be warriors that respect each other and their interests and they align? Yeah, that's, I think, I mean, that's what it is. And that's, I think that's the way it should remain. Thoughts on these new Pokemon designs? Morshold, Palafin, and the hero form, and Espathera. Okay, you're gonna have to hunt these down, right? I don't know, I don't know if they're gonna beat the Quagsire fish thing. <laughs> uh, Fringy, could you look these ones up? Yeah, like... Thank you. Collect them and then let me know. Sure. Oh boy, what have you brought me? <laughs> Little did you know. This is the beginning. This is when everyone thought things were normal. Uh... Night. We dine on turtle soup. Turtle soup. What do I know that from? What do I know turtle soup from? Uh. <laughs> okay. This one says, I need 10 hours of this. Oh, well. Is this the next Quantum TV? <laughs> um, Same vibes. This guy is what people think FNT is. Same for us. I know. Think he's, he's what the, EFAP is. Yeah, he's the clown person that people think we are. Uh, fellas, I've heard your claims that Scarlet Witch could take on Wakanda, but have you considered she is white? Yikes. Uh-oh. Not a good look, sweetie. Well, Very true, she yeah. could still do it. I think the only two points he made I agreed with was the annoying NPC not letting you figure out uh, puzzles and the unsolve unlosable QTE. I'd be curious if you uh, still feel the same way about the unlosable QTE when it's, as far as I'm concerned, not what it is. But it's, Doesn't uh, it, like, when it's out, not... A, 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 oh, an event you need to press in a certain amount of time that stops it from being a quick time, quick time event? Yeah, if you can't lose it and there's no time element that's involved, then it's not a QTE. It's just a press... It's just a button prompt. It's like saying that enemy is an invincible enemy you can kill. Like, what do you mean? It's just someone you can kill. Um, I guess to, <coughs> we've, we've got our Pokemon in order from top to bottom. So that first one is mouse hold. See, because it's a household, but with mice. Ain't that cute? Um, yeah, um, it's cute. I don't know what it means, though, for there to be these four. You know, it's kind of like the magnet ones. How there's like Magnemite, multiple... Magneton, yeah. Magneton, or Doug Mag Trio. Yeah. Um, the second one there, it, apparently hero form is a thing, because, like, there's a dolphin. Like, as a regular Pokemon, it's a dolphin, but the hero form, I guess, it turns into that. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know what to make of that. And then the third one there, I guess that's meant to be, like, an ostrich of some sort. But kind of, like, kind of looks like it's got chicken wings up there on it, you know? Like, chicken drumsticks up there. Yeah, it does, yeah. 
I not a good evolutionary my... adaptation to have yeah, delicious seems, looking drumsticks <laughs> on your back. <laughs> and then the last one is a robot shark, which is probably my favorite of these. Um, it was like a yeah, I'm not really a fan of all, any of these, but I guess no. if I was going to pick uh, one, well, if I have to pick one, that's because I'm uh, compared to Claude. What was it? What was uh, he was? Uh, yeah, Claude Sire. Nobody's beaten him. He's the best one. <laughs> He's hey, great. He's Look one. at him. But yeah, all of these ones are not so great. I'm guessing because these must be the new, like for the new generation. Absolute state. Of kind Pokemon. Of... Ringy, have you watched the new series Mr. In Between? Check it out if you haven't and want to. Love you all and hello, Rags. Hello. I haven't heard of it. Um. More than one woman equals suspicious amount. True. Very true. Be aware of those women. They're out there. This man infuriates me so much. The fact that I don't like taxes and don't like woke stuff means I have to hate God of War because he thinks it's boring. <laughs> what a strange, like... There's a Isn't brand it, new yeah, sentence the, right there. The links are just wild. <laughs> because I don't like taxes, I have to hate God of War. <laughs> like, what? I never knew this about myself. Being able to understand what's in a video isn't a problem of being a lefty. It's a problem of your bias affecting how you interpret things. Um, it doesn't matter. It's not even left or right. It's just biases, right? Like you kind of just said, yeah. When you see an event take place... And you've got all this surrounding meta and culture, it can really fuck up your ability to read it for what sometimes it, it was just meant to be, which it could just be a thing. It's that it's that meme, right, about the um the curtains or something. It's like the curtains were purple, this represented blah 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 blah. And then the author's like, no, they were just purple. Gotta find a balance. Some I don't blame people for being jaded with so much legitimately woke garbage, but you have to read wokeness into God of War Ragnarok to come to these conclusions. Well, we saw that. We saw what it was looked like. It was kind of weird. Yep. Very strange. Alright, next fruit of the week is the Mark Mark fruit, which makes the user capable of aiming at whichever target he decides upon from any location at any time with anything with ease. Basically an aimbot. It's even more than a name bot. This is being able to hit things that you don't even know the locations of. I guess you could call that a name bot. Sort of. I think a name bot is just never missing, but this seems to go like even more. You know. I thought you were going to mention like it. It must teleport things, right? Because if I if I could like, for it's example, gotta, if I yeah. threw a stone in my room and it hit you, because that's like, what is even happening there. Because even with aimbotting, like, you have to have a line of sight to your target. Well, it depends on the bot. Yeah, the crazy bots. It depends on your Oh, yeah, I guess rank. you have some of those. Yeah, they're not as common. Generally, it's just... It just aims at everybody. But the bullets are just normal bullets. Uh, um, yes, I'll, I'll take that in exchange for not swimming. Fine to me. I'm not sure how yeah, much use I'll like get out of it, but, you know, I think I'll find ways. Like... Like, if they're, like, really, really evil, terrible people out there, like, terrorists and stuff. Oh, you know, shit, yeah, you could really them. do some, you can make some huge changes to the world, couldn't you? Yeah, but that's the kind of power that you just cannot abuse. Yeah. Howdy, y'all, here's some money. Go buy a good meal from Mickey D's called Menu, and bless your hearts. I think. Shoot, meant value menu should send on phone. Oh, it's don't worry, sorry. I was value wondering what that menu is talking about at McDonald's, yeah. You know, menu. Uh, I watched Synth, and for context, he values gameplay above all else. The story barely matters to him. Oh, we got it that. It was the majority <laughs> of the oh, video, we, Most of his review was about the story. He even said that. <laughs> and his gameplay review portion was awful as well. He didn't say anything, yeah, it wasn't good. really. He just, it was Very like empty and said, he just wrong. described mechanics. Like, that was, that was it. That's not, that's not like a review. That's not a breakdown. Rise up, Sin Cells. Hail, Synthetic Man. Oh, and hi, Eva. <laughs> sin Cells. Sin Cells. That's actually <laughs> funny. 
Sin cells. I like how Metroid Fusion did it with Samus losing her abilities to the X parasites and using those against her in boss fights. Hell, the SAX is a copy of your fully powered suit from Super Metroid. Um, well, there's been a variety of different explanations in the Metroid games because, of course, Metroid Prime is you get blasted into a wall. Yeah, it's pretty lame. Yeah, meanwhile, like you said, yeah, the X parasite contextualizing, and then Samus gets a brand new suit, and then you have to deal with the the it was the S what they say the yeah the SA the the clone evil Samus coming to get you. Yeah, I'm working on the story for my fifth to be published game, and it's a huge step up from my previous stories thanks to your writing advice. Also, hi Mola. Oh, well, I'm glad really to hear neat. that. Yeah. Good also, luck, man. Hey, hey. Luck indeed. Am I crazy for thinking God of War Ragnarok getting nominated for multiple VGAs is a bit unfair? The game came out just about a month ago. I'm sure it's good, but for real? Is a month um, not enough? I mean, it's it, it would either be this year or next year, and it was in the eligible window for this year. If anything, the criticism should be that the Game Awards do their event in December, when they should probably do it in January or February, like every other awards thing generally does. The Golden Globes are in January, Oscars are usually in February, and the Emmys are usually at the end of the mid-season before the, the new season begins, because it gives, like, all the stuff of that actual year, that calendar year, time to, uh, to be eligible. Because games that come out in December, they, they're next year, and by then a lot of people forget about those games, and they don't get much consideration, <clears throat> or at least it seems that way. But I mean, as for it was eligible, how long should they have waited? Well, the fact they said, like, it's only out for a month, it's like, isn't a month long enough to, you know, judge it? This guy's arguments are basically fucking magnets. How do they work? I don't want to talk to a scientist. I don't want to <laughs> talk to no scientist. I don't want to talk to a scientist. <laughs> it is incredibly priceless to have so much of like a I don't understand the story while simultaneously being like fuck the story I don't even want to listen to these characters talk yeah and it, you shouldn't even want to listen to the characters talking but I'm going to talk about how terrible it is that they're about what they're saying Sims 3 and 4 cost well over 1k for all the DLC respectively yeah. Uh, well, I guess if you bought it all when they came out, but then they usually put them on sale, right? Like the, um, but I mean, it is. Like isn't, there like the a, isn't there a train simulator train game simulator. that DLC comes to something insane? Yeah, it's, uh, it's... Well, hmm. Yeah, that, that like sounds that. about, I mean, it's, it's something, it's the same with, uh, cause like City Skylines, a lot of Paradox games will have a shit ton of DLC. But the interesting thing is that with a lot of Paradox games, some of the features that, like, come coupled with the DLC will just be added to the game for free, anyway. So, like, if you play City Skylines and you don't have all the expansions, you've still received a lot of, like, new functionality. Yeah, yeah, DLCs that come with, um... With, with extra, with the, yeah, like, yeah, core a vanilla updates. game update, mm -hmm. yeah, that just, like, like a framework update that needs to exist so that the DLC can be there. Mm. But I mean, in terms of The Sims, because I think the Sims, the Sims 4 has like the most expansion packs of any game. It's got like 12 expansion packs <clears throat> and it's got like a ton of game packs as well and stuff packs. So there's like more stuff on top of that, because I think The Sims 4 at this point is eight years old. Um, I wonder if they're ever going to make another one. Also, Christ, this guy's channel is some of the most annoying culture war stoking BS I've seen in a while. It's getting difficult to give benefit of the doubt to any of these sods seriously anymore. Um, take them all individually, listen to what they have to say, and judge for yourself, I suppose. Obviously, I wasn't very compelled by his arguments. I don't think any of us were. I would be very disappointed in myself if I found it. really anything he said approaching compelling. Oilers, I'm out. Well, yeah, I mean, until you can... Fair enough, yeah. Game Fair after. enough. A detail I find cool. As Freya and Boy kill Hugin and Munin, Odin summons a spellbook from his bookshelf in the background and goes full wizard mode. Yeah. He pulls it off the, uh... Uh... Bookshelf after... I think he tries to, like, fly or sort of... Doing some kind of move and Freya fucks it up. 
And then when he sees them die, he's like, no, because he's coming close to really getting fucked up. But he gets the spell book and he gets like a second wind. My molar and fringy plushies arrived today. Hey. Oh, very Wait. awesome. I hope you like him. Uh, I have loved the Dauntless Shield. Very satisfying on mini-bosses, dealing massive damage on stun. Makes parrying feel like a, its own playstyle. Yeah, that's what I really liked about it. Enjoyed it more once I understood its drawback. I wasn't clear on it at first. Yeah. My favorite weapon was Fists with the poison damage buff from Lunda's armor. Love how it lowered the level of, of off an enemy. Also, the armor looked neat. I didn't even know that was a thing. I'll have to um, look into that. Poison had damage buff on the fists with Lunda's armor. Play every Fire Emblem game leading up to FE Engage. Play any Fire Emblem? I played, <clears throat> I played uh, Awakening and Three Houses, but I didn't beat either of them. Um. So I don't think I played the one that they were asking about. I've played I I beat I played and beat the first two um on an emulator for the Game Boy. I they like Fire Emblem and Sacred Stones, I think. Um I played Path of Radiance and I think I beat it, the GameCube one. I think there was right, another that I started like in uh, Sounds like you played all the ones that came before like Awakening kind of reinvented and popularized that series. Because well, like otherwise a, it would shift through uh, Smash Brothers. <clears throat> really, there was a DS one that I played, uh, where you but, you like made a character who was a part of the story. Um, oh, maybe that maybe you did play Awakening. That one was on 3DS. Yeah, that's that's what I played it on. Yeah, um, right. That might be. But the one that... I just don't remember too much about them, other than that they were fine. Uh, I. Some of your units were just insanely OP, and I guess that was they're sort of supposed to be. But I I thought it was, they were it was fine games. Um, yeah, I think they're fine games. I never you know, I never got into them, but they were good you know strategy games to play. So um, this is in caps lock. I feel like shouting, but I'll just go. Synthetic man is in chat. Invite him on to defend himself. Well, and once you got to see those other clips, especially the one about his plans for if he ever got onto um, the call with us, probably imagine weren't exactly interested. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's one yeah, thing to be like, yeah, pretty foul guy, pretty yeah, foul guy. I think people maybe misunderstood our our approach with like having people on. It's not like some kind of open invite to literally anybody, including Satan. Even though I, I'd be interested to talk to Satan, it was a real thing. Um, if you, like, overtly say you can't wait to just shill over us and literally use words that can fucking get the channel banned, it's just like, oh, well then we're just not gonna have you on. Pretty straightforward. Um, he's also a really, like, harsh piece of shit. So, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's not really any reason. Um, besides, yeah, he wouldn't be said he's not interested anyway, so. Yeah, we know he's just chasing clout, trying to get an audience, um, and he just, would just do nothing but assault. Yeah, there's just no reason for it. He's a foul person. Uh, why compare Athenians to the Draugr as if they're the same creature? What if the Norse common enemies are way tougher than Greek soldiers? I'm sure, uh... Why, why would we... You just assume they are, right? Uh, the, the Draugr are like these reanimated monster mythic creature things versus an Meanwhile, Athenian soldier. Yeah, they're just regular guys. Um, so if, if you're pointing out, like, yeah, he killed a whole bunch of uh, Athenian slash Rhodians, um, so why is he having trouble with a skeleton? That was a bizarre argument. It doesn't make any sense. It's also really more so down to the player, as is the conclusive argument. The canon version is that Kratos doesn't have trouble with a lot of these enemies. The well, the canon though. version is he never dies, that's yeah. for sure. Welcome to video games. Pretty much, yeah. Do you think Doom Slayer, like, Doom Guy, sorry, he, he ever died to, like, a random Skeleman? Yeah, like, with a or slap? something? Like, no. It's like, uh, it's like Zero Nades Coffee said, right? Like, a random fireball. It's not just gonna... Like, that didn't happen. 
But if you're shit at the game... <laughs> yeah, but it's non-canon, so it's okay. That's just your... <laughs> That's just your experience with that story. Mr. Fringles. I recently found the YouTube channel Casual Geographic and thought of you. Have you seen his content, or could he actually be you in disguise? Thus. Uh... I presume he's Australian. I haven't heard of Casual Geographic, though. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Is Kratos Wonder Woman's cuz? Why? Is, I don't know. Is Kratos cuz? I'm sorry, what was that? And like, is he her oh, cousin? because is it because of like Ares and everything, and like because there's all the the. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right? Like, it, wait, who's... Wait, who was her dad, though? Was it Zeus, um, or who was it? Was it implied to be Zeus? I can't remember. No, but then they wouldn't be cousins, then. They'd be siblings. Yeah, brother, step... Brother, no, well, just regular... Half-brother? I don't... Brother, right? Half-brother and sister. sister. Yeah. There are lots of people who just want tragic endings. People wanted Berserk to end at the Golden Age arc. People are just weird. Some people are weird. I'm gonna assume that I don't know what the Golden Age arc is. Is it that it like? But that, that's not too strange for people to want things to end at their at the end of their Golden Age, right? That surely can't be. Maybe I'm misinterpreting what he's saying. I don't know anything about Berserk. So I don't even know what happened in that. Remember the guy that said armor is for weaklings. Remember what Kratos did to his face. I think it's just a really weird argument to say, like, it makes you a weaker person to have armor. Be fine without it or whatever. Yeah, well, that's just not true. Kratos is clearly weaker now because he wears armor. Just... Interpretation, especially with the armor giving him, like, amazing magical benefits. Also, cover Yahtzee's God of War 2018... It's time to coin a new term for cinematic linear adventure games, and how about we stop adding gear, sources, and cosmetics into every game? Oh, gear scores and cosmetics, sorry. If you're covering the God of War Ragnarok video. Um, we, I, I can't, have we ever covered a Yahtzee video? I don't think we have. I don't, I don't think, think so, so, no. I don't feel like that would be, like, good coverage, really. <laughs> like, I'm not... I, I I feel like um the the format that Yahtzee uses to do his uh reviews is like not super compatible. Really no, and a lot of it is very um casual and quick, and and a lot of it's stupid joke related. Like he's he's describing the game in deliberately stranger ways in order to have payoffs for jokes. Well, yeah, and there, and there's usually some like broader statements being made about uh about the industry through certain games rather than like a hyper focus on on each yeah. individual. Yeah. What pantheon would y'all be most interested in Kratos taking on? Personally, I yeah, want to see us explore a mishmash of Hindu gods and Buddhism. Yeah, it'd be Egyptian. Yeah, it's easily, yeah, easily Egyptian for me. I don't have any real interest at all in the Indian or the Hindu pantheon. I'm happy for them to do anything they choose, but if I somehow got the choice, it would. Yes. Doesn't matter, there are accessibility options for colorblind people. I guess they're, they're making fun of his uh, ability to solve things. Did the cast realize that with the first Berserker, he dropped the difficulty to easy to beat him? He did not have the skill to beat him. How does anyone think he raised the difficulty back to hard for the rest of the game? Oh, I don't, I, I, I didn't remember if that had happened or not. I, I just, I was too distracted by the whole, like, it's mandatory, it's clearly not. And then he says, well, that doesn't change my point at all, which is like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel okay. like it does. That was some hyper cope. It, it, I don't think there's ever been more cope than when he said, wait, I was wrong about that fact. Well, you're autistic for remembering it. Yeah, this is actually a character flaw on you because you noticed me being factually wrong. <laughs> it's, it's like, Earn your wow. place, viewer. Uh, in terms of enemies returning, many think that Halo got worse when it ditched the Flood in favor of the Prometheans. Yeah, it did. Uh, yeah, it did. Because the Prometheans, Prometheans aren't as good suck. as the Flood, and I don't even flood think are great. the Flood is good. Calm down. The, the Covenant are better. They are great. <laughs> We've had this discussion. Yeah, they're great. But, uh, 
Well, Flutter or Mixed Bag, it depends on which game we're talking about. But I mean, the Flutter definitely better than the Prometheans. The Prometheans have a lot of like very fundamental design flaws. Um, I'm pretty sure the Actman would have... I'm sure it was like when he did his coverage of uh, Halo 4, something that he highlighted was... Um, one of the the cool thing about the Covenant is that because each uh, each enemy fills a certain role in the battlefield, gives you a lot of uh, options for how you want to dispatch them. Um, like you know, th- there's no there's no clearly better strategy at any given moment. It's more of a matter of different play styles. Depends on what weapons you have. But the problem with the Prometheans is that there was a there was an order. There was a correct order in which to take them out. You need to get rid of the flying one first. Because that one can resurrect dead enemies, it gets shields, it grabs your grenades and throws them at you. There is never a good reason not to take them out first. Whereas there may be a good reason to take out the grunts before you take out the elite or vice versa. There may be a good reason to deal with the sniper jackals first before you want to, you know, handle the ones that are close up. And then like the knights teleporting everywhere is really annoying. It means that really you need to fall back on long range weapons constantly. There just wasn't that much variety because I think it was just the there was the knight, the ones that run around, the dogs, like, and then there was the floater, and I think that was it. I think there were legitimately only like three Promethean enemy types. It's like, man, that's not that's not good enough. Um, yes, yeah, compared for Halo to game. Compared there are more, to ki- there are more kinds of brutes alone. There, yeah, exactly, because you've got different kinds of jackals, you've got different kinds of brutes, you've got different kinds of elites. Because even with the elites, you've got like the basic elites, and then you go up with like captains. It was the same with the brutes. Yeah, where you had, and like, they get different weapons as they go up. Um, and I mean, and if you boil it down to base enemy types, with the covenant, you've got elites, jackals, grunts. Uh, you've got the the brutes. You've got um the uh the, the the I can't believe I cannot believe I'm forgetting their names. I can't believe it. The big guys. Oh my god, <laughs> I can't believe I've forgotten them. The, the big glooms? guys. No, not the glooms. I can't believe it. What, the I, hunters? I, yes. Oh my god, yeah. You got the hunters. Um, and then you had engineers as well get added in uh, later on. Yeah, and uh, they and then you've got the bug, I think you've they got were added the, in. You've got the, the, the flying enemies too. I think they have different names depending on <laughs> which region you're in. So yeah, like the variety and yeah, the Prometheans were just not... Uh, they were not a suitable substitute for the Covenant. Uh, for the Flood, rather. And compared to the Covenant, like, yeah. There's a reason why everybody wants to fight the Covenant. They're the most fun ones. They've consistently been the most entertaining ones to fight. They're the backbone of the Halo enemies. Pretty much. Um, I think it would be safe to say that basically the core of that game is designed around encounters with the Covenant basically every game. I'd say so. Just haters. No. Yeah. Uh, so this just says lies. <laughs> Could be about a lot of things. I don't know what that would have made in relation to. Who among you will subscribe to Markiplier's OnlyFans? Not me. So I saw that, that was set up, and my first reaction was like, what the fuck? It's and I found out that apparently it's for charity. Oh, all right. That's what. A, that's a nice thing to do. Good on him. I mean, at that point, I was just like, "Oh, oh, okay, that works out." Sure. Still seems really strange, right? Because he's like, I, I don't. Um, I guess I don't know what he's posting on there exactly. Because OnlyFans is a. I mean, Boogie has an OnlyFans. This is a weird world we live in. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, this says maybe he needs to get good. Wings quote of the day. Wife tells him to cheerfully tells him cheerfully to smile and enjoy life. He's playing card. Bye. I can't stand it when people tell me to enjoy life. <laughs> I know, isn't it? It's just unbearable. Oh man. <laughs> well, but kind of feel bad for him. So this is what it looks like to watch a Bethesda NPC play a game. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you get some, uh, hmm, little, get some insights from that stream of his. Mm. Appreciate all the God of War stuff. Looks like f- uh, lots of fun to watch. Sweet. That is good to hear. Because it's not just um, 
hopefully it's not just like us having fun talking about a thing we like. It's also like uh, entertaining for you guys to consume as well as, you know, maybe learn a bit about something that you otherwise probably wouldn't have been interested in. This is DSP minus the snorting and scat fetish. Does DSP have a thing? I have. I have got no clue. I am not the. I'm not the guy to ask for that. Uh, so this is that. appreciate. Oh no, wait. Uh, this man is why games are getting dumber every day. I mean, you know, it seems like it's just jokes, but it's just like, why do you think we have these things in games? Devs see that shit and they gotta, they gotta solve it, because a lot of players, if they have the experience Synthetic Man does, and they have no monetary reason to continue, they'll just be like, you know what, this isn't fun, I'm leaving. And then the devs are like, fuck, we should have the NPC help them. And then, what if they do, and it works? This is why things end up this way. Um, that's, that, that's also, by the way, the explanation for why there's, like, hyper-annoying overt exposition in, in movies and storytelling. Some people aren't picking it up. We need more. Like, you'll find this, that that's what a lot of uh, ADR stuff is. Like, further explaining character motivations. Things that like, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't get it. And all that happened because they had a test screening and some guy was like, wait, why did the thing happen? And they're like, oh... In, uh, what, what was it? Something's getting, yeah, Indiana Jones is getting his whole ending reshot, apparently. Oh. Oh? <laughs> Gee. <clears throat> yeah, apparently this was found out because of John Williams. He was saying that he's like, uh, he, he was in some place or something talking about the music and that uh, he's waiting to do the work for, for the, the ending that they're redoing ah. or something like that. Okay. <laughs> oh, like, well, Jesus that's Christ. not a great, that's not, that's not awesome. <laughs> oh, no. They shot an ending, I get, wow. Yeah. Well, they must be yeah, reshoots, I guess. Which, they happen, but if it's a whole ending. <laughs> hmm. I wonder how this massive would fare in Elden Ring. Well, apparently, he I don't know if he streamed all of it, but he's played it, so. Play Zelda Tears of a Kingdom when it comes out. Tears, Tears of, of the Kingdom. Uh, you'll be playing he's that, probably right? Played Breath of yeah, I'll play that for sure. Actual knuckle dragger makes gamers look bad. Little bit. Uh, Rewatching Buffy and Angel. Wish we had more time with character. Though, remember, great payoff at that other point. Non-spoiler thoughts on said character. Uh... <laughs> I'm so obsessed with like, not giving anything away. They are... they the, this This character that is being referenced is... Pretty great uh, for the time you get to know them. And it's unfortunate what happened to this person in real life that fed into what happened to them in the show. Uh, pretty sure they are a fan favorite for a lot of people rather quickly. Good stuff. You'll hear more about it uh, eventually. All the help, when I catch a glimpse of a close-up of Atreus, I think I'm looking at Lord Miles of Afghanistan, and I can't unsee it. Who's that? Oh, he's a, he was a guy who... I don't even know where to begin. He's a guy who went out and does stuff. I, I, I don't even know how to really start. Um, I don't... I'm not familiar enough with his face to assign it to Atreus. It certainly didn't come to my mind. All right. Get out. These bloody things are everywhere. They're in the lift, in the lorry, in the Bond wizard. They're all over the Malonga Gildachuk. Oh, wait, that's, is that Simpsons? That's, yeah, it's the Australian Simpsons episode. <laughs> there are a lot Bring of can translate. the Australian Simpsons episodes. Bring, what is a Malonga Gildachuk? I have no idea. Don't know. Damn. It's probably like Rags not knowing what a hamburger is or something. I don't what? know about that. <laughs> I, 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 I I assume it has something to do with like pigs, but I yeah. Long man got my Muller and Fringy plushie and they are glorious. Fringy, when will you get your cousin Big Bird to make a cameo on EFAP? Also high ranks. <laughs> Wouldn't yeah. that be funny if Big Bird came in to talk about like a new movie? 
doesn't really enjoy, you know, Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania. He just wants <laughs> to have a chat about it. Like I don't want I don't want to be controversial, but I didn't think it was very good. Who was uh who's your favorite Sesame Street character? Um Count Count the Count. The Count. Oh, you you reckon? Yeah, I'll, I'll but, I mean, obviously, him. it's your your opinion. Yeah, my my favorite is Big Bird. I like him a lot. I was never, never really watched Sesame Street growing up. I watched other stuff, but um, hmm, of my favorites, I don't even really know them all that well. Maybe I mean, you know about Elmo, right? Yeah, I know about Elmo. Ernie. Fuck Elmo, Bert and Ernie, Big Bird, Oscar the Grouch, Look, of course. Counts. I count. really like Oscar. He's uh, yeah. There's something he's, about he's, him that's just he's I don't charming. know. He's, you want to like him? Yeah. Oscar yeah. is definitely up there. Um, I really. It's probably between the Oscar. What about the Cookie it, Monster? Oh, or I just think, think he's, he's one too note? one-dimensional. Yeah. <laughs> Why he, just, um, he likes to eat cookies? I really like the Count, just as an idea. The Transylvanian classic uh, uh, vampire uh, 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 who uh, just uh, loves the Count. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. But. It's either the Count or Oscar. Hmm. I think Oscar might be my second favorite after Big Bird. I just find it, I just like Big Bird a lot. Well, I, it might be boring to say, but my favorite Muppet is Kermit. Um, <laughs> he's I like definitely the, my favorite. Let's see. Uh, so, uh, just a second, just checking names. Statler and Waldorf. Uh, they're the guys who sit up in the the in the balcony, yeah, right? the, yeah. The two old the old guys in <laughs> the balcony yeah. who make jokes about the thing to each other. I I love them. They reminds me of us. <laughs> <laughs> but I I've just always liked them. They're they're the ones poking at you know fun at the show. I mm. I just I really like that. I've I've always really liked them. I I don't know, man, Kermit. I just like him a lot. Well, it was a uh, bunch to love. Everything from Rizzo uh, the Rat to the they're all just so full of character, even the minor ones. Well, it's it's uh, puppets are really like they're, they're a really cool example of just like how how uh, well humans can imbue uh, like character into into like fabric, right? Like even even into you know like little fabric characters. But I mean, I mean that would be kind of like undermining obviously the amount of like effort that goes into the puppetry. Like to achieve, like if you've seen some of the, the the diagrams of like what it looks like to puppeteer Big Bird, it's kind of incredible. Like the amount of dexterity that it requires to do it well. Where like you have to have one hand up and then use each of like each of the uh, fingers to control like the eyes and the mouth. Because it's, it's really um, it's really incredible. Like what they're able to achieve. Yeah. Uh. Synthetic DSP. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. The comparisons were certainly made. <clears throat> Synthetic man, more like pathetic man. Got him. Oh. Nice. He showed him. I've seen lobotomites with better critical thinking skills. I wouldn't is be that, surprised. Is that what they're called when people have lobotomies? They're lobotomites. It's they're from uh, correct or Fallout. Not. No, they're from I Fallout. I oh, I see. Uh, one they're, of my issues. Yeah. Go ahead. They were they're just. I was just saying. I think they're just surgically altered people who have had their brains removed or something like that. I'm not sure. One of my issues was the design of the Raven armor and Lunda's armor. I know they change when you level them up, but wasn't really happy with the design. I'd have to have a look at them. I'm not, uh, enough. One of my biggest complaints about the game is how heavy the NPCs hold your hand, and this guy proves it was not only warranted, but perhaps too subtle for the average person. Infuriating to see. What I mean, it's such a, like, because we all agree it's annoying to have them spill out the answer as much as, like, seconds into trying to solve it. But my god, man. We're watching him solve a puzzle when Tyr and Atreus are desperately trying to explain to him. It's, uh, I would go as far as saying it's priceless. You know what's funny as well? You'll get moments in the game, I think I saw this with Fringy and Metal and it happened with myself, where we're stuck for a while searching for the third thing. And you're like, I wonder if the NPC will help me out. 
by saying like, hey, I think I can see something over there, you know, that sort of thing, but that never happens. No, it's kind of, kind of interesting. Because, yeah, those aren't, like, story-necessary puzzles, I guess. I don't know, it seems to be, it seems to be dialed back a lot, um, in the, the side quests. Yeah, uh, the devs predicted this guy would be this smooth-brained and made the characters baby him. Um, didn't work, though. <laughs> like, I don't know <laughs> what to say. I'll admit, his review was the first I saw, so I genuinely thought you couldn't lose some QTEs, which I thought was BS. Didn't know it was a tutorial. Still weird to do it that way, though. Is it? Is that weird? I, I don't think like, so. I feel like other games have done that. It's fine. It's just showing a scenario, and then it's just like, oh, press square, it's going to activate Angry Boda. You well, can see I mean, is it, is it, uh, well, here's an example. At the beginning of God of War 2018, when you have to swing the axe, is that a QTE that is impossible to fail? And do we hate that? Or yeah, is it you, an introduction you, of swing the axe by pressing this button? Yeah. That's, that's, that's actually that's, kind of perfect. Did you guys hate that? Did you think that was bullshit at the time? I think it's it's probably quite common. Yeah, in, in tutorials, press this. You can't proceed until you press this button and you like confirm that you know what it and does. Legit, I find it infuriating when um, this happens a couple of times in both God of War games where it's like, uh, press the the touchpad button to open up your stats thing and you can't do anything else. Everything is stopped. And then it's like, now press up to go to this menu. It's like, yeah. Okay, I, I already know how to use all this. It's like, now press right. Now press X on this move you've just unlocked to equip it. And you're like, I don't even want to equip it. But yeah, you have to. I can't get through any of this. And then you realize at the end when you followed the specific instructions of like 10 different things with specific buttons, you can't do anything else until they let you free. All of this is designed so that fucking idiots out there who don't even know they have skills are like, oh... So this is how that works. They literally yeah. can't progress the game until they have accepted that they have seen these menus. Don't we, blame us. We've told you that you have these abilities. Yeah, the devs are just like, we're, we're seriously just trying to show you there's a game here. You, like, there are options. Please use them. Uh, I actually did have weird pedo talk on my bingo card. What else oh, did you have well. on your bingo card? <laughs> was it fulfilled? All right, then. Because Theo's was. Uh, buddy. A couple of top comments, like, showing the timestamps where Theo predicts the end. Poor guy. This guy's just right-wing cosmonaut variety hour. If if by that you mean, like, I don't, shitty I don't... effort. Because cosmonaut yeah. variety hour doesn't really inject a lot of politics. Yeah, he's just not he's an idiot. Good. Yeah, he's just an idiot. He's a fool. I wouldn't go this far. Don't let this guy know what Loki did with a horse in Norse mythology. He doesn't know anything about Norse mythology. He's just pretending to. He needs to visit the Norse dimension. <laughs> Check Who it had out. Mary Sue slash Gary Stew on their bingo cards? Of course. Yeah, what he called oh, that Freya. Was, I mean, that. Yeah. A Mary Sue. It was like, God, you're such an NPC. Like, that's all you got. See, strong woman. Yeah, I, I saw a strong woman warrior. There, there cannot, be, cannot be any context or explanation to why this is, you know, well-written or anything. I, I, just, well, also, I see the like, thing and I react. That There's no brain used. It's, it's kind of weird to be like, well, she satisfies all the criteria, which she doesn't. But even if you were like, she satisfies all the criteria. And it's like, well, yeah, and a lot of films satisfy the criteria of failing the Bechdel test. Like, what does that mean, though? Like, what is your point? Yeah, please contextualize it instead of just saying, Mary Sue! Love you guys, not you, Metal. Keep it up. Oh. Wow. Thanks, though. <laughs> Thank you, but, oh, Metal. Kratos holds back all the time in this game, even against Odin, Thor, and especially Freya. Yeah, he does. Try not to kill everything. Because that's bad. I gotta say, I was surprised to see Saul Goodman playing Odin in Ragnarok. Still, I, a lot of people making that comparison. Did you guys watch Better Call Saul? It. He's not quite... <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rags loves going after children. Well, I'm, I'm courteous if I let them go before me. You know. 
Rag wakes up well, and has teleported to Asgard. We're not in our. He said Arkansas, Arkansas anymore, Dorothy. <laughs> We're not in Arkansas anymore. We're not. In that Arkansas weird, man. Anymore. Like when I first met that word in my life, I, I found out how it was pronounced. I was just like, what? <laughs> I found it very confusing. Yeah, it it is a very <laughs> so confusing like, word. It's Ar like the French I... version of an Algonquin word. It's uh. Well, it's just Everybody knows about Kansas, thanks to just like a whole bunch of different. Me it's kind of funny. There's a lot of media where Kansas. I mean, Wizard, Wizard of Oz, Superman. Like, there's a lot of just people have heard of Kansas, but then art. It's like art it's Kansas. Become, I mean, <laughs> we're not in Kansas anymore. It's become like a you know yeah, a semi-popular sort of idiom. Yeah. You know, it's a saying. Beyond, beyond. Uh, Wizard we're not of Oz. home. We're in a strange place. We're not yeah. in Kansas anymore. But yet. Then there's Arkansas. How come nobody says we're not in Ark Arkansas anymore? <laughs> well, except for just now, I suppose. Because yeah, it's just it's. Well, yeah, we've uh, we've I mean, told us before. I think you looked up the etymology. There's something to do with, you know, it's the it's the French version. I think it's it is the French uh, uh, version of a uh, Algonquin word. So that's interesting. And I don't know if it has anything to do with, uh, uh, oh yeah, so Kansas, name for the Kansas or Kansas tribe of the Sioux family that lived along a river in the area and gave it the tribal name. The name translates as South Wind People or Wind People. And right, Arkansas right. name origin is, you have the Algonquian speaking Indians of the Ohio Valley called the Arkansas or South Wind. The state's name has been spelled several ways throughout history. That's that's da La Salle later. I can say that da. But so yeah. Um, oh, oh, there's even a question. Why do we pronounce Arkansas and Kansas differently? Uh, Arkansas was named for the French plural of a Native American tribe, while Kansas is the English spelling of a similar one. Since the letter S at the end of French words is usually silent, we pronounce Bill Clinton's home state Arkansas. Um, why does he hate Freya? Because she's of age. Oh, well. He hates her because she can do things. She's a woman, yeah. Ladies can do stuff now. No way. Molly, you are playing and praising God of War's blasphemous behavior. Therefore, God punched you with Mando Season 3 episodes, all written by Dave Baloney. Hi, <laughs> uh, dog. no. Uh, <laughs> um, hello. When is that out? Wait, what? Sorry? Mando season three, when's that happening? Uh, I think that's out like February, March, something like that. Right. Next year. Awesome. Something so cool it's pretty to close. Look forward to. Yeah. Are you excited for that, Frankie? That's you and me, probably. <laughs> oh, shit. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> that is going to be, that's going to be like two months, probably. Of, Old friend. Of, uh, yeah. Hopefully that's, that's it for Mando after that, right? It's ending. Um, I, is it? As far, I remember reading some way that they, they're done after three seasons of it. Really? Fucking hope they are. Well, maybe, right? Because Pedro Pascal might be jumping ship to The Last of Us. Yeah. Uh... Uh, no, uh, according to Wikipedia, fourth season is in development. Oh, maybe I read that it's the end for him at the end of season three, or maybe I'm just making shit up. I don't know. The Mandalorian without the Mandalorian. Hmm. Remember, you can always switch to Bo-Katan or whatever, right? <laughs> Oh wait, is she a yeah, Mandalore? I, I, I forget like... how it fucking works, the mechanics, I don't know. I guess the thing is, though, is it's like, it doesn't even really matter who we, like, change to. They're not characters. No. <laughs> They're As if anyone's gonna miss... What is his name again? Did Jared? Yep. Dinjarin. Yeah, Nobody cares Dinjarin. about him, really. No. Because he's they just, like, not a character, Grogu, I guess. It was brought They're up on really like Open Grogu. Bar about how, like, Andor is better than a lot of them, and someone said, like, the only competition it has really is Mando, and then... I was like, well, yeah, and it's already going to come out ahead because it just has to have like a character, and then it'll be. It has to have Mando. one good character. Yeah, if 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 Andor has one good character, it's ahead of all of Mando. Everything. Well, there's it's just, ahead of everything. Yeah, they, there's no, there's not one good character in Mando. There isn't. We either get empty characters that are just nothing, or what they're character? confusing, or potentially just flat out contradictory or and poorly written. What about um, Glub Shitto? Oh, I can't wait for Glub Shitto to come back in the <laughs> Adventures of uh, Space Mando Chapter 6 on Disney Plus in 2027. 
Uh, 14-year-old Atreus is canonically smarter than him. Yes. If the smartest man alive says you can't trust him and you still do, you're slow. I, I, like I said, man, I, I don't know how this is hard, but I've seen people say, like, I love how Evap relied on a codex entry for an argument that should be uh, gotten through the story. And it's like, I did get it through the story. I didn't even know there was a codex entry. Exactly. I didn't know that until after, like, way later. The codex entry is just the writer Extra telling you directly. It's like, this yeah. is why you didn't need this, but apparently some people do. Ooh. These are Neville Chamberlain levels takes on war. We, are we fans of Neville Chamberlain here or no? He was the guy before uh, Churchill, right? Who wanted to appease Hitler in Nazi Germany? He didn't want to get into fights or anything with him? I mean, Neville's not a strong name, I think. What do you think? Neville isn't a strong name. Uh, it's just, yeah, I wouldn't Churchill name is my... a fucking titan of a name. Churchill is a, yeah. It, not only do you have the guy, but you have the fact that, like, tanks and stuff were named after him, which just adds to it, so. Winston Churchill. That's it's a like, name right there. Good name. Yeah, oh, I wonder how much of it is, obviously, like, after the fact. <laughs> like, yeah, you, like, you, you like, do like, George Washington sounds like a strong name, but it's like, yeah, but also it's George Washington. Uh, this man wants Kratos to accept the deal, which would just be in a spit in the face of both Freya and Mimir for even dealing with Odin, regardless of intent. Or just I'm almost imagine tired. What if Freya finds out, you know, finds out you cut that, you're you're done. It's over. There's no rebuilding that bridge. Yeah, and, and as soon as it's done, Mimi would be like, "Are you insane? You have, you have, do you have any idea what's going to happen next? It's like, the, I, how many stories did I fucking tell you? It gets to the point in the 2018 one where you're like, he's telling you a story, or you see a, a shrine, and it ends with Thor killing someone and Odin like being happy about it. I think Atreus says, "Oh, it ends like that again." And the Mamiya's just like, yeah. He's not even explaining it anymore. It's just like, that's how it goes. Um, he's like a reverse Anita Sarkeesian. How strange. The horseshoe theory, right? Well, uh, the, I mean, I guess maybe not in terms of... More so in terms of, like, the methodology that they use and how it informs, like, every perspective more so than the exact conclusions, I guess. Um, It's like... Yeah, maybe maybe Horshi Theory is. I don't quite agree accurate, in terms it's... of their conclusions, but their methodology of framing everything through weird political lenses is identical. It just has well, different I... outcomes because they have different ideologies. If I was to broaden it out, um, I might be able to get it so that they're essentially agreeing, as in like this thing is bad, and then cites insane political bias reading, and obviously the well, bias yeah, right, like you know, a male character versus a female character just being denigrated on the basis of their gender. It's essentially, like, the same conclusion, right? It's just different, different target. Well, like, if, uh, for example, Ironwood, it's bad because diversity higher, versus it's bad because they made the black woman learn something from the white man. And it would just be like, Jesus right. Christ, both of you are so stupid. You've, you've <laughs> come to the same conclusion based on the same methodology. It's just that it's different on the basis of, like, your pers political perspective. Yeah, and then you eventually find out that neither of them have anything to say about what actually happened in those scenes, and you're like, fucking hell. Yeah, it's entirely relying on these lenses rather than talking about the stories. Remember, Angraboda didn't do anything in the entire plot except provide him marbles. Uh, yeah, not like she was <laughs> Mysteriously cut the ending scene to have it so that you yeah. couldn't see her. What did he say? They they somehow... They, they got, they they got out off-screen. What a... I still right, can't believe that fucking happened. Like, I, people have played the game, my dude. <laughs> like, they know. Well, it's yeah. like how he cut the uh, the werewolf kill. It's just, you're it's just being a liar. Yeah. You're just lying. That's all you're doing is you're just being a liar. My complaint with the elves is that it was into a history of light versus darkness to fit a narrative, but killing the more interesting Nordic lore of them. I So I don't know what the Nordic lore of them is, but I would say... The story they tell is pretty interesting, I think, in the game. That the light is constructed of, like, lost souls, or dead souls, rather, into this, like, giant beam. And then if you harvest it, you can gain different powers, uh, or, like, uh, help craft structures and stuff. And then the elves split into two teams of, you shouldn't fuck with stuff like that. It's, like, like pressures and nature and stuff. And then the other half that were like, we can improve ourselves, why wouldn't we do that? 
That's hence the whole like who's correct thing. And it's like even with that much context, you're still like I. Ah, 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 ah. Um, I cannot believe I'm stuck in the timeline where a political opinion of the Ukrainian war is brought up on an EFAP stream in a God of War review. Yeah. The thing, man. Just baffling. Unfortunately, mad, we mad, couldn't, mad, mad world. couldn't run EFAP for a good, clean, like, 20 years from the, like, 90s, 2000s. I say that as if there would be no political references. There would be. It just wouldn't be constant. It'd be nice. About the act. I mean, we do anyway, but, you know. I cannot wait to see how much of this vid winds up in the next Gedelb. Keep up the good work, y'all. I have said before, there is no more Gedelb coming, at least for the foreseeable future. However, this would have been a quote. I say gold mine. What is what is it when it's just a fucking waterfall? It's like an overload. <laughs> Motherload. But like, it's not even positive. I'd be writing down almost everything you fucking said. It's just like, what am I supposed to do with this? Like a sewage facility? Kinda. You gotta try and figure out which one's the best one, you know? Yeah, well... Like, the, the, the ideal quotes to represent this brain rot. Yeah, there'd be, there'd be some that were, like, more famous than others. But there'd be some that would be like, I don't even want to fucking make fun of this. It's so gross, you know? Yeah, exactly. Cinematic Venom 2.0? No, I, I really want to make sure it's understood. Don't compare Cinematic Venom to this guy. Don't. It's not fair. Cinematic Venom was, like, trying to review a film that he really didn't like and come up with like arguments in favor of it that's very different than what synthetic man is the cinematic man is fine he's, he's chill he like the the lord of the rings coverage was bad but you know it's it's whatever everyone's done bad coverage of stuff it's just like uh synth synthetic man took it a little further people were like oh my god you found someone worse than hassan it's like yeah, the, the Hassan might be the one down from him. I'm trying to think in terms of like the category, the tier list of like the worst creators we've covered because Hassan's pretty bad. He's definitely um, really bad. You remember that? Like, there's that compilation good. of all the horrible shit that he said to all the people who watch him. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was. So yeah, like I, sometimes I forget how high scoring Hassan is in terms of the absolute piece of shit scale. But yeah, obviously Synthetic Man is the number one now. Yep. Jesus, what did we do to deserve this clown? I don't know. <laughs> we liked a game. That was the, the big fuck up. Sometimes, sometimes the world's just... The life gives you lemons, as they say. This guy's disgustingly obsessed with kids smashing, but shit talks Sindri about being a pedophile. Well, I guess if anyone would know, it would be him. There, there are weird comments being made throughout his coverage that make you like wonder what the fuck is the goal here. If Cinematic Venom watched Lord of the Rings wrong, does Synthetic Man qualify as watching the, in his words, movie game wrong? Dude, he already admitted himself he wasn't listening to any of the dialogue. How this, how can this man review the story? It's so funny that people will point out, like, Rags didn't play it. How can he review the story? And he knows it so much better than Synthetic Man does. I know it pretty well. Better arguments. Stop appealing to, like, optically valuable... Things like, you didn't play the game, so how can you talk about it? As if all of the people who ever, like, talked about Batwoman watched the entire seasons. Like, no, you didn't, and you know it. You haven't done meth either. But yet you comment on taking meth, Rags. You wow. dig it. I'm very pro-meth. Uh, how is this one guy the five worst people you've covered? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Synthetic Man might just be the most dishonest person you've covered. This is astounding. Yeah, it's amazing how so. much you, you find out that he, like, omits or changes in order to sell a particular image. It's, um... Yeah, and it's the open acknowledgement of it and still carrying forward. Saying Synthetic Man has a room temperature IQ is a self-report. You would have to live in Antarctica. <laughs> He's got cold brain. <laughs> also, hi from across the ditch, Fringy. Oh, hey. Is that what the Pacific Ocean is? A ditch? Or, I guess, I guess so. alternatively, it could be across the Indian Ocean. Do you have any ditches nearby? Maybe they just live close to you. Australia is a very flat country. It's not, it's not a very... Uh, it's not, it's, it doesn't have many peaks or dips, really. Like, our tallest mountain is only, like, a few kilometers tall. Like, hmm. like in fact, it might be less than... How, how, how tall is Kosciuszko? I can never spell it correctly. 
Yeah, so Mount Yeah, that's what I mean. Mount Kosciuszko is two is two point two kilometers tall. Well wow. that's that's how high it is. For reference, Everest is over eight kilometers high. The elevation of the peak is two uh is two point two kilometers. That is its height. You guys ever wanted to do something like climb Everest or anything? No. Not Everest. No. I don't know that there's any mountain I'm particularly motivated to climb. Something I've been watching on YouTube is uh there's like channels where it's it's like this guy who just explores caves. Um but like they they it's it's like these really narrow caves. Um and then like once they can squeeze through those really small crevices and everywhere, they can get into these really interesting locations where there's like formations yeah. from you know, in limestone and 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 lava, magma. And, like it's really cool. But I would never do that. No, nope, like I, I don't think there's, there's there's no amount that you could pay me. I think to make me do that. Um, that's I get terrifying. an automatic terrifying feeling when I see like moving through smaller and smaller spaces. It's not even a, a well, necessary. Yeah. I'm not claustrophobic if I know I have an escape. I don't mind being enclosed in something if I know, um, I can get out. It's it's when if something like an environment where it's like wait I could get snagged here and there's a possibility I can get jammed. I, that's that's the thing that's scary about it, right? You're you're climbing into these incredibly dark places where you 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 like because sometimes they know like that the places have been mapped, but then other times they're not, and so it's like you're going head first or feet first into an area that you don't quite know what it looks like, you don't quite know how big it is, and you're not quite sure how you're going to get out. I guess if they're doing because they seem to have a lot of like strategies and techniques and methods of of maneuvering through these spaces, right? Like different orientation feet first head first where their arms are placed like they obviously do it a lot but like no thanks <laughs> like no thank you um but I, I i guess that's like another example of something where it's like that's pretty cool but like if you can do it and you're able to do it but like i don't want to do it <laughs> and for me mount everest is one of those things it's like i don't think that the idea of going to that place is cool enough for me to want to endure all of the challenges of getting there and especially the fact that, like, you have a chance of dying that isn't small. Though, as I understand it, there are, like, K2 is more dangerous than Mount Everest. Um, more people have died ascending K2, I believe. No, or not more people, but a higher percentage of people who have attempted to summit K2. Uh, and then there are some that are, like, sheer vertical climbs and stuff. It's just like, yeah, some of these mountains are a real, uh, a real scary. Yeah, so so for instance, uh, of the five highest mountains in the world, K2 is the deadliest. One person dies on the mountain for every four who reach the summit. Damn. Meanwhile, I think Mount Everest does not have that same ratio. Um, I, I, I guess to some extent... What's that, sorry? I wonder what it is. Uh, I, I'm not sure, actually. Um, let's see. More Wikipedia, people, maybe it doesn't have the that. reputation as Everest, so people underestimate it. Or uh, I think it's I think it's it's probably a combination of two things. One, it is a fundamentally more difficult climb, yeah. uh, and second, it might be that because less people climb it, it's less fully sorted. Maybe I know that like there's different uh, there's different ways to get to Mount Everest. There's like different different um, different Miles. climbs. Yeah. But then again, you've got like these really disastrous because there was that one in 1996. They made a movie about it where like I think like seven or eight people, no, fifteen people died um, during the 1996 season. Eight climbers died over the course of two days because there was a blizzard that uh, uh, that rocked up, and so a lot of people died there. And of course, the really grim part is that you you can't bring those people back down. Um, it's too dangerous. So you you die on yeah, Everest. They stay up there. Stuck there. Yeah, I think there's a, there's I think there's a guy called Green Boots that everybody passes to get to the summit. <clears throat> He's a guy who's got like very prominent green boots on, and so it's like there's all of these sort of reminders as people go up the mountain of people who didn't make it, um, to remind them of just how dangerous it is. But I mean, a lot of people climb it at this point. Yeah, there's a graph. Some years, you know, like it's it's on average now, like since two thousand, like past two thousand ten, it looks like there's on average like. 400 people attempting to to summit yeah in fact like yeah that's it's a lot of people 807 people in 2018 so a lot of people do it um and i mean it's an incredible accomplishment for those people but no no thank you <laughs> i'm not doing that either of you guys watched the yeah. internet story and video about the cave thing 
I go through caves and stuff. I watched some of it. Yeah. That was like a story I never knew happened and fucking terrifying, right? Like, especially Why? that far back in history. Just, I, I'm uh... Like... Hmm. Okay. I, I don't think I've seen that. Uh, it's like the premise is like it's a guy who would sort of find really interesting caves and then uh dig it so that it's ready for you know the public to be able to visit and then i guess try and make some money from it sort of thing and he found like right. a really really good one it was difficult to get in and out in and out in and out and they describe the process where it's like you have like your lantern and so much digging material and, and, and you go in for X amount of time and it was just this fucking tiny gap that he went through every single time and uh, yeah one time uh, he got stuck like a, a rock fell and it just jammed his leg uh... and uh, I think it took like two days for him to first be found and then he was fed like you know a sandwich and, and some drinks here and then they kept him alive for a really long time but he eventually just died because they couldn't get him out damn fucking horrible and then he has like this whole post thing about how everyone had to fight over his body because it was like a public attraction because the, like it became a huge effort uh, to get him out. right right oh but i was just thinking about that that environment where you just you get stuck in the absolute darkness that oh. yeah like that there's that that's um that's a particularly grim sort of scenario to think about yeah, and I enjoy visiting caves whenever we go someplace and there's a cave around us. Like, well, yeah, like in there. regular normal but, caves that you can walk through comfortably, not these well, crazy, dark, like, deep caves. Well, no, a lot of the you. times it's just the safe places of the cave. Um, when, I went to, when we went to South Dakota, we went to Wind Cave, which as of 2019 had uh, surpassed 150 miles mapped uh, with more to go. And it's the densest cave, I think, in the world in terms of the the amount of mileage in there versus how much space it occupies. Right. Um, and they have, you know, they have a visitor center and everything like that. I think it was the first cave to become a, ma a national park. But just going there and looking at the pictures and looking at the maps and having them explain, you know, they have this like one of the, there's a huge map on one of the walls that shows the map of the cave and all of the passageways and it's just all the dotted lines where they just stopped and came back and they're still it goes more further and further and further and they don't they have no idea how big the actual cave is because you, you you can only explore well, you so gotta much. go in and exp yeah like which is really crazy to think about because i uh i watched a video where it's it's the deepest cave in the world it's i think it's in the it's in the Caucasus mountains um and it's it's like i, I think it's like it's three four kilometers deep uh or i think i, I think it's 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 very deep and um it's very uh, very of very of kina cave in uh, sounds like georgia like depth of and like 2.2 uh kilometers yeah that's the one and like they kept going back down and each time they went back down they found out oh it's actually deeper oh wait it's actually deeper and it's even deeper than that like it, they just kept discovering that it was deeper and deeper and then at the bottom there's this big like network of uh of smaller like sections um and it's, I, I mean yeah that's like the nature like a cave could just keep going who knows and then yeah at some point it might just be too difficult to get to certain places but i mean it's it's interesting to think about how those things like form over the course of you know thousands hundreds of thousands millions of years um but i mean yeah no thanks <laughs> like like that's that's interesting but yeah no thank you I like I like when you get to go on those just sort of big spacious caves where they've got like a little walking path in there and you can see all of the formations. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really neat. That kind of stuff's really cool. Um, nice and and comfortable and cozy, not not terrifying. Yeah, where it, where it's you just go down there and it's cold and then you get back up and that's that and everything's lit and they always have that point in the tour where they turn off all the lights so you can imagine just like being down there. Or like, you know, the, when the first crazy ass people came down here, they just had like a candle. And so they'll light a candle with no other lights. You know, like, yep, this is what they used to explore the cave. Just this, this candle. Yep. Imagine doing <laughs> that. I had, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll imagine doing it because I ain't doing it. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, it takes a kind of special kind of person to do that because. Oof. Well, it's the same as climbing mountains, right? It's uh, it's um. Jeez, I'd rather climb a mountain than of... explore a cave, honestly. Um, I 
think if I had to have a choice between it going up the highest mountain or exploring the deepest cave, I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably take the mountain, I think. I don't know what it is. Even though I, even though they're both, like, dangerous, I feel like the mountain is, is the one that I would prefer. I think I could just mentally handle it far better. Yeah, I think so. Because that's a men the mental aspect is a huge part of it, you know? I, yeah, as we've I been talking, I've just been reading about, um, because I had heard about this, because um, it's contested. Or it's not, it's not quite contested, but there's some question as to whether... I can't remember the guy's name. The first guy to successfully climb Mount Everest was actually the first guy to successfully summit the mountain because there was uh, George Mallory and there was this other guy who went with him. They went in an expedition, yeah, like in 1924 and they died and they didn't find them. They found George Mallory like 75 years later um, and he was last seen a fairly short distance from the summit before he was lost and they couldn't find him. So it's like a question of maybe he actually did reach it first. Um, and then he, maybe yeah. He and he died on the way back. But I mean, you can never know. You'd never know whether or not he made it or not. Because yeah, like they did a lot of those expeditions, but now it's it's at the point where it's more of like a tourism thing. Obviously it's an extreme accomplishment, but there's like tours and groups that will do it and help you get there. And like, there's all the infrastructure up there that didn't exist before. The base camps, obviously, like that. That you've got the the Sherpas, right? That's what they're called, like working for months ahead of time. Yep. Or like months to prep to make sure that everybody's good to go. Yeah. But I, I ain't <laughs> I ain't climbing any mountains. Well, no, I guess mount the mountains I've climbed are just they're like manageable mountains. They're not you don't you can breathe at the top and things like that. Well, there's um, that. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to. I, the thing that always freaks me out about, like, if I was at the top of Mount Everest, is like, what if there was, like, a really strong gust of wind and I lost my footing? Like, if, I feel like that's a real possibility up there. You'd fall all the way down. Well. The base camp comic style. You just go, ow, 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 ow. Yeah, ow, like Homer Simpson when he first. falls down the gorge. I don't know. It feels like that windiness. Yeah. Um,. Though, uh, though apparently it's it's about nine hundred people have died attempting to summit Mount Everest. And it, and that's is that after K two or is it the deadliest? Well, well, mountain? so it's I think I think it's more so it's more about a ratio of the number of people who've died versus attempts uh, compared to sheer deaths. I think more people have died climbing Mount Everest, but more people have tried to climb Mount Everest. Um. But I mean, when we were saying, you know, it's like 900 people at this point are like trying to go for it every year or summiting successfully every year. It's like, yeah, there's no way that it's as, um, it's got the same ratio. As It's just as I understand it, K2 was a more difficult claim. It's just a tough one. Um, though yeah. I, I, think that, I think that there's one where it's like one in four people die. Um, but it's not among those top five tallest. Hmm. Yeah, see, there's this. Uh, on Wikipedia, it says that... <laughs> Wikipedia is your best friend, all right? K2 is yep. the only eight kilometer meter peak uh, that has never been climbed on its eastern face. Uh, a sense of almost always been made in July and August, which are typically the warmest times of the year. Uh, K2's more northern location makes it more susceptible to inclement and colder weather. Uh, the peak has now been climbed by almost all of its ridges. Yeah, so it says it's more difficult and dangerous to climb due to uh, its more inclement weather. Only 377 people have completed the ascent, whereas there have been 91 deaths. So, yeah, way less people have attempted to climb it. I climb guess that's it. probably because it's like, who wants to climb the second tallest? But it sounds like it's, it's, it's a huge accomplishment if you can actually do it, not because you're like at the highest point on land, but specifically because it's such a difficult mountain to climb. Yeah, I suppose that eventually becomes the, uh, the accolade. I did the crazy, yeah, I, scary one. But people want to people want to do the tallest one. That's what they want to do. This is just critical woke theory, lol. That's what we meant about like, the other direction, you know. This man raises so many red flags. I thought I'd gone back in time to the USSR for a second. It's kind of impressive and scary how open he is about it. A little bit. What I can tell he feels this at home with his audience. Yeah, he he feels like streaming is the place for just him and his fans, and he could you know, get away with saying a lot of stuff to them. Mm -hmm. He made that very clear. He's like, I don't have to. He said, I don't have to preach to the choir. It's like, uh -huh. yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Ugh. What I can tell is this guy doesn't want story, doesn't want plot. He only wants to hit buttons and see pretty colors. 
Hey, look, I, I'm okay with the idea that someone's like, I way prefer to play games for their gameplay, but it gets pretty cringe when you're like, if I see a cutscene, I'm gonna get fucking pissed. It's like, damn. But there was a cutscene playing, and he was like, what is, what, why is Mola like this? I'm not even playing the game. Oh, do you remember when he said, like, he doesn't believe I've played games as well? It's, it, it's all part of the cope. It's all part of the cope. Discredit pause. I don't have it so that someone said this game was good. This is the Hassan of gaming. Changed my mind. I'm pretty sure Hassan does do gaming, doesn't he? Or does he not? I don't know, actually. Um, I don't know. But he's among us. <laughs> does, does that count? I remember reading somewhere that this Asgard was also based off pre-Roman Nordic civilization. Uh, oh hey, responding to bad video essays? I was starting to think you guys didn't do that anymore. Glad to see you back to bread and butter basics. Hi Rags. Hello. It feels good to be back, honestly. I'm sure plenty of people were like, yay, and then they were like, oh. God, this is his Doom Nightmare mode in Elden Ring all over again. Literally tell me a trash at your job without telling me a trash at your job. So I heard about this. Do you know what his take was on Doom Eternal? Prompt, just assuming um, no. <laughs> no, I don't. So You were talking about synthetic fans? Yeah, I've not seen the video, but I've seen people talking about it, and apparently he said something along the lines of, like, there's no point in trying to beat the higher difficulties because you're against bots, not, like, people. It's not something you can even celebrate. Like, who would care that you can beat this game on the higher difficulties? That's a bizarre opinion to have as it a was video game like, reviewer. I saw if you're someone, not playing um, against humans, there's no point in having, you know, having... Yeah, and he was even talking about, like, getting good at it, and I saw someone say, like, did he really just shit on the entire speedrunning community? It was just like, apparently, yeah. Like... You More don't even have to go that running, far, but... You, why say speedrunning? That's just, like, games, everyone. Well, um, true, but I, I can understand why they would pick, like, challenge as a whole broad thing, right? Like, there's loads of communities that are based on not only doing it on the harder difficulties, but doing that fast, or doing that with no hits taken, or doing it with limited weaponry, you know? All kinds of... I've, I've explained this to my chat before. When I'm, like, fighting an enemy way earlier in the game than I should be, and I'm dying like a hundred times. They're like, what's wrong with you? And it's like, hey man, it's a challenge now, and I, I can do it, I know I can. Like, you could come back when it's much easier, and it's like, yeah, but then it's not the same challenge. You know, you, you can get that drive in you and stuff, so it is weird to just be like, I don't know, I, I, like, I haven't seen the video, but the thing is, when I saw that, I was like, doesn't surprise me, he comes out with some absolutely batshit opinions, so. Gotta complain about something, I guess. Um, bringing on EFAP, please. He's a real life Republican. I'm fine with bringing Republicans on. It's yeah, he ain't no that. real life Republican. He's fucking nuts. He's a crazy, crazy person. That doesn't, yeah, that's not like a factor. It's not about that at all. Hi, EFAP and guests. Love the game coverage and response. Mola, when you were reviewing this guy's streams and VODs, I'm curious if his chat, if you could see it, was pushing back on his idiocy. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, he would often say his chat is saying shit that's so much worse than what he's saying, and he was right. Uh, they would say much worse shit. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna be interested in like trying to clip out all of that or anything. It was more so just, uh, well, why do you think they're saying all that stuff? Um, have a great weekend, all. Thank you. you e. I feel like this is proof we need a Gedelb-esque hall of shame for stupid comments. This guy is a gold mine and needs chronicling. He's he definitely a mine. I don't know about gold. Yeah, he's been, he's been chronicled. It's all there. Uh, I find lol Tyler's comments interesting, that the game isn't gory enough and Atreus is too whiny for someone who was raised by Kratos. I like the story, but it could be more militant IMO. Thoughts? So, funnily enough... I think it might be a fair comment for the 2018 game that it really lacks gore. There's not a huge amount of examples of the gore in 2018. A lot of it is just he punches things to death. Um, so if that's your preference and you miss the sort of brutality of the first games, and yeah, I can see that. But I don't see it for, for Ragnarok. You saw that montage. They, no way. I just don't get it. The, the, if anything, I found it quite satisfying as someone who 
likes to sort of like annihilate an enemy when we, we, I keep thinking about that one where he like he chops it down to their head and then chops the left arm, the right arm, and then part of the torso off. Like it's just like how what what do you want at this point? Like fountains what of blood. What more can I do for you? And like the, the the Wolver kill. Funnily enough, um, the animation is similar in the 2018 game, but it's there's less blood. They added more blood in this one. Right. <clears throat> so yeah, I uh, I guess it's because people want the because the one in in God of War three right with the ogre like rip the eye out. Maybe that's what they're well, comparing it to. There's uh, there's quite a few in the. I think God of War three probably is the goriest. I'm I'm guessing. I'm looking back now. I didn't really know. Well, no, I one. think I remember Ascension was uh that one was particularly uh gory. I remember that was like oh, a, okay. A I that was brought up at the time when it came out. I don't even know that I've seen a clip of the gameplay of Ascension. I like I haven't. I think that there was one in Ascension where like when he cuts like a, a centaur in half, like its guts actually spill out, like its intestines spill out into the. Oh ground. well, they did that in uh, God of War three. Oh, okay. So yeah, uh, oh, well, yeah, maybe it's those two. Yeah, because with God of War two, it's like well, there's only so much you can do on PS two. Yeah, the guts aren't going to look as effective. Um, yeah, well, it's kind of like old PS two Mortal Kombat versus what they can do now. You know. And then as for Atreus is too whiny for someone raised by Kratos, I don't even know what to do with that. Um, Kratos was <laughs> a very very distant father for most of Atreus's life up to 2018 deliberately so that he wouldn't influence him to become a worse person because that's how much Kratos was worried about his nature affecting Atreus, but yep. um, Atreus is too whiny. Do you mean that he, like, complains and talks back? Because, of course... He still, he still does the yes sir thing. He's still yeah, sort of adhering to yep. that kind of manner of speaking, so... And that's the thing, he, uh, as you would have guessed from the 2018 game, he's very rage-fueled. He's definitely Kratos' son. Like, they, yes. they, they definitely have all of the traits that come from Kratos are in Atreus as well. Um, but yeah, he rips into Kratos every once in a while. He'll disagree with him all the time. But he's, this is the thing. He is chaotic, uh, Atreus. He's often running around doing lots of different things, very reckless. Um, but at the same time, he's got that good heart underneath a lot of it. Same for Kratos. So I don't know. Yeah, uh, I quite I quite like him as a, a Kratos' son sort of thing. I think it looks up quite a bit. As for uh, the story, you like it, but it could be more militant. I don't know, like aggressive in its messaging is what I read that as, but I'm not sure what you mean as militant. Yeah, I would need more on what you mean by a militant. Read, I'm not sure. I guess I, I read that as aggressive in its messaging. Like a story that's militant is very obvious in what it's trying to say. It's very maybe preachy, but just very assertive with its message. This is the most painful EFAP since EFAP 93. Well, <laughs> another one for the history books, I suppose. Uh, a tender <laughs> moment between husband and wife equals woke? What the fuck? Dude is an actual buzzword generator. It's just bizarre. Yeah. It gets to be too much when... It's almost like you need. I need you to explain your entire POV because at this point you just sound like an alien. I don't know what the fuck's going on. If you asked him to define what is woke, he would say, oh, you know... We all know. Yeah, well, remember vague. when he when he when he described uh, uh, Gryla as a uh, black voodoo magic lady, and I remember seeing a comment saying like, "Why did he say voodoo? Is it literally because she's black?" Yes. Just like fuck me, man. And then he was like, "If you don't admit this is horribly cringe, you are woke without like reprieve. Like you're done. You're just woke forever or whatever." It's like, what does that even mean? I don't understand you. I just finished two live performances of the stage musical Holiday Inn, and you guys are still going. Yeah. It was a long boy. A long boy. This it dude's name indeed. needs to be added to a registry, and he should be banned from being within a thousand yards of a story. Let him, let him have the stories he likes. Just keep him away from reviewing things he does nothing about. Man literally only remembers Kratos for the violence and rage. There were times in the old games he showed other emotions, but he's supposed to be a real fan of these games. Get the fuck out. Would well, you remember the part where he said he was outraged that Kratos cried in Ragnarok? Then he said, well, there are no tears, but he's crying. And then he pauses, and then he's like, I don't think he cried in the originals. I, I don't think. And he was like, 
pausing because he realizes, oh shit, there are a couple of scenes where he's like dealing with the loss. Pretty of his... sad. Yeah, it's just like, oh shit, did he cry? Fuck, because if he did, that ruins my whole argument. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> careful. He had he had quite an interesting fucking view of the original games where he just like completely forgot what happened in them. A lot of people seem to. Mola has free enterprise in his head. Dude, I was surprised how much he would talk about me. I was going through those streams. Not something I expected. He wants this game to be Doom. Yeah, I think he'd be happier if it was Doom. Yeah. Um, I'll grow up with you, but I can't grow up for you. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. One day, drinking water casually, when out of the blue you hear 10 out of 10 water. Yeah, Mola likes this, if you didn't know. <laughs> it makes you woke. Also, hi, Wags. Hello. This one just says Mola likes it. Uh oh. Remember that. Remember Must that. be bad. Mola likes it. Yep. Ooh. Another quarter to the long man bad jar. Why not? Yeah. Rags' obvious flaw is that he's flawless. Oh, that's kind of you to say. Which means I know where we are now in terms of video coverage. We're at that point. Uh, yeah. I wonder if this guy can explain exactly how EFAP completely changed when Wolf left. Look, I miss him too, but come on. Anyways, play DDLC, Dumbos. Um, it does come up. I think everyone loves a narrative, right? And it's like, when would it make sense to say EFAP well, changed? Most of us do. I'm, I'm, I, I, I understand what you're getting at, but like, he, he made up his own narratives for how bad the game was, right? Um, I, oh yeah, I guess in terms of this guy. Um, <sighs> so yeah, like, when, if, if you're someone who liked EFAP at some point and doesn't anymore, what is, like, the changing point? And, uh, there was an assumption it might be where people be like, oh, when Fringy joined, there you go. That's, because that's an event, and it happened at a decent time, maybe, that makes some sense or whatever, but a lot maybe of people will pick... Maybe it's end of one of our arcs. People will pick when Wolf left, and it's just like, do you even know when that was? It was a long time well, ago. how many years ago it was at this point, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it just, I think they pick it because it just makes sense. It just, in, in your head, it's sort of just optically, sort of just like, yeah, that, that was it. It was, because Wolf was really, really super cool and awesome, and he was what made EFAP, uh, worthwhile. He was more edgy, he was more real. And it's like, yeah. I think they may have gotten a strange idea of it. It's funny because, like, I wonder if uh, Wolf from even when we first started EFAP, I wonder what he'd have to say about uh, God of War 2018 and Ragnarok. Hmm. I don't think he'd be called it woke. FYI. I highly so. doubt it. Uh, Doctor Strange 2 Unbridled Rage was a magnum freaking opus. I would gladly wait months for another video of that caliber. Well, so that's the thing. When he was like, he doesn't do any work, I was just like, but dude. You think I did, like, when you edit, when you, when you have the process you do, and then you see that I put one video out per, like, three months or whatever, that translates in your head, like, wow, you must be doing nothing. And I'm like, we do not have the same process. <laughs> we, you pump shit out without knowing anything about what you're talking about. I can't do that. It'd be fucking nuts. And yes, that, uh, that Doctor Strange video took forever to make. Drooling. But more than just me, too. Uh, take my money harder, Daddy. You're my favorite e-celeb. Hi, doggy. Hello. Oh, hi, doggy. The correct term is longoid. I am indeed a longoid. Longoid, longolton. McLongs a lot. <laughs> this guy Stretched. is Movie Bob's morality, Jack Saint's character, Jabo's honesty, Quinton's talent, and Joseph Anderson's humor all in one. Oh. Oof. What a... What a breakdown. That's uh, what a list of incredible traits that you yeah. have. Uh, the thief thinks that everyone steals. There you go. That about sums up what I was trying to say just then. <laughs> it's like yeah, pretty much. Yeah. He's his projecting approach, his flaws onto yeah. everyone else. Yeah. I've paid two bucks to simply say this guy is pain. And to think these super chats, they're not even ready for what's about to happen. We get into that point. Two bucks well spent, I would say. Uh, this guy makes Cinematic Venom look reasonable. He makes him look normal. Cinematic Venom was, uh, surprising to us when we covered him, but in retrospect, feels almost like chill now. Yeah, he's a pretty, pretty chill dude. 
Yeah. He seems, dare I say, normal in comparison. <laughs> I don't think he said a cuck can't write well, just that this guy is a cuck, so how could he write for a Chad? Not sure if Birch had too much input with his normal wokeness, he just wrote the story. What even? I don't even know what I'm supposed to do with why, this. Why are we even like, exploring this line of Can a thought? cuck write for a Chad? It's like, what the fuck? Can a man write for a woman? Oh, jeez. I don't know. I guess he can, because look at what... Some people said, like, he only wrote side quests. Like, some of the side quest stuff is amazing. So, there's this weird thing that sort of happened. Like, you know if Knives Out was amazing? Like, the yeah. writing was just some of the best we've ever seen? I think people would be like, no, but it was written by Ryan jo when When it's like, no, 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 you don't need to do this whole, like, ah, how do we reconcile? It's like, it's easy. He just really fucking tried on that one. That's all you have to do in your brain. It doesn't have to be that, like, if he wrote TLJ, he can't possibly write. It's like, no, 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 it's possible. Look at Taika Waititi, right? He made Ragnarok and Lord Th Love and Thunder. Those two films, they're like night and day in terms of like an approach for caring about the characters and trying to have like some level of comedic pacing. I actually recommend Drinker's uh, video comparing two very similar scenes from both video uh, films. To give you an idea, but like, yeah, we've got Ridley Scott example, James Cameron. We've got plenty of these creators that did amazing things and kind of shit things. Um, it just, that's just it, that can happen. And so, if you're like, Anthony Birch is a terrible writer, he couldn't possibly have been that involved in this. In fact, it's proof that this is badly written. It's like, you, you're going about this backwards. You're like, reverse engine, not even, no, reverse engineering is a good thing. In terms of getting yourself information. This is, this is just like, false positives based on biases. You're supposed to remove those. Now, when, when like, a new project is coming out, and we check out who's making it, and we're like, oh, fuck, it's this guy. That's still not a guarantee of it being bad. We've been over this before. There's still a chance. I remember saying there's still a chance that the Jurassic World Dominion would be good. There's a chance. <laughs> but then I get it's told it's worse than Fallen one. Kingdoms. Like, oh, fuck's sake. Yeah. Tried sending this chat six hours ago, but had to change my Google password. Been rewatching this EFAP series. I am halfway through EFAP 23 now. It has been a great ride, and here's to another 200 faps. Hi, Rags. May the dawn bless. Oh, hello to you, and dawn bless you as well. Enjoy your uh, your adventure. You're on 23. Absolutely. You've got several months left, <laughs> so you'll be good to go. <laughs> yeah. um, Goodell, but they don't make games for men anymore. Uh. Uh. <laughs> uh. Correct. No games for men anymore. No. Here's something no, that's... Te definitely not. Only girls, I've... only girly boys play video games. Well, do you do you remember in the Simpsons movie how like Flanders makes this hot like chocolate? It yeah, it's like this work of art. I just found a YouTube video where a guy like tries to recreate it. It's really neat. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He didn't. It did. It, it took him a little bit longer than it took Flanders to prepare, but nevertheless. <laughs> well, no one can be neat. as perfect as Flanders. Well, I mean, it's it's hard to compete with an animated character in terms of that kind of speed, but it's it's neat. Ninja Gaiden for the NES, which came out in the 80s, had story and cutscenes. Look, whatever, man. Well, yeah, like, the, the problem is that we're talking about, like, again, cutscenes is kind of a, it's kind of an awkward way to describe it, because, like, is it a cutscene when, like, if you're playing Super Metroid and you've got, like, the opening, like, sequence where you've got the information being conveyed to you about, like, yeah, you're heading to the planet and you, this is what you gotta do. You know, is that, like, a cutscene? It's like it's it's story being conveyed in a video game, but like I don't know if you know what I mean. Like I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I feel good. like cutscene. But... Cutscene is a. It's funny because he was one of those people who's like, oh yeah, you haven't played like games from, from like the games I've played in the past. It's like you're looking at it from a very like three D onward perspective um, about cutscenes and gameplay because games have conveyed story through non interactive moments, but like they wouldn't be described as a cutscene, you know. Well, I'm also very fucking tired because a lot of these things, like we're trying to deal with the arguments as presented as though they have like some level of weight, but I already disagree at the premise. So sometimes I just can't be bothered. Like, yes, yeah. Like I've got to prove that cutscenes have existed for a long time. Like, no, I shouldn't even bother. Like, why have we agreed suddenly or something in some weird way that oh, the like, presence totally... of cutscenes is ruining it as a game? It's like, what the fuck? Do people feel that way about like the old Final Fantasy games that would have like extended segments of story? Also, well, part of his point, right? Because they're they're like. Do you remember text what he boxes. said? He was like, 
of the games that actually did do like more things with cutscenes, they were notable for that, as if to imply any that strayed from the formula of basically zero cutscenes were notable for it. It's like so not bad, That's... just notable. But also like no, not like there's a lot of adventure point and click adventure games what were like in the nineties. There were a lot of those. There were a lot, anyway. a lot of JRPGs. I know, but even if we were to entertain that argument. It's just like, I don't know, you're looking at video games delivering narrative through a very 3D perspective when there are a lot of 2D games that convey narrative in different ways. Well, like, is a cutscene when like... you're playing, like, Ocarina of Time and you're talking to other characters, you know? Like, is that a cutscene? Is that acceptable? I feel like the argument or, got uh... annihilated when he said, like, oh, I'm rushing through to do the story, and then at the end it was really fun because I got to do all of the gameplay. It's like, that was always there. You could always do more of the gameplay that was stuff. always, yeah, but you didn't do it <laughs> when it's literally fucking signposted like you can go when, when characters said, are like why don't you yeah. go and do some other stuff exactly mamira is prompting you to fucking explore and, and he makes fun of it he's like huh, they want me to check out the other side content it's like it's the game it's the video game yeah <laughs> like I, it's the game <laughs> Like I said, I am just I uh, presenting like like being like it's a movie. Remember, I think I said this at the beginning. It's like it's a movie game. And I'm just like, is that is that Denigre in it or is that a category? I can't tell. I'm, I'm fine with uh, the ca it, category. If it should probably be a category, I think at this point. But well, because it's a denigration, it, it, it's more complicated than that. That's what they. I'm pretty sure that's what they're intending for it to be, though. Like the pulling in a movie game would offend me. It's like it's yeah, like, like you the, like the a snowy, movie game when I'm just like, well, do you mean like yeah. a narrative focused game with lots of cutscenes? I just feel like that's fine. The snowy movie games, <laughs> which is well, funny. I mean, I, it's like I'm how embarrassing to like a movie, movie game. Games. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, I don't we know. all know that. It's totally well, embarrassing. I mean, it's kind of awkward to say it's embarrassing to like any genre of game, like specifically. Just like, saying, it's like saying it's embarrassing to like a first a military first person shooter. It's like, can we? That is, to be fair, that that's well, that's not a good example because that is embarrassing. But but generally, yeah, that's uh, that's. Not... I just like that he actually honestly thought he had the answer, right? The whole, you're allowed cutscenes if they last one minute. Five minutes if it's, it's important. It's like, oh my these thoughts God. pop into his head and he like says them. Like he out said loud. As, as if There's... the line between non-movie game and movie game is like, did you go over the one minute marker? You, you did, oh you fuck, you little shit. You, you've become a movie game now. It doesn't matter how good those cutscenes are. <laughs> exactly. It's. I mean, it's if we're talking about games from the era that he often praised, right? Like sixth generation, like Jack and Daxter. There's a lot of cutscenes in like Jack two and three, but they're really funny and entertaining. So like, I'm happy to watch them. Same with Ratchet and Clank. Same with a lot of games. I mean, Grand Theft Auto has tons of cutscenes. Like the PlayStation, even even like Grand Theft Auto three has like a good amount of cutscenes. But then once you get into Vice City and San Andreas, there is a lot of story. Well, and there's a lot of story that gets conveyed while you're, like, driving between locations. That's, like, a pretty common vehicle for storytelling in, in Rockstar games. And Max Payne 3. I really like Max Payne 3. And that game has a lot of cutscenes, and some of them are quite long. It feels to me like it's, it's just the wrong response. If someone says... Yep. I love this game, and it's one of the greatest games of all time. You're like, oh, okay. What's, what's the deal here with it? It's like, well... It is two hours of cutscene, ten minutes of gameplay, two hours of cutscene, five minutes of gameplay, two hours of cutscene, half an hour of gameplay, and then the end. My response isn't, bro, I play games to play games. I'd be like, wow, that seems really unconventional. Are these cutscenes, like, real fucking good? And like, yeah, not only that, but the gameplay has been lauded as some of the best of all time. You'd be like, whoa. Which I yeah, exactly. And I mean, when it comes to delivery of story, there, there's a lot of different options available in video games. Video games have a lot of options, really. Because you can look at something that's more environmental storytelling. A lot of stealth games like Metroid Prime and... Not that Metroid Prime is... A, a lot of stealth games. And then there's also like Metroid Prime. And, uh, you know, like games where it's, it's much more about soaking in the environment and the, uh, and the, the ambience or the ambiance. Okay. And um, piecing things together as you go. Uh, of course, RPGs a lot of the time kind of let you uh, explore the story at your own pace and to the depth that you're happy with. Like, if you're playing Mass Effect, you don't have to talk to just, everybody and explore every dialogue option. I want it to be good. I don't really care how much cutscene there is. I don't care good. how. I, 
Well, yeah, it's I, I only care how in so far as whether it's good or bad. I, I don't know that there's any, like... I have preferences sometimes, sure, but, like, as, if it's yeah, good, if it's went, good. That's that's it. If you're... I was about to say, like, with maybe, like, a chess or a Pac-Man or Space Invaders, but, like, a newer version comes out and they run a story mode for Tetris. It's like you're a kid who joins a tournament for Tetris, and so there's, like, a 10-minute cutscene to establish all of that. You... you play against your friend and it goes to the Tetris normal screen, right? And winning it means you beat your friend and then the story continues in the form of cutscenes. And then, you know, if someone was like, I just wanted to fucking play Tetris, man. I don't care about whatever this story thing is. I, I would automatically assume there's a that story mode. That there's yeah. other modes. There's no free play option, yeah. And so then if someone mode. said, well, I want that for God of War. I just want to kill stuff. I don't have to deal with a fucking story. I should be like, oh, I'm sorry. That's just like the format that's, that they're running with and how well, yeah, it's, it'd be kind of the same as like, I want a first person shoot in God of War. It's like, well, that's not what or, it is. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I want horde mode. And they're just like, we don't have that. Like, oh, well, no. I want it. Like, okay, but you it's can't like, say like the game is bad because it didn't have the mode I wanted. No, it's more complicated than that. Yeah, like it, it, there, are, there are contexts where you bring that up, but you, yeah, you've got to be more engage with it for what it is as a format of media. It's it does come across sometimes as weird as like I didn't like this piece of music because there was no visuals to to accompany it, and you're listening to like an album. And it's like what do you mean? like? I didn't mm. like this book because I couldn't hear any of it. <laughs> yeah. Just it's, kind of the odd. capacity is all wrong, and this is the thing. I just I fundamentally don't know why. They feel like it's done when they say it's a movie game. Like, I've made my criticism. I'm like, you've just talked about a category that you've I'm not even against. what it is. Yeah. And, yeah, and it turns into, like, yeah, you guys aren't gamers because you want movies in your games or something. I mean, you know, I like my, I like my very, I like games like God of War Ragnarok, and I like very gameplay-focused titles as well. Yep, I like the lot. I just mm -hmm. want whatever it is to be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And whatever it's trying to be, as long as it's good, I don't, I don't see what the problem would be. Well, that's why I try to push it to an extreme. If I had a game that was ten hours of cutscene and ten minutes of gameplay, and that was the totality of the whole experience, and I know the first thing you say is like, "That sounds absolutely insane." It's like, "Yeah, but what if it was really good, though?" What if the story? Yeah, what if what if the story and the characters and the you know the the plot of the cutscenes was actually very very compelling. And, like, if someone then said, like, well, should it really be called a game at that point? I'd be like, that's a fair question, but that doesn't it's make it bad. It's just a different question. Well, whatever it is that thing. you call this thing is good. Yeah, yeah I think that's the important <laughs> think that's part. It, it is yeah. a different question. It is not... It, it, is a, it is a fair question, but it is a different question. And so if you were like, God of War Ragnarok doesn't deserve to be called a game, I'd be like, call it whatever you want. It's good. <laughs> also, yeah. good luck calling it anything other than a game. It's a video game, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah for, for the record, I don't know how you categorize that as anything other than a game. I, I, you're just a you're just a fool. If you want I mean, to call it a idiot. movie game, and movie games refer to games that uh, have a large amount of cutscenes, I yeah, sure, fine, yeah, I'll yeah, sure, I'll take it, do it. Still a game. <laughs> so, dun dun dun. This guy is projecting so hard, I can use him to drive. Use him as a drive-in movie theater. <laughs> oh ho! Oh ho! Fake quick time event? No, no. The quick time event is there. It might be bad. It might be stupid, but it's real. It's it's a it's not a quick time event though. What's the quick time a event? Quick time when, event. Again, it's when a tutorial. Kratos throws the hammer, like the oh, not the hammer, the axe at the tree at the beginning of God of War twenty eighteen. Making yeah, sure you know that. the button to press to this new mechanic that we're giving you, or this this, this when, mechanic that we're giving you, you need to know what the button is. This is the button. Press that button to proceed to confirm. When I was describing the the annoyance with the menus at the beginning, right, where it says like press X, now press L one to go to the new tab, now press X. It's like annoying to go through all of it. But I wouldn't describe all of them as quick time events. I can't fail. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? I like I said, it just feels like you've found a roundabout way of describing something to avoid describing what it actually is. But I don't necessarily blame anybody for being like, oh, I can't fail this? Okay. But to then complain and call it a fake quick time event is like, uh-oh. I feel like now you you've gone a little bit too far. It. Yeah, just recognize yeah, you... for what it is. Um, is. I'd say take a shot every time he says leftist, but you'd be dead in five seconds. Uh, I am. I, I imagine he has called us soy and woke about a hundred times by now. 
that's all he knows to do is just call things soy, well, call things woke, and act as if that's just self evident, you know, self evident for why it's bad. I guess you have to appreciate how thankful we should be that he's he's making up for our lack of being called lefty and woke. You know, we called we've got a lot of racism and homophobia, blah blah blah. We we haven't had a lot of you are woke since no bullshit, you know, it's been a while. So he's, it's uh, true, it has he's trying to make while. up for it, he's adding a lot. I like being the alt right leftist. It's fun. There is a, like I've been called on the internet on the same fucking day on the internet. I've been called a fascist and a libertarian. Instead of watching this ten hour supercut, you could listen to the Ragnarok roughly soundtrack five times on Spotify. It's around two hours long. Hi Rags. Hello. You could, you could put it on the background of listening to the ten hour supercut. Yeah, to make it seem really <laughs> dynamic. A really epic EFAP, I suppose. Kratos <clears throat> doesn't like sand. It's coarse and rough and gets everywhere. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm high as fuck right now. Hope you're having a great stream. Hell yeah. Good call, though, yeah. I fell asleep and woke. Uh, just woke back up. Hail the long. Hail. I, Lesrubius Bagglesnatch, do solemnly swear to finish my TFA series by the spring. Well, I don't know who that guy is, but apparently that's what he's promising to do. <laughs> I'm trying to trick you into <laughs> swearing to deliver it on that. I guess so, yeah. That night. Today's December 11th covering Synthetic Man's after main video highlightisms. Drink water and take care. Whips and chains, brothers. Whips and chains. Whips and chains. Whips and chains. This child is from Bizarro, California. Bizarro, California. The other yeah, the, the the flip flop negaverse of our own in the multiverse. He's the reverse of everything. If he was an NPC in a game, we would complain about how, uh, how unrealistic he is. I mean, no one actually exists like this, right? Dude, they're way worse than him in his comments action. Holy shit. I was talking to Rags about it the other day. I don't even want to say what they were saying in there. Uh, it's getting highlighted in the Discord. And some of it, I was just like, you're not serious. That's not actually being written. It's like, yep. This is the straw man of rightoids lefties make, lol. So, this is the thing. When you see people like him exist, and if you see like five of them in a row, or even ten, because this is the problem with the internet, when you get into certain partisan bubbles, you start receiving the worst of your enemy all the time. And so you yeah. don't, you start to forget that there are normal people. And it goes both ways. If you see many of him in a row, and then you see something like EFAP, where we may have some signifiers that we may in some way agree with him on something in some way, and then they just go like, oh, so you guys are just like him. And it's like, no, 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 no. This is why you have to take everybody individually instead of trying to do this fucking shortcut shit because you go hyper-tribalism. Sucks, but that's like, that's just what the internet's evolved into now. Hence why we basically piss off everybody. Uh. <laughs> I now feel bad for ever watching Synth. I never watched his streams. I mean, Jesus Christ, my dude. I, I think only the hardcore folks did. Dude, there, there was somebody in chat who was like, oh no, is that what he meant by they? Who was like a fan of his? It's just like, so when people show up into the streams, they probably aren't paying enough attention to quite get what's being said, but... Man, if I was there live as a fan and he said that Angra Boda shit, holy fuck. I'd be like, oh, 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 yeah. oh, I'm leaving and I'm not coming back. Too far down the rabbit hole. Well, so this is the thing. Uh, what, what can pull people out of stuff like that? It's like usually not being preached at for how they're a bad person or anything. It can be a story they really love and it has some values in it that gets instilled and then they can start to understand a bit better. Or they have someone that they absolutely love and trust and that person says like, hey, maybe you're wrong about this thing. And it's so, so funny. I've seen this sentiment in other places, but it's like, damn, God War Ragnarok is kind of one of the perfect games to help him out of his like crazy spiral. Finally, he was paying more attention to it. It's not even that, he really, was, is it? He was, the... Yeah, it wasn't even that. He was never... 
he never wanted to hear it. He yeah, never like wanted a willingness to, to take on it. board, a willingness to actually take on board, like what the film was trying. Uh the... <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> the, the what the what the game was uh, trying to say. Well, that's the thing. For the record, it could have been a film. They probably could have done it that way. Um, it anime would have lost even. a lot, though. That would have been tough. Well, but like, it, for such a I big just story. I feel like again, I feel like an alien sometimes. Where I'm just like, there was like fucking fifty hours of gameplay that I went through. So I don't, yeah, I don't understand what is being said here. Like, yes, there's a lot of cutscenes, but there's a shit ton of gameplay, which is pretty funny because like the gameplay in totality, I think for God of War three amounts to. I think my playthrough was eight hours. So it was probably like seven hours of gameplay and then one hour of either soft or hard cutscenes. And so that ratio probably reflects the ratio in uh, in Ragnarok, at least to some degree. And even if it doesn't meet, meet it one-to-one, that's fine. Um, It's just so weird, right? Like, you spend so much time doing combat and... Ex- I was about to say, and exploring, but I don't know. Judging from his video, it was unclear if he considers exploring cutscenes, remember? Um, right. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It says, name the Welsh. What do you mean? Dude, we're not in a rabbit hole. We're in a goddamn black hole. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> kind of. No rational thought can escape. You'll probably miss this stream, but since you guys didn't bring it up in your two-parter stream, I just wanted to bring up Odin not destroying the realm gates with his magic cannons earlier. The lack of planning by Kratos. Lack of planning? Um, the goal... I think Kratos... So Kratos' plan, they they go over it a couple of times, was to activate Serta, and uh, he's, like, prophesied to use the floor that uh, Hrimthor put into the Asgardian wall. And then, of course, they, they're using Helheim and Alfheim armies to push back on the forces of Asgard. When they arrive... The machines of war are already destroying the towers so that they can't bring in reinforcements. So one of the questions I saw brought up, it was this was even on one of my streams, I think, like the part 10 or 11, was why didn't Odin destroy uh, the realm towers well ahead of time? And um, the only thing I've got for that uh, is that it seems that, like, that he needed those uh, dwarven war machine things to do it. He designed them, he was prepping them to use them for that purpose, and the dwarves delayed it as much as possible, invented all kinds of reasons for why they couldn't be made, right? Because they were always waiting to subvert him. Or he was, or Odin might have seen a use for him, him for those himself, being this, able to, you know, having these portals around. It's possible, um, especially with the, the Midgardians. It's likely he may have used a realm tower to get the Midgardians from Midgard to Asgard, so it's possible Odin would want to keep them for his own benefit until they become a threat. And then, of course, the dwarves fucked him over with the, the flaws in the machines themselves. So, um, but no, I, I think it's a fair question to have about how exactly everything's working out there. You sort of have to go with the lack of info. Like, there's a vagueness to it that you have to sort of fill in some blanks. Like, I assume that uh, he wanted to get those weapons as ready as soon as possible, and that was as soon as they were ready. Um, and of course, uh, if you remember, he says when he's got the mask and the, the thing has happened with Brock, he says, uh, I guess it's war after all. Like, that was the moment that he decided, okay, war is actually happening. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, well, this was a wild EFAP. Don't forget to go outside, y'all. Being chronically online isn't pretty. Hi, Fringy. Hey, yeah, walks are good. Yeah, walks chronically are very online, good. very bad. Um, oh, and another thing as well, because I can't remember if we went over it, but um, I remember on my first and second playthroughs being very confused as to how Angraboda travels. And so apparently the answer is the same way that Loki does, slash Atreus. But when... It's, I'm not even sure if it's when you go to sleep. You have to think of a place really hard and giants can, like, teleport to them? Question mark? They have to go through that weird area he went through first or something, because she mentions that place being a bit rocky sometimes or something, as if she does it as well, and that's how she's moving around. So that answers that, I suppose. But the other question was, how did she manage to find Atreus all the time? And her answer to that in the game is she throws his marble at him when he says it, as if the marble allows her to lock on to wherever he is. 
I'm not sure how that makes any sense. Because mm. uh, mechanically speaking, of course, this is fantasy, so you can just tell me, like, her holding that marble gives her a sense of where he is in whatever realm he's in. It's like, okay. What is... How is the marble made? How does that work? Is when a giant is born, a marble, like, appears, or someone crafts it, and then they write their name into I it? I think it was that... something that they, were, they craft, yeah, and then it was runes or something. I guess they use some kind of magic to bind them, and then it can tell you where they are at all times. It's like, okay. One of the reasons why they can get away with a lot of this is because all the giants are fucking gone. So not many of them even, you know, you have him and Angraboda are the ones that can use powers, but they all seem very, um... This, this is a thing I think they would fuck up if they had more Norse stories to tell. The uh, Have you noticed, like, you go when you go into 2018, it's actually pretty damn difficult to travel from realm to realm, but by the time we hit the end of Ragnarok, there's all kinds of ways people are moving through different realms. Uh, it's becoming a lot easier and yeah. quicker. And that, it seems like an inevitability when you have a long-term story of, like, long distances, all the dimensions and stuff. Like, Game of Thrones is one of the worst for it. Like, season one... It was already reaching criticism for how fast people were getting from place to place when it was an enormous place. But by the time you hit the last season, everyone's moving around like teleporting. Absolutely. Because like we can't be asked to deal with that anymore. We got other storytelling priorities, you know. Um, for example, the question of like, did Fenrir just know how to manipulate the realm tears like perfectly as soon as he took control of uh, Garm's body? And it's like, I guess he did. I assume, yeah. I, I that one's easy for me to. You know, except given that he's he's taking over the brain inside of that body as well, um, which you know pretty clearly to me implies that you get some knowledge of that. You know, yeah, I, I think you're right. Abilities. I think there's room there to understand that one, especially being a. Um, I saw someone complain like it's incredibly convenient. She just happened to want to save them at the end and came in. It's like she was a part of the war, so there's no reason to not assume that she had some awareness of the fight that was going on. Um, and then of course she has that marble and stuff, like, all you need is for, she was battling a Valkyrie the last time we saw her when we were on the outside of the wall, so you just assume that fight came to an end in whatever way, and then she realm tears back in, and sees that they're fighting, and then once she sees, like, all she needs to do is see that Surtur is about to plow his sword into the heart of Asgard, for her to be like, holy shit, wherever Loki is right now, I need to open a tear to him. Does, and then finds all of them are there. So that that doesn't that's fine with me. I don't I don't really see any problem with that one. But um, you know, th this is the thing. It's uh, there was a lot to cover, so there's lots of phrases and criticisms that were missed. Um, oh God, you're still here. Yes, we were there. Hell of a show, guys, fellas. Great work, in all honesty. It was a tough one. The eleven and a half hours. Um. It was, uh, yeah. it felt like it really flew by, though. That, that went, some EFAPs can get, can be tough to get through. They feel like they're kind of at a crawl, but that one was like, woo, you blink and it feel like it just, it went by so fast. I was so engaged with it. It was, uh, rich with horrendously stupid shit that we could bounce off of. Um, I know a thing or two about the hen of the tie. And even then, I would nope out of his elaborate breeding scenario. Not the God of War stream we wanted. <laughs> hey, man. If you wanted the, like, wholesome praise God of War stream, we gave you two of those. And then they came a cost. Good universe. Point. We have to keep the balance of the universe, of the cosmos, the scales of, you know, something. I don't know. His ex must have taken his PlayStation. Broke. She shatters his heart into pieces. That's all I can assume. Just a miserable person. How the fuck does someone like that get made? I'm not even going to speculate, but it's super unfortunate that that happens. Yep, and continues to carry forth seemingly just without yeah. any desire to change, any desire to even have an open mind. Um, it's uh, it's a sad sight. It's really sad to see, in a way. Uh, it appears, as of the f past few minutes or hours, he privated a few streams. Oh my, I wonder why. I think they're just unlisted. He he um, does the normal thing of unlisting streams, yeah. Uh, I think that probably wouldn't be a fantastic move for him to start privating streams because it you can all want to just that, yeah you you, know. you want to be like no nah, it's yeah you know what they're there and they the the best defense is everything I said is a joke, hundred percent like okay. 
Uh, movie Bob versus Synthetic with Jared as the mediator. Oh, could you imagine? Both of them would want each other dead. Like, Movie Bob would be like, Synthetic Man, you're the reason I'm not on Mars. And then Synthetic Man would be like, Movie Bob, you're the reason we have movie games. You're the reason I'm not on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> what was the coin again? What did he say? Uh, the Republicans and their backward ass everything are the reason we haven't gotten our technological advancements to the point where he would have a cyborg body on Mars. You don't want to live on Mars. <laughs> right? It would be terraformed and beautiful would... by then, idiot. Oh, uh, why would so? What's what? What's the cyborg part? <laughs> what is that about? Well, I just, uh, I guess, it's mm. advancements in whatever you know. Has, right, wants to be a cyborg. Um, I mean, I guess you know that's like really hard, right, to get to Mars and to and no, to it wouldn't be hard if not for there. Republicans slowing us the fuck down. Right, I see. They ruined everything. Would have been we would have been running EFAP on Mars right now. <laughs> Every frame of Mars. Indeed. EFAM. Alrighty. And that's it. That's all the super chats. Oh all, all three wow. Ragnarok streams. Gadzooks. Well, and that's the end of the Ragnarok. Yes, it is. Thank you all so much for tuning in for that that wonderful time on efab that will forever be remembered i'm sure as that that thing that happened that's Very right strange unforgettable thing. closing out of course with a six hour efab mini classic um, <laughs> six hour efab mini it's just funny isn't it but we're getting real close to actually catching up to the super chats again we're almost there we've almost cracked the case yay wonderful um Yes, super appreciate all of the engagement, be it in the form of letting us know what you think that way or the other, in the form of very kind donations, or just giving us some messages of support, um, or even criticism. All of it's welcome. Thank you all so much. Uh, this, this was a wild ride. I think if, yeah, the Ragnarok in total it was like 40 hours or some shit. Uh. <laughs> So yeah, oh, those who wow. enjoyed it and wanted it getting covered, I guess you kind of won. So uh, enjoy. Yeah. But um, yeah, seriously, thank you all so much. We are going to head out now. Mm -hmm. We'll see you on whatever it is that it ends up being the next thing we do. Goodly pip. Yeah, goodbye, bye, everyone. Bye, 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 bye. Again, we'll see you later.